Good morning, everybody. Yes, welcome to a chilly Brands Hatch. It's day four of our Easter feast of live motorsport on Bark TV. And I'll tell you something, from now until six o'clock this evening, we have wall to wall racing action. Oh, my word. And we're going to start with a cracker as well. The Caterham Graduates Sigma 150. This is going to be incredible. It's anything like the 135 race we saw yesterday. Oh, boy, oh, boy. We're in for some tight racing. The midfield is somewhere that we're going to see a lot of action. Somebody's right in the midfield is Amanda Anderson. Let's go have a quick chat with Amanda. Amanda, how are you doing? Oh, I'd like to see the wave. That's like, you're right in the midfield for this. This is going to be entertaining, isn't it? Oh, this is going to be super entertaining. We have such a strong field this year at Caterham Graduates. There is like seven, eight drivers that could win it today. And then there's a tier behind them that I'm yeah. in that's going to be so fun. It's going to be, it's going to be entertaining. I don't know, Amanda. I can see you making a move for the, for the front row. You know, I can see <laughs> it. I can see it. We'll, we'll see how that goes. But um, any, any progress will be good for me today. Amanda, thanks for talking to us. Really appreciate it. Best of luck out there. Uh, it's almost time to get going. So let's just quickly move over here very quickly. I want to talk to Harry Senior over here. Last year's champion, of course. He's in sixth place. That's not like Harry. Uh, I did speak to him a little bit earlier and he said, don't, he said, don't come over. Don't come over. So I'm going to come over. Uh, Harry, there's a six there. Is, is that a mistake? No, no. What happened in qualifying? Not much, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Um, yeah, a bit disappointing. Kind of was out on my own while I think everyone in front of me was in a little pack together uh, helping each other out. So, but you know, I can get a good start or even a bad start and still make my way uh, through, hopefully. So, it's a new day today. It's actually a bit strange for you guys. You qualified yesterday, no racing action. Does, does that have an impact on, on how you approach the weekend? Well, it makes yesterday a bit boring. Um, we've got a big gap between races today as well. So, it means I can go watch some truck racing, I guess. Um, <laughs> But we're first out, it looks pretty slick out there, a bit greasy through clearways especially, so um, hopefully it will catch a few of the guys in front out. Top man, thanks for talking to us mate, best of luck, thank you so much, uh, Harry Senior there. Watch out for him, the line's up sixth place, expect him to come through. We have actually had a qualifying session this morning, uh, the track action cars, you can see him just behind us, we're going to bring you those races a little bit later too. Let's go chat to Harry Cook, your man on pole position, see how he's feeling this morning. A fantastic day for this man yesterday, Harry, congratulations, pole position, great day yesterday, talk us through your lap. Yeah, thank you, it was just a good lap, there was quite a lot of traffic, but I managed to get a clean run at the end and get a good lap in, yeah. No, actually, I've sat down here, I'm getting blown apart by your exhaust down here. It's very cold this morning though, what are we expecting the track to be like? A bit greasy maybe? I think a little bit greasy just looking over there, but I, the, the racing line they're all taking seem like the dry line, so I'm hoping it stays dry, yeah. Top man, Harry, best of luck, enjoy it, won't you? Uh, almost time to go racing here, a few drivers to watch out for. Barry White is here as well, by the way, uh, he is over there in the number 66, no, not that Barry White. So let's go see if we can find a couple more drivers down here, shall we, and have a quick chat. Shall we? Oh, let's go chat to Kim Raymond down here. Uh, we spoke to so, are you ready for this? Just signalled for us to go racing here. Yes, day four of action. Day two actually here at Brands Hatch. Don't forget, Friday, Saturday, we're at Donington Park for the British Endurance Championship and the Brick Car Trophy. And then yesterday and today, we're here for the British Truck Racing Championship. Those races coming up. So much action. And we start it with the K2 Graduate Sigma 150s. I'm going to say good morning, hello to your commentator and good friend, Dave Goddard. Thanks very much indeed, Ian Waterhouse. Yes, good morning, race fans, and welcome to uh, day four of the weekend here on BARC TV. Day two here at Brands Hatch in Kent, just to the east of London, for the second day of the uh, season opening meeting for the British Truck Racing Championship, plus our support classes. Dave Goddard here taking you through the action. Thanks again to Adam Weller, who took us through the uh, two days of racing at Donington. We're almost ready to go racing. We've got no fewer than 14 races to get through here today. We've just had qualifying for the uh, Track Action Saloon Series. And now coming out onto track, it is the Sim Motorsports Caterham Graduates Racing Club, set up back in 1998, this championship for graduates of what was then known as the Caterham Scholarship. It's now known as the Caterham Academy for novice racers in their Caterham 7s. There's two classes of Caterhams here today. Sigma 135 and Sigma 150. They're all powered by Ford Sigma engines. 150 brake horsepower and 135 brake horsepower. These are the more powerful cars. Coming up to the grid then, let's have a look at the lineup. 
It's Harry Cook, who you just heard from on pole in car number 91, alongside the very experienced Jamie Elwood in number 11. Second row, Rob Warner in uh, car number 58, the blue and orange machine, alongside Harry Kramer, 121. Then Thomas Horton, number 128, who saw him take a few uh, victories over the last couple of years. He's certainly one to watch there. And the reigning champion, Harry Senior, completing the third row. It was a tale of two Harrys in the championship last year. Harry Kramer and Harry Senior were battling for supremacy, and Harry Senior eventually took the title. But it's another Harry who's taken pole position. Row 4, 82, Matt Willoughby, and 83 of Jonathan Ems. The fifth row, number 16, Peter Hughes, alongside 112, Andrew Whitten. Look for him coming through from there. was in the top five of uh, last year's championship. Sixth row of the grid will be number 55, Bren Maud, and 64, who we heard from a moment ago, Amanda Anderson, one of the leading ladies of Caterham Racing. On the seventh row, we have number nine, Martin Gleach, alongside 66, Barry White. No, not that one. 144 is Charles Elliott, alongside 68, Tom Eustace. Then 84, Dan Hamilton and 166, Ollie Handley. Tenth row is uh, Kim Raymond, number 15, and Max Haynes in the treble one. Very quick sim racer is uh, Max Haynes as well. I was uh, commentating on him in the Caterham Sim Championship online last year. And the final row of the grid, 169, Paul Vokes, and number two, Rob Appleton. And of course, um, we saw three classes from the Caterham graduates last year. The Sigmax Championship has been uh, amalgamated this year with the Sigma 150s due to uh, a few low number races last year. There were only 10 entries in Sigmax all the way through last year for the 140 BHP cars. One of those cars that's been uh, absorbed into this series is Matt Willoughby, number 82. So have a look out for him coming through from the fourth row of the grid. But in Sigma 150, it was... Um, a title win for Harry Senior last year. He and Harry Kramer did the majority of the winning between them. Will Stilwell had a few wins when he appeared as well, but he didn't contest the full season, so wasn't a factor in the championship. James McCall was the other race winner last year. Amanda Anderson had a win at Thruxton as well, so watch out for her in the red number 64. They head off on their green flag lap then to get their tyres warmed up. Championship with a new sponsor this year, Sim Motorsports rider of uh, race simulators they have a simulator here at Brands Hatch they're based in Gillingham in Kent we welcome them on board for this year there's Matt Willoughby the red and white car just going through as they go into the right hand hairpin at Druids a little bit greasy out there in the early stages but dry conditions at the moment loving the Rothmans Williams lookalike livery on Charles Elliott's car there number 144 I saw go through Yesterday we saw the 135 class, the slightly less powerful cars, open their season with Tom McEwing taking the first win of the year ahead of uh, a whole phalanx of rivals battling behind him. There's Harry Kramer, 1-2-1, one, one, bouncing back after a crash at uh, Donington last season. Just behind him, Thomas Horton, look out for him, began racing in his teens at a Ford Fiesta before moving on to Caterham's and has had a fair number of wins so far, a driving instructor by trade. Hoping to teach his rivals a lesson here. Up to the grid they come then. It's the uh, black and yellow car of Harry Cook on uh, pole position. Newcomer to this uh, series this year. Alongside him will be the white car of Jamie Elwood. Very, very experienced Caterham racer indeed. Then the blue and orange car. It's almost an unspoken rule that you have a blue and orange car at every club race meeting in the UK, the Gulf Colours. The all-red car of Harry Kramer alongside him. Thomas Horton, the uh, white car with the red roll cage and stripe. And then Harry Senior, the reigning champion in the black car. Matt Willoughby in white and red. The orange car alongside him is Jonathan Ems. Peter Hughes in blue. And uh, Andrew Witten, the red car with the green cage, completing the top ten. Those are your colours to watch out for on the uh, leading positions on the grid. Hope we all have a great day here at Brands Hatch. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here on BARC TV. As always, remember, motorsport should be fun. 22 cars on the grid then for this 20-minute race, and we're underway. Great start by Jamie Elwood from the outside of the front row. He'll take the lead down into... Uh, 
had a kill Ben for the first time by a clear margin already. Rob Warner trying to get up the inside of our pole sitter, Harry Cook, who's held that second place. Harry Kramer making the move around the outside. Is it going to be three Harrys in the top four? Is Harry Senior up? Oh, big lock up from Rob Warner. He's going to go straight on just about gets the car stopped as a tangle further back. That's the uh, number nine car, Martin Glitch, going wide. Somebody else has gone off to the inside. Cold tyres, I think, were uh, to blame there. As the pack heads down towards Graham Hill Bend for the first time, the left-hander at the bottom of the hill. Martin Glitch has got going again, but a little slowly. Jamie Elwood it is who leads the way from Harry Cook. Harry Senior's up in the third place in the black car. Then it's Harry Kramer. We have got three Harrys in the top four. They'll be harrying each other throughout this race, I am sure. The rest of the pack make their way through. That's uh, 169 of Paul Vokes ahead of the number two of Rob Appleton. They started from the back row. Harry Cook jinks out of the slipstream. He's never going to go around the outside going into Paddock Bend. Well, we saw this a few times yesterday in the 135 race. We know it works, and it works for Harry Cook. He takes the lead. Well, we're already uh, into action, into top gear, certainly, and they're only on the second lap of the day. 14 races to come yet across the course of uh, this event. Down to second goes Jamie Elwood. Harry Senior going with them. The first three breaking away very slightly. One car into the pits, the treble one of Max Haynes in uh, early problems. He may have been the car that tangled with Martin Glitch. Max Haynes had a few wins in the Caterham Online Sim Racing Championship last year, which uh, Christian Saruta took the uh, title. Stream their way through Surtees and McLaren up towards Clearways. There's Kim Raymond in that very bright green machine. Been with this club for uh, many years now. And Amanda Anderson, the 64, is behind him. So she's dropped back at the uh, start of this one. There's Max Haynes' car in pit lane in the background. Harry Cook leads by a 0.1 of a second ahead of Jamie Elwood. Third place is Harry Senior. He's done the fastest lap of the race, 54.04 seconds. Minor stern into Druids. You can see it's still a little slippery out there. Harry Kramer in fourth place. I apologise in advance if I get the three Harrys mixed up. Rob Warner is fifth. It's Thomas Horton in sixth position. Very, very talented young racer indeed. Harry Senior moving for the inside there, but Jamie Elwood moves to cover. Through Surtees they come. So evenly matched these cars, you've got to slipstream each other down the straights. And they say in Caterham Racing, the place you don't want to be is leading coming into the last corner because someone will get out of the slipstream and zap you on the way to the line. You know, are we going to see that happen here in this Sigma 150 first race of the season? Jamie Elwood trying to play Harry Cook at his own game. And it's worked straight round the outside into Paddock Hill Bend. As I was saying yesterday, it's not until you walk round Brands Hatch you realise just how steep that section of the track is. It's like a roller coaster, the first pass of the lap here. Side by side into Druids, nearly a bit of wheel banging there. It could be three wide. Look at this Harry Senior up the inside. He's got second ahead of Harry Cook, now challenging Jamie Elwood. This is unusually fierce for the opening laps of the day. Here comes Harry Senior up the inside now into Surtees. Will Jamie Elwood put the squeeze on him? Thinks better of it. There wasn't quite room there on the inside. Harry Kramer's now going with them in the red number 121 car and then in fifth place it's Rob Warner ahead of Tom Horton completing the fourth lap this time then Horton going to the Matt Willoughby as well the number 82 car out of the slipstream Harry Senior is going to try the outside run into Paddock that's obviously the favoured passing place this time and he's done it the reigning champion takes the lead this is fantastic stuff so far, and we're only on lap five of the day, and we've got another 13 races to come after this one. We're in for a real treat here at Brands Hatch today, I think. Through Druids they come, in the morning sunshine on this Easter Monday. Down the hill, into Graham Hill Bend. There's Rob Warner, the uh, blue and orange car. He was 12th in the championship last year, only contested part of the season. He could be up there as a front runner this year. Thomas Horton, likewise. It's Harry Senior from Jamie Elwood. Harry Cook in third place, the pond sitter trying to fight back. Fantastic sight there, superb setting this circuit. Around the outside goes Jamie Elwood. He's got the lead back again. That outside run into Paddock works again. Here comes Harry Cook. He thought about doing the same thing there, didn't quite uh, have enough uh, space on the outside. Elwood leads it through Druids, they come. Jamie Elwood has been with the Caterham Graduate Racing Club for many years now. We say it was uh, originally for graduates of the Caterham Scholarship and diving through there into fifth place goes Thomas Horton. 
the former tin top racer in uh, number 128 through Surtees Elwood just about holding off Harry Senior here comes Harry Kramer just biding his time there in fourth place got to know exactly when to make your move in Caterham Racing 14 and a half minutes of this still to go so Harry Senior is going to go for the outside this time into Paddock he comes out of the slipstream retakes the lead from Jamie Elwood Let's see what Harry Cook can do then he tried again he thought about it you see they're trying to go for the outside as well further back Horton side by side with Warner they almost bounce off each other for fifth place this could allow Matt Willoughby in to attack as well Andrew Whitman and Jonathan Emms not far behind them rounding out the top 10 is Tom Eustace the uh, number 68 car Martin Gleitch came into the pits as well as Max Haynes we saw Martin spin at Druids on the first lap so possibly a bit of damage between those two cars second group now first four have pulled away slightly from Rob Warner there's a battle further back in the order that's uh, Amanda Anderson moving back up the order after a poor start she's still only in 15th place according to our timing tower the 55 car behind her is Bren Maud from Yorkshire and one place behind in uh, this group the 166 of Ollie Handling it's Amanda Anderson raced um, a Ginetta in uh, GTs with Flick Haig, another Caterham graduate in the past. One of the great characters of Caterham racing. Harry Senior has the lead then on lap eight here at Brands Hatch. Harry Cook unable to do anything about Jamie Elwood ahead of him. You can see them squirrelling about a bit there as they come through the right-hander at Clearways into Clark Curve onto the Sir Jack Brabham straights. Harry Senior to retain his title this year but there's a long way to go yet no moves being made at uh, Paddock Bend this time they've calmed down a little perhaps Jamie Elwood side by side Harry Cook he's never going to go around the outside at Druids no he thinks better of that I think side by side Matt Willoughby's got ahead of uh, Rob Warner there's the 82 car of, Matt, of um, 83 I should say of Jonathan Ems further down the top 10 fighting it out with 1-1-2 of Andrew Witten Harry Cook right on the tail of Jamie Elwood it's the first weekend of the year for the Gatron Graduates Racing Club they go to Zandvoort in uh, the Netherlands at the beginning of May as we see Paul Vokes challenging Amanda Anderson now Vokes has uh, moved his way through from towards the back of the grid. The 166 has got ahead of them there, Ollie Handley as well. And in behind this group is number 84 of Dan Hamilton. And the club then goes to Castle Coombe in June. A month later it's Cadwell Park, then Snetterton, Anglesey and the Caterham Festival in October at uh, Donington Park. Fastest lap of the race is with our race leader Harry Senior who's pulled away just a little bit now, 53.588 his quickest lap oh, and, uh, Jamie Elwood a little bit sideways there coming into Surtees maybe clipped the kerb Cook hanging on to his tail trying to shake off Harry Kramer so things have calmed down a little in the lead battle they're not quite able to get into the slipstream on the run into Paddock Hill Bend across the line fastest lap that time for Harry Kramer we saw come up on uh, the graphics there as Elwood has a look to the inside this time Senior holds off it's all happening in this first race of the day 53.429 is now the fastest lap for Kramer as Jamie Elwood up the inside into Druids can he take the lead away they could almost end up three wide again Elwood's got the advantage he takes the lead Harry Senior has to move to defend from Cook as they come down into Graham Hill Bend this is great stuff suddenly the lead battle coming alive again first four have broken away from Thomas Horton in fifth place Matt Willoughby up to six. He's got ahead of Rob Warner. It's Witten, Ems, and Eustace rounding out the top ten. Peter Hughes in uh, number 16 is 11th. And then Barry White is 12th. Any moves going to be made this time? Look how close they are over the line. Harry Kramer's got the grandstand view of this. What's going to happen as they head into Paddock Hill Bend? They're almost three abreast again. Harry Senior through the middle goes Harry Cook. 
Can he make that stick? They are three wide as they come up Elwood Rise. Something's got to give here. Goodness me, Cook perhaps wisely backs out of it. Elwood's got the lead as they go into Druids. It's good sliding about. He clipped the curb there on the inside. Still having a go at Harry Senior. Can he get down the inside? No, he's not close enough this time. This is all allowing Kramer to uh, close in. We're still, we're still only just halfway through this race. There's nine and a half minutes of this to go. Second group headed by Horton. Looks like Warner may have got back ahead of um, Willoughby in there. Willoughby crossed the line in fifth place. So maybe he's dropped a couple of spots there. Harry Kramer doesn't seem to have the straight line speed to match his three rivals here as they come up over the line. Again, Senior Jinx out. And he's got the lead. Side by side for second place. Harry Cook still trying as he goes through Druids. Harry Kramer still trying to close up, but it's down the straights where he's losing out. You see him drop back there slightly. Just hasn't quite got the straight line speed. Maybe he's got the setup a little bit wrong. Horton's still there in fifth. They're dropping away from this group now. Uh, Horton's about four and a half seconds down on the lead quartet. Oh, and Harry Kramer's gone wide. There's something amiss with Harry Kramer's car. Whether it's uh, setup or handling, you can see he went way wide there at clearways, and he's dropped quite a way back now. Here comes Elwood. Round the outside of Senior. They've patented that move, haven't they, these two? Harry Cook says, I'm going to try and do that as well. He's not close enough again. Elwood stays wide, though. And Senior will keep his nose down the inside here into Druids. This is going to be really close on the inside. Can Harry Cook get alongside both of them? They're still side by side, coming out down towards Graham Hill Bend. That means Elwood will have the inside for the left-hander and just about keeps his lead. They almost touch wheels there. Terrific scrap between these three. Kramer trying to close back up again. It's Horton, Warner. Looks like Willoughby's dropped to uh, eighth place. Yes, sir. The number 112 of Andrew Whitman has come through to seventh. Here's a battle further back. Kim Raymond has uh, been reeled in by Ollie Handley in the 166. Amanda Anderson, a quiet race for her. She's down to 17th now. She was a winner last season at Thruxton. So struggling here, unfortunately. Dan Hamilton, number 84 in behind her there he is so battles everywhere you look there's 20 cars still running up the line on lap 14 it was uh, jamie elwood who was back in the lead but only just by 27 one thousandths of a second it's hard to know where to look in this race there's something going on on every corner of every lap kim raymond there number 15 is familiar Acid green machine. Harry Senior has got the lead back again. Every couple of corners the lead's changing, especially in the first half of the lap. Kramer just not quite able to keep the pace with them in the red car. Now, what's going to happen this time? Elwood's going to go to the outside again. He'll get the lead back as they go into paddock. Now, Cook's got to run this time. Can he get round the outside of Harry Senior? The two Harrys side by side. Here comes Cook in the blackened yellow machine and he's got second position great move around the outside there he cut across into Druids that's good driving by Harry Cook Senior goes down to third can the champion fight back six minutes to go plenty of racing to be done yet here at Brantage along the back straight effectively the Cooper straight it's not very straight though as you can see experience Jamie Elwood just about holding his lead here's that battle further back again Raymond Handley Anderson and Hamilton Up the line it's Jamie Elwood who leads once again I keep tabs on the lead battle all the time through the timing screen Thomas Horton still heads the fifth place battle Warner, Witten, then Willoughby, Ems, and Peter Hughes up into 10th place. He's got ahead of Tom Eustace and a spin for Dan Hamilton. Loses it coming out of clearways. Paul Vokes avoids him. Dan Hamilton, the uh, number 84, tries to uh, get going again, the Londoner. 
gathering towards the closing stages now in the final quarter of this race for the Sim Motorsports Caterham Graduate Sigma 150s. Harry Cook is ready now to challenge for the lead. He gets into the slipstream on the inside line down the straight. Finds the clear air as he comes out onto the outside. Can he take the lead here from Jamie L. Wood? They're absolutely side by side. Out of Paddock Bend, I think Elwood's just about got the nose in front as they come up towards Druids. Now, if Harry Cook can stay on the outside, no, he moves back in behind. I was going to say, if he stays on the outside, he could get the inside away for Graham Hill Bend. There's back marker traffic coming up as well. I think it'll be the number two of Rob Appleton, the first man to be lapped. He's running in 20th place. Or possibly Dan Hamilton after that spin. Yes, there's Hamilton, there's Appleton, the light, light blue car. Harry Cook still attacking for the lead. They come through Surtees into McLaren. That's the turning onto the Grand Prix circuits through clearways. Then into the right at Clark Curve, onto the straights. Cook is in the slipstream. He'll try and do the same again. He's got to be mindful that Harry Senior is there as well. He's right on the back of Jamie Elwood here. Comes Cook. Round the outside. Can he get the move done again this time? Late on the brakes. He's done it. Cuts to the inside. Jamie Elwood, a little bit out of shape there, I think. And Harry Senior is up alongside him. He suddenly lost ground. Did he miss a gear there? Jamie Elwood, he's held second. You saw him drop back suddenly from Harry Cook. Thought something had gone wrong there for Jamie Elwood. Coming up on the back marks, oh, they go either side, goodness me. That was a bit of a scary moment for Rob Appleton there. He didn't know where to go as he came down the hill. They went either side of him. Blue flags being waved by the marshals to warn the back markers there are quicker cars approaching, but there's, with them, them battling so close, it's hard to know which side to uh, let them through on. Tom Appleton just stayed in the middle and they went either side of him. Less than three minutes to go now in this first race of the day. Dan Hamilton about to be lapped as well. Over the line come the leaders. Harry Cook leads from Elwood. And here comes Thomas Horton. He's caught Harry Kramer. And the driving instructor about to go around the outside. No, doesn't get the outside. Cuts back to the inside. Could get fourth position here up towards Aylwood. Into Druids. Yes, he's through. Regular winner in the uh, Sig Max category last year. Now fighting for Sigma 150 points with the uh, merging of the two classes. Thomas Horton in fourth place. Down to fifth goes Harry Kramer. Hasn't quite got the pace today. The leading trio have cleared the back marker, no problem. Cook, Elwood Senior, still your top three. Through to complete another lap. The uh, Sigma 135 did 22 laps yesterday. Will we get the same number here? Um, might be a lap short of that on time. Jamie Elwood in the slipstream. He's going for it again on the outside. He's not close enough this time, though. Harry Cook keeps his leaves a little bit sideways there. May have clipped the curb on the inside. And Elwood senses an opportunity. Which side's he going to go? He goes to the outside. Cook defending the inside line. Swing their way through Druids again. Harry Senior has not finished yet either. He could try and slipstream both of them on the run towards the finish line. It's going to be a very, very interesting conclusion indeed. Fastest lap is with um, Thomas Horton now. 53.421. Through clear ways. They might get two more laps out of this. We shall see. It will be close. Close, whatever happens. Look at Harry Senior closing back up in the number one. Elwood's going to try and go for the lead again into Paddock. Senior toes up onto the back of him. You see him there using the um, slipstream there, towing up onto the back of Elwood. You could see the speed difference. Now he's up alongside the 11. Harry Cook is going to need to watch his mirrors here. He's going to have to be so careful. Just over 30 seconds on the clock. Will we get another lap out of this? Three of them line astern. They're going to have to go for it coming out of Clark Curve this time. Can Harry Senior slipstream both of them? They weave about there slightly down Cooper Straits. Can Harry Cook hold on for his first Sigma 150 victory? The man who started from pole. Elwood to the outside. There's 15 seconds on the clock. Going to have to wait and see if we get another lap out of this. Here they come then. Who's going to slipstream who? They could go three wide here. Elwood pulls out. Senior's going with him, they go across the line, there is one more lap to go, and who's going to come out of this with the lead? Elwood's got it, Cook's gone back to third place, they've both gone round him, Senior in second place, 
They'll have seen that last lap signal. Now they've got to try and position themselves. Ready for that final slipstream. Just between these three. Thomas Horton is behind them, but a couple of seconds back. Elwood from Cook, then Senior. That's how it was at the line last time through. Through Graham Hill Bend for the last time. This is going to be ama an amazing finish to this Caterham Graduate Sigma 150 race. Jamie Elwood has it at the moment, but uh, you don't want to be leading through the last corner, as we said earlier, because someone will try to slipstream you. That someone could be Harry Cook. Surely Senior is not going to get both of them here. Here we go then towards the line. Jamie Elwood desperately trying to break away a little to try and hold on for the win. Harry Cook knows he's got to go for it, but I don't think he's going to get close enough up towards the line. There is the chequered flag. Jamie Elwood has won. It's Cook second, senior third. They weren't close enough in the end to try and jink out of the slipstream, try and pull alongside. In winning margin, 0.129 of a second. Thomas Horton takes fourth, and Harry Kramer rounds out the top five. But it's Jamie Elwood who takes the victory, the first win of the season in Sigma 150 for the Caterham Graduates Racing Club, sponsored by Sim Motorsports. And a quite brilliant race to uh, kick off the day here at Brands Hatch. Another 13 races to come. That was superb. Less than half a second covering the top three cars over the line there. And Harry Senior got the fastest lap, 53.42 seconds. One thousandth of a second quicker than Thomas Horton's best lap. Confirm the uh, provisional result in a second then. Someone's left a bit of bodywork behind there. You can see on the left in the gravel trap. Jamie Elwood the winner by 0.129 of a second from Harry Cook. And Harry Senior was 0.349 of a second further back in third. Thomas Horton fourth ahead of Harry Kramer. Then Rob Warner beat Andrew Whitten and Matt, Matt Willoughby, Willoughby home. Tom Eustace and Peter Hughes completing the top ten. It was Barry White, Bren Moore, Charles Elliott, Amanda Anderson. Behind them the battle between Kim Raymond. Holly Handley, Paul Vokes, then Dan Hamilton after his spin. And Rob Appleton was the final finisher. We lost Jonathan Ems into the pits. Of course, out on the first lap were Martin Glitch and Max Haynes. Pause for breath needed after uh, that one, I think. An excellent race from the Sim Motorsports uh, Caterham Graduate Sigma 150s. And they'll be back out again later on at uh, around 3 o'clock. Their second race is due off. Next up, the Young Guns will go for it. It's the Junior Saloon Car Championship for their first race of the season. Their qualifying session took place yesterday. And their identical Citroen Saxo VTR, 1600cc drivers from 14 to 17 years of age competing. Last year's champion was Dara Flock, the young Irishman. And uh, on Saturday, he made his debut in Brick Car Trophy, winning his class in a Renault Clio. So, something to aspire to there for these young racers. It's Harry Smith who took pole position in um, the qualifying session yesterday. It was uh, Jonathan Moore, who was third in last year's championship, who uh, provisionally will start alongside him. We'll convert, confirm the grid fairly soon. Thanks to all of you for uh, getting in touch on our stream comments. I'm told the Stutchbury family are watching again. We heard from them yesterday. That's uh, young Freddie and Evie with their mum, Nicole, and the rest of the family as well. So hello to you. Let's have a look at the uh, schedule then. Just seen the caterums out for the first time, then the junior saloon cars. Then it's the big rigs for their first race of the day, the British truck racing championship for their third race of the weekend we've got a division two truck on pole for that one with the reverse grid being used then it's the mini challenge club sport with air tech motorsports ross alexander took a dominant win in his bmw mini there yesterday and then we've got the pickup truck racing championship they had a belter of the first race yesterday matt simpson going from fourth to first on the last lap having started from the back of the grid then we've got more Caterhams, the uh, slightly less powerful but no less spectacular Sigma 135s. Then the Track Action Saloon Series, a whole variety of different saloon cars. We've got Clios, Scirocco's, Peugeot 206s, Renault 5s, and uh, all manner of uh, different saloons in action there. 
Another truck race to follow that. Then the second race for the junior saloon cars due off at uh, around half past two. After that, we've got uh, the Sigma 150 Caterhams again. Then the uh, third race of the weekend for the Mini Challenge. Our final truck race, track action again. And then finally the pickup trucks, their longer third race, their final effectively to close out today's racing. <laughs> Hi to Kai Harvey on our comments, says 2000s boy racers dream race, the Saxos, yes. A lot of the uh, Saxos did get boy racers, racered, but uh, these are not your typical boy racers. These youngsters are very talented young drivers indeed of them making the move up from karting these young ladies and gents who we will see out next with loads of Beth Culpin who says uh, good luck to Francisco Howitt who's racing for Vina Sports in this next race we'll bring you the uh, grid for the junior saloon cars then eh? I'd hope to hear from some of the Caterham racers but they've uh, not uh, got to Ian yet. So in pole position for Junior Saloon Cars, number 10, Harry Smith in the Chandler Motorsport Saxo, and alongside him, number 12, Jonathan Moore. Second row, 448, Kyle Wells. I remember seeing him when he was about seven years old racing ninja carts on the short ovals. He's come a long way. He's on the second row alongside James Sherrington in car number 40. Josh Salvador, right? second year racer on row three, alongside 78, Kieran Roberts. Newcomer, Luca Maserati, from a famous sports car racing family. Great uh, qualifying effort for his debut on row four alongside Oliver Law at number 77. Fifth row is Francisco Howitt, who we just mentioned, alongside Bertie Breen. He was taking part in our Gladiators Challenge in uh, the paddock with Ian yesterday. Row six will be number 353, Cole Lynch, the young Irish lady who will start alongside 88, Harvey Kersley. He won our Gladiators Challenge yesterday. Row seven is number 19, Lewis Stannard, alongside 90, Jake Renshaw. Then we've got Ollie Kerr in treble two on row eight alongside number 70, Wilf Butler. Jude Cooper in number four on row nine alongside the scholarship winner, Will Crudson, in number 17. Row 10, Caitlin Scharfegger alongside number 95, Ben Smiles. Had uh, an off early in qualifying yesterday into the gravel, but uh, recovered to qualify on row 10. And the final row, number 42, Sherry Ann Powell. 29, Alex Bergbaum, who had uh, a few problems in qualifying yesterday, the Londoner, but... Uh, Hopefully we'll be out at the back of the grid for this one. It'll be a 15 minute race. A lot of these drivers, as we say, have come through from the uh, world of karting. They're already moving off on their green flag lap. Harry Smith on pole position uh, being coached by a former junior saloon car champion, we're told, Lewis Saunders, who we've seen uh, Yesterday, racing uh, Jim Bainham's MGB in the MG Owners Club Championship. Just heard from uh, Lewis Saunders' father. He was uh, very proud of young Lewis yesterday. Two class wins in the MGB. Harry Smith on the pole then. It's his uh, third year in the championship. He came in midway through um, the 2021 season. That's his fourth year in the championship, third full year. Came in as a complete novice, one of the favourites for this year's championship, along with the man alongside him, Jonathan Moore, comes from Leeds. Third in the championship last year, partial year in 2022. Like somebody stopped on the run up Halewood Hill there. It's not going now. Might have been the 42 of Sherry Ann Powell at the back. Identical Citroen Saxo VTR, 1600cc. Number 78, very distinctive there. Kieran Roberts in the uh, Dayglo green car. Green or yellow? Certainly very luminous, whatever it is. There's Harvey Kersley, the Lancaster Insurance car. Father Alex Kersley, a regular in the uh, Hyundai Coupe Cup over the years. Will Crudson from uh, Newcastle, the sponsorship, the uh, scholarship winner in the Oryx competition car. Up to the grid they come.
Harry Smith on pole in the red, white and blue car. In green and black alongside is Jonathan Moore. In the white and black, number 448, Kyle Wells for Vina Sports. And the white, black and red car of James Sherrington, number 40. In red and black is Josh Salvadore in 110. Kieran Roberts in the bright green car. Seventh on the grid, Luca Maserati. His family very famous for sports and GT racing, mainly in Porsches. His father, Piers Maserati, will be watching from trackside, the former British GT champion. The grey car is Oliver Law, number treble seven, with the Union flag roof. And the blue car with the orange trim is Francisco Howitz. The white car completing the top ten is Bertie Bree. Young Guns ready to go for it then here on the Brands Hatch Indy circuits. Revs are up. A little bit of creeping from the uh, man in second on the grid then, but we're underway. Decent start by Kieran Roberts through the middle there in the 78. A good getaway as well from the uh, blue machine of Francisco Howitz. But who's going to have the lead? It's uh, Harry Smith and Jonathan Moore together into uh, Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. Up the hill it is uh, our pole sitter, Harry Smith, who has the early lead in the number 10 car. Trying to get around the outside there is Josh Salvadori, number 110. Nice steady starts this first lap of the season Harvey Kersley up on the outside of uh, Ollie Kerr I think that was in the uh, treble two car so they all make it round the first lap okay just getting heat into their tyres they've had a green flag lap just to warm them up it is Harry Smith who leads it then Jonathan Moore in second place third in the 448 is Kyle Wells Josh Salvadore side by side there with number 40 of uh, Sherrington James Sherrington in the number 40 car run by Chandler Motorsports. Uh, Stephen Chandler, of course, a graduate of this series a few years ago, runs that team uh, with his family. They complete the first lap, then it is Smith from Moore. It's not by Kyle Roberts there, up into fourth behind Kyle Wells. Salvadore is fifth, side by side there. Treble two in the colours of Simpson Race Exhaust. That's Ollie Kerr trying to get around the outside. Of course, we'll see the owner of Simpson Race Exhaust, Matt Simpson, out in the pickup trucks later on. James Sherrington has a look to the inside of Josh Salvadore, puts the squeeze on of it there through Druids, and uh, Salvadore holds the place. No relation to Roy Salvadore, the 50s racer, spelt differently. Francisco Howitz next in the order. Then it's Oliver Law, Luca Maserati in his first ever circuit race, who's come up from karting. It's Harry Smith who leads the way, one of the most experienced of these young racers on this grid in these cars. Came in as a novice in uh, the end, towards the end of 2021, has been uh, racing his Saxos ever since. Completing the second lap then, Smith from Jonathan Moore in the number 12. Over the line, Francisco Howitt in the blue number 50 car for Vinna Sport. He's got Ollie Law and Luca Maserati on his tail, just locking up it there. Oh, Jonathan Moore wide, kicks up some gravel. Just dropped a wheel off the edge of the circuit there. Very easy to spin if you do that, but he held it together. Ollie Law up the inside in the 77 car. Luca Maserati gets a bit of a knock there from the number four of Jude Cooper. They're side by side out of Druids. Maserati holds the place. I think that um, with a name like Maserati, the family have been famous for racing Italian cars, but it's Porsches that uh, the Maserati clan are famous for racing. Piers, Jamie and Miles, we've all seen appear in Porsches. I'm sure Luca will uh, try to follow them someday. Up the inside, and oh, there's contact there. Ollie Law takes a knock. Keeps it going, though. Also in there, behind, that's a 3-5-3 of Cole Lynch, I think. The uh, young Irish girl in her third season in junior saloon cars. So it's all kicking off in the midfield here. Luca Maserati has stayed ahead of Jude Cooper and Ollie Law. Law lost out there through clearways. Five of them together. This is the battle for seventh position. It's still uh, Harry Smith who leads from Moore. Wells in third. Getting very busy as they come up towards Druids. They're all trying to emulate uh, last year's champion Dara Flock, who's now moved on to senior racing in the Brick Car Trophy. Swing their way down through Graham Hill Bend. Lead gap is 1.28 seconds. Number 40, uh, James Sherrington, has done the quickest lap so far, incidentally. 59.255. Kyle Roberts under fire from Salvadori. There is Sherrington in the number 40. Another one of the Chandler Motorsport cars trying to make a move up the inside there. Just about finds the gap on the inside of Salvadori. 
all 22 cars still running at the moment. New fastest lap for Jonathan Moore that time through, 59.237. Just over a second off the lead. It's Carl Roberts chasing Kyle Wells. There's the battle for fifth. Sherrington getting through on Salvadori. Then the fight for seventh. Luca Maserati looks like having a go at Francesco Howitt for seventh position. This is great stuff so far. Here's that battle for seventh. There is Howitt ahead of Luca Maserati. Bringing his karting training to uh, great effect here. He is loving this. They all are. A lot of our newcomers here in their first ever car races. There is Maserati. Graduated from Daytona Karting, the Sandown Karting Club. He's done uh, only around five test days, that's old, in a junior saloon car. But he's having a go here at Francisco Howitt. Second year in the championship for him, and Maserati goes through. Good move there down the Brabham Straits. Kyle Roberts in the very green 78 car, hanging on to fourth place. Hill. He's got James Sherrington on his tail. Sherrington did a part season last year, having moved up from Rotax karting. There's a battle further back in the order. That's Caitlin Scharfegger, number 99. So a family who've raced uh, six and C1s and Caterhams in the past. It's the car with the yellow wheels. Caitlin giving chase here to the number 90 car. That's Jake Renshaw in the Oryx competition car, the man from Nottingham. Renshaw has raced in Club 100 karts as a junior lightweight last year. Finished ninth out of over 100 entries last year. And behind them, that's Alex Bergbaum. That's the car we saw have uh, some problems in qualifying yesterday. He comes from a Caterham racing family as well. I've seen Andy Bergbaum out in the Caterham graduates this weekend and a bit of bumping and boring. There go a couple of mirrors. Kyle Roberts and James Sherrington getting together. Well, it's trying to keep the line there down towards Graham Hill Bend, and he holds the place. This is for fourth position. Another couple of Saxo mirrors needed from the parts department. And they're still leaning on each other down the straight there. It's getting a bit physical there. They say Rubbing's racing, but that's getting a little bit over the top, in my opinion. And here comes Josh Salvadori, and he's split the pair up now. He's got between the two of them. He's now having a go at Roberts. Salvadori up the inside in the 110. He's going to try and take fourth place away from Kyle Roberts. It's almost as if Josh Salvadori said, well, if you're going to start rubbing and bumping each other, I'm going to pass both of you. And he's done it. Sherrington up the inside. That's brave. Goodness me, James Sherrington. Very, very late on the brakes. And he's got back into fourth place. He's got past both of them. This is brilliant. They're going to be three wide into Druids. That's even braver. Something's got to give here, surely. That's something I thought was going to be Josh Salvadori. Uh, Roberts gets back through into fifth position. This is allowing the top three to start to get away. Smith still leads from Moore and Wells. Three wheeling their way through Graham Hill Bend. Here's a battle further back in the order. That's Caitlin Scharfegger having a go now at the number 95. That's the car of Ben Smiles. Had an off at Paddock Hill Bend yesterday. He's been racing karts since uh, eight years, eight years of age at Hereford Raceway. He's done Daytona D-Max, Team Endurance and Club 100. Currently leading the Daytona Tamworth Winter Series in the Midlands. Smiles now having a go at Harvey Kersley in the Lancaster Insurance car. Just about hanging on around the outside at uh, Clearways there. This is the uh, fight for 17th place. Kyle Roberts still battling away with James Sherrington. You can't separate these two, can you? Mirrors hanging off. Lead gap is 1.66 seconds. Harry Smith still out in front, but all the action's behind him. Jonathan Moore second. Kyle Wells up there in third, looking for a podium on his debut. Alex Bergbaum at the head of this group towards the back of the field. Kersley side by side with Smiles in the Chandler Motorsport car once again. It goes a bit wide through Druids. Behind them is Caitlin Scharfegger. Behind them we've got the number 17 of Will Cruisden, the uh, JSCC scholarship winner over the winter. Then Smiles runs a bit wide. Moving up to his name there with the smiley face on the bonnet. I like it. Last runner behind them. 
is the number 42 of Sherry Ann Powell. There she is in the black car. Last but by certainly no means least, Sherry Ann Powell is 14 years of age, the ex Bambino kart racer who's raced uh, in DRS Junior as well, was 10th in 2022. And uh, third overall in DRS Junior last season. Meanwhile, Kersley under fire, smiles at the inside again. See, so he's got the novice cross on the back of his car. On the 10th lap of this race now, it's Harry Smith, still out front by 1.6 seconds. The gap stabilised back to Jonathan Moore. Scharfegger tries to make another move there in her CSC racing car. Harvey Kersley just ahead. Meantime, here's the battle between the number eight of Bertie Bream and the 353 of Cole Lynch. Bream around the outside at Surtees there. That's the uh, other Kersley Motorsport car of Bertie Bream. Harvey's teammate. Cole Lynch losing out to another place there down the straight. Who's that coming through? It's the number 19 car of Lewis Stannard. Gets through into 13th position. Now Cole Lynch coming under a bit of pressure from number 70 of Wilf Butler. So everybody getting involved here. Harry Smith out front has done the fastest lap of the race, 58.98. So he's under the 59 second bracket now, the only driver to have achieved that. Just over four minutes of this race to go. Carl oh, Roberts has dropped back a bit. He's now in the clutches of Luca Maserati. Proper racing driver name, that isn't it? He's giving a great account of himself here on his debut. Coming up on that very green 78 car. That wing mirror still hanging in there on the right-hand side. Maserati going to try and uh, get a run on the outside here into Paddock Hill Bend. Doesn't quite manage to do so. Pushing now as they come up towards Druid. He could get the inside away here, Carl Roberts. Doesn't give him a lot of room, but Maserati finds the gap. They lean on each other. Roberts will have the inside line, though, for Graham Hill. And he holds the place. It's all about uh, learning to race this series, exploring, finding your limits. That's exactly what Luca Maserati and Carl Roberts are doing. Behind them, Francisco Howitt in the blue and orange car. Then it's Jude Cooper in number four. Ollie Law rounds out the top ten. Gap still around one and a half seconds. So Harry Smith controlling the pace very nicely out front. And there's Jonathan Moore in second. We haven't seen much of the leaders because all the action's been in the pack. Smith from Moore. The gap has come down very slightly. In fact, 1.27 seconds now. And Kyle Wells in the Vinna Sport car in behind them. Could he be heading for a podium on his debut? Josh Salvadori still going well in fourth ahead of James Sherrington pulled away from Kyle Roberts after their pretty tough battle early on. Kyle Roberts, so uh, we can see on the timing screen, has got a five second penalty pending. I assume that's for exceeding track limits one too many times. Side by side further back, the number 70 of Wilf Butler and 353 Cole Lynch. Cole Lynch in the uh, Oryx competition car, her third season of racing. Wilf Butler, another of the Chandler Motorsport cars. They're fighting over 14th place at the moment. As Cole Lynch has had uh, a lot of bad luck in her time in junior saloon cars, and uh, Wilf Butler, is he slowing down there? Possible problem for him, seemed to be very slow through Surtees. Luca Maserati having another go at Kyle Roberts. We know he's got uh, that five second penalty pending. I presume that's for exceeding track limits. Still your leader is Harry Smith. Here he comes along the Cooper Straits. Coming up to uh, start what uh, could well be his last lap this time. In the number 10 Chandler Motorsport car. Staying clear as he has all the way from Jonathan Moore. He's uh, arguably the two most experienced drivers on this grid. Certainly in these cars, they are four and a half seconds clear of Kyle Wells. One minute to go as they cross the line. Hmm. Might be a couple of seconds early there for uh, this to be the last lap. We may get another lap out of this after this one. 
There's the fight for third coming down towards Paddock Hill Bend. Josh Salvadori has almost caught Kyle Wells. He could get a podium with a bit of luck. They're not going to catch these two, though. Six seconds down, James Sherrington. And it's a J In fact, James Sherrington has come through. Have we lost Kyle Wells? I think we have. He's dropped down the timing screen, so... Either his transponder's not working, or... He's dropped out. Yes, there's a car in the gravel. Is that... I think that is Kyle Wells. Yes, that's a Vinosport coloured car. Oh, that's a shame. I think that's up at Druids. Yes, we've lost the uh, 448. What a shame. Whether there was contact with Salvadori, because James Sherrington has come through into third. Now, are we going to get this chequered flag this time through? No, we're not. A couple of seconds early, as we said. So, one more lap for... Uh, Harry Smith, Harry the Hero Smith, as he's known after yesterday. It's certainly been a great drive here by young Harry. So James Sherin, Matt Sherrington now up into third place. We didn't see what happened to um, the 448 of Kyle Wells there. Sherrington now ahead of Salvadori. Here's a bit of uh, push and shove. That's uh, Francisco Howitt, Jude Cooper. And trying to get round them is Oliver Law. It's leaning on each other there into Druids. Law goes out wide on the exit. Just about held that together. Holding it together in front all the way. But number 10, here comes Harry Smith. It's going to be a flag-to-flag -flag performance in the first race of the season for the Junior Saloon Car Championship. Here he comes up towards the line to win round one of the season. There's the chequered flag. Harry Smith wins it. Jonathan Moore second. It looks like it is going to be James Sherrington who takes third position ahead of Josh Salvadore. Fifth place will go to Kyle Roberts on the road, but that penalty will drop in down. So Luca Maserati, fifth place on his debut. Jude Cooper is sixth. Ollie Law, seventh. Francisco Howitt will be eighth. They're still at it further back in the pack. Uh, Kyle Roberts, that penalty drops him to ninth. There's a yellow flag out on the last corner. Is that, ah, is that where Kyle Wells has gone off? I thought it was up at Druids. No, I can see uh, the car in the gravel there in the background. So it's actually down at Clearways he's gone off. Apologies there. Ollie Kerr runs out the top ten. It's Bream, Stannard, Butler, Lynch, Bergbaum, Smiles, Renshaw, Kersley, Scharfiger, Crudson and Powell completing the finishers. Cars will head back into the paddock and uh, hopefully we'll be able to hear from some of the drivers down there. Congratulations to Harry Smith winning by just under one and a half seconds. With Moore and Sherrington completing the podium. Bad luck to Kyle Wells there. Running into the gravel at Clearways. Let's head down to Ian Waterhouse in Park Fermi. Right, hello everybody, welcome down to the pit lane here. You can see the cars, they're actually going to go and make their way to the outer paddock. There is your winner, Harry Smith. Of course, Jonathan Moore coming home in second place, as they were actually 1-2 on the grid. James Sherrington coming home in third place. The reason why they're not going to stop in Park Fermi, as usual, we're not going to get a chance to chat to them until a little bit later. It's because we've got the trucks out next. What that means is here at Brands Hatch, because we're inside the circuit, there's a tunnel that leads to the outer paddock. That closes when the trucks are out on track. So if they don't go now, they're not going to be able to get out there at all they're going to have to stay over here in Park Ferme until the end of the truck race so they're going to make their way straight over now we will catch up with them a little bit later as well they do have another race coming up but guess what is about to happen now on Easter Monday oh yes the big rigs about to go on track Dave over to you okay thanks Ian yes we'll hear from the junior saloon cars hopefully later on but so uh, with their race immediately preceding preceding a truck race that's why they've had to go back into the paddock straight away. The provisional results of uh, that one then. Harry Smith, the winner by just under one and a half seconds ahead of Jonathan Moore. Third place going to James Sherrington ahead of Josh Salvadori. Great debut for Luca Maserati in the top five ahead of Jude Cooper. And Ollie Law, Francisco Howitz, Kieran Roberts. That track limits penalty. We'll believe it's for track limits anyway. Dropping him down to ninth. And Ollie Kerr rounds out the top ten. Then Bertie Bream ahead of Lewis Stannard. Wilf Butler, Cole Lynch... Rounding out the top 15 was Alex Bergbaum, then it was Ben Smiles. And uh, the rest of the finishers, only one non-finisher there. Jake Renshaw was next, Harvey Kersley, Caitlin Scharfeger, 
uh, Will Crudson, Sherry Ann Powell, and just one non finisher, Kyle Wells. Great shame as he was on for a maiden podium on his debut. But next up, as we say, it is the Big Rigs British Truck Racing Championship out for race three of the weekend. Of course, the uh, name on everyone's lips this year, Ryan Smith, Flying Ryan, going for an incredible ninth consecutive title in Division One this year. Will anyone be able to stop him? He opened the season with two wins. He led all the way ahead of David Jenkins in both races yesterday, while in Division Two for the slightly less powerful trucks, it was a double win for Paul Rivets, the reigning champion there in his MAN. see them out on the grid in a moment we will have um, a reverse grid for this race today now this year we don't line up the divisions separated so um, we'll see division one and two mixed together on the grid it's first weekend of the year for the British truck racing uh, championship a big thank you to all the partners of the championship in uh, 2024 as well They are TRP Parts, UK's largest range of all makes of uh, truck and trailer parts, GT Tyres, the uh BWOC, bulk fuel supplier, providing renewable diesel deliveries and carbon neutral fuel, uh, transport monitoring solutions, truck and driver magazine and Freuhauf trailers. Just some of the partners uh, involved in British truck racing this year and a big thank you to them for uh, all their support as always. So two double wins yesterday. Now, those grids were set by uh, the qualifying session in the morning, the first and second fastest time for each driver. Now we go into reverse grids for the weekend. Twelve trucks here this weekend. The top eight on each grid will be in reverse. This uh, first race of the day based on the results of race one yesterday with the top eight flipped around. The eighth place finisher was Paul Rivette, the Division 2 winner. So he will be in pole position for this next race. Can we see him stay in front? Will we see a Division 2 truck win overall? Can't remember the last time that's happened. Last few years we've won we have um, run them from split grids with the Division 2 trucks starting in a separate group behind the Division 1s, but they're mixed in together this year. Of course, at uh, one time we did run separate races for Division one and two as well. Ryan Smith, that means, the double winner yesterday, will start from back in eighth place on the grid. He won race one yesterday ahead of David Jenkins. Then it was the Olivers, father and son, but it was son ahead of father this time. And Michael Oliver was very proud to have beaten his father, Stuart, the ten times uh, British champion, one time European champion as well. Stuart uh, had some problems in qualifying yesterday, had a fuel leak, but... Um, started back in sixth on the grid but fought his way through to fourth he got past John Bowler and Stephen Powell they were fifth and sixth in um, race one Stephen Powell the uh, local man to Brands Hatch lives just down the road debuting a new uh, MAN we believe this and certainly a new livery for this year and also a warm welcome back to David Smith no relation to Ryan incidentally David um, a former division two champion way back in 2012 his first truck race meeting for almost eight years this weekend having uh, bought one of Ryan Smith's uh, fleet of trucks. He's bought an MAN on his local circuit here in Kent as well. He was seventh in race one yesterday. It was Paul Rivette in eighth. And the other runners this weekend, Neil Yates, second season in truck racing for the recovery company boss. Another Kent-based driver, plenty of local racers too, Brands Hatch. Alongside him is certainly not a local racer on this grid. Uh, Tom O'Rourke from Livingston in Scotland, the boss of MV Commercials new truck for him this year as well the international navistar the uh, bonneted truck similar in appearance to ryan smith's daimler freightliner completing the field this weekend the other two runners in division two simon cole in the pink panther here's Iveco. always a fan favorite the uh, man who used to race the mercedes benz or mercedes beast as he used to call it and uh, also john powell now john uh, was involved in uh, a bit of a scrape in race one yesterday with Paul Rivette. Picked up some damage and uh, didn't make it out for race two. So hopefully uh, John Powell's team have been able to repair his DAF LF. And uh, the Black Machine will be back out for this race today.
waiting for the circuit to be uh, made ready for the trucks. Of course, uh, the marshals will have to be moved back off their post. You can see on the left of your screen there that uh, they've all moved uh, to a position of safety. And now the truck's being led out in the background by the uh, TRP uh, pace truck, as you can see from the outer paddock. I must say a big thank you to all our volunteer marshals, the Orange family as we call them. Couldn't go, could not go racing without our volunteers. If you've ever wanted to become a marshal and get up close to the action, have a look on the uh, website barc.net for the British Automobile Racing Club. And also marshals.co.uk for the British Motorsports Marshals Club. There's uh, a few of our orange family on the uh, run up Halewood Hill on the inside of Druids. They've moved back off their post for safety reasons. As we have seen trucks um, go into and through barriers in the past. So uh, Thruxton last season, you may have seen uh, Neil, Neil Yates had a very big accident at the first corner. Thankfully, no injuries to Neil or any bystanders. So the grid confirmed then for truck race three of the day. It is Paul Rivette on pole in the number 22, the Napa Auto Parts MAN, alongside David Smith, number 11, the returnee this weekend in his MAN. That's the first of the Division 1 trucks. Second row, number 3, Stephen Powell. And 14, John Bowler. Third row, Stuart and Michael Oliver. And fourth row, David Jenkins. And double winner yesterday, Ryan Smith. Neil Yates and Tom O'Rourke be on row 5. And then it's Simon Cole and John Powell. Good to see John Powell is back out. He's repaired that bit of damage from yesterday. The uh, number 6 DAF, the oldest truck on the grid, completing the field. Hopefully we'll see grid sizes rise further as the season uh, goes on. I'm hoping to see possibly Jock Borthwick, the Scotsman, back out in his tartan liveried number 32. Of course, was uh, injured in a motorcycle accident, sadly, last season. So hoping to make a return this year. Quite a few drivers have gone to race uh, on the continent this year. The likes of Ricky Collett, the veteran Yorkshireman, the Reed brothers from Stoke in their Evicos. Uh, John Newell, representing the UK in the uh, European Truck Racing Championship. We're likely to see some of those back at, uh, particularly at Donington in uh, August for the Convoy Weekend. Where it's a massive celebration of all things truck racing. We even saw Isle of Man TT legend John McGuinness racing a truck at that event last year. What is it with motorcycle racers and um, having a go at truck racing? Because, of course, in the... Uh, Heyday of the sport in the late 80s and the 90s. We had Barry Sheen and Steve Parrish racing trucks, and Steve went on to be European champion in the BP liveried uh, Mercedes. You think we could see Valentino Rossi racing a truck one day? I mean, he's, he's now racing GT cars, of course, International GT Open. Who else could we get to race a truck? I reckon uh, Jonathan Ray, the multiple uh, world superbike champion, would be up for racing one of these things. It is Paul Rivette, former multiple Renault Clio champion, who leads them up to the grid. Won the Division 2 championship on a tie-break last year with Adam Bint in the Volvo White. Adam Bint, another man racing on the continent this year. David Smith alongside him in the ex-Ryan Smith MAN. Great to have David back. Very popular figure. He said yesterday, truck racers never retire. Once you've got the bug, you keep going. David Smith, he says, uh, will be just as quick. He's just a bit greyer than he used to be, I think he said yesterday. When he was talking to our man Pointy down in the paddock. We'll hear from Pointy a bit later on. Stephen Powell on the second row in his uh, MAN. The man from uh, West Kingsdown, just down the road from Brands. In the colours of NYR, Neil Yates recovery. See his teammate Neil uh, a little bit further back on the grid. John Bowler's there in the number 14. Just one win in Division 1 last season. He moved up from Division 2 in his uh, MAN, took a win at Thruxton. Stephen Powell uh, failed to win last year, had a few podiums. Had just one win in his Division 1 career so far, former Division 2 champion. Stuart Oliver, a 10 times champion, starts alongside his son Michael. The two GT tyres sponsor machines, new liveries for them this year. Michael had a single win last year as well at Pembrey. There's David Jenkins... And uh, Stuart Oliver and Ryan Smith, who did uh, most of the winning between them last year. Jenks had a couple of wins. The man from Stafford in the black and white Digraph Transport MAN. 
And then eighth on the grid is flying Ryan Smith. Can he make it three out of three this weekend? If he goes to that incredible ninth consecutive title, could he overhaul Stuart Oliver's record of 10 championships? Stuart has been a European champion as well in the past. And I'm sure one day Ryan Smith wants to head into the European Championship as well. Let's see, it has the budget. You need a huge budget to do that, though. Then it's Neil Yates and Tom O'Rourke in the MV Commercial number 86, the International. Lovely looking machine, that one is. Had a spin into the gravel at the start of race two yesterday, and we had our first ever virtual safety truck in the championship. Now the trucks are slowed, just like a virtual safety car in Formula One racing. And then uh, extra time is added on at the end of the race, which confused me at first as well when the chequered flag initially didn't come out. Simon Cole in the pink panther and John Powell in the number six, the black and green beast. The Dutch built DAF complete the Division 2 ranks. They're going to have their work cut out to catch Paul Rivet, who's at the front of the grid in this one. So here we go, behind the TRP truck and trailer parts. Daff, Paul Rivet, the uh, Division 2 runner, with the weight of the world on his shoulders here. Could we see a Division 2 truck hang on and beat the Division 1s? This is going to be very interesting. The Division 2 is slightly less powerful. All these trucks, 12 and 13 litre engines running on sustainable fuel, as you've seen. That was pioneered by Adam Bint in the championship. All turbocharged, water-cooled brakes, electronically limited to 100 miles per hour. On the road, it's 56, of course. These trucks have tachographs recording the data, effectively a black box on each of these trucks, making sure they don't exceed the speed limit. You'll get penalised if you do. Here we go then. First of three races today. David Smith's dropped back a bit there. The grid a little bit out of line. Pace truck will just slow them a bit to give him a chance to catch up. 15 minutes of racing then for the British Truck Racing Championship here on the Brands Hatch Indy Circuit. The third of five races this weekend. Paul Rivette in the Division 2. MAN on pole position. Can he make it three out of three in Division 2? Can Ryan Smith make it three wins out of three in Division 1? David Smith seems to have disappeared. Has he pulled off somewhere? Yeah, the pace truck has stayed out, so it looks like David Smith's got a problem. There he is. He pulled out of line there. I thought he'd slowed up. Is he going into the pits? Yes, he is. That's a shame. He's due to start on the front row. Well, they couldn't start the race, obviously, with a slowing truck on the circuit. So David Smith is into pit lane. His team will be down there. The DS Commercials truck. The red has come out, so the start is aborted. What's going to happen here? The Mini Challenge Club Sport drivers you see looking on there from the assembly area, they're up next. As David Smith brings his MAN down pit lane to see uh, what the problem is. I suspect we will do another formation lap without him and get the race underway and David will be able to join in from the pit lane if he's able. Team are down there to check on him. Find out what the problem is. Hopefully our Pit reporter Pointy is down there as well and can tell us what the problem is with David Smith. This is his first meeting in nearly eight years. giving David Smith uh, a chance there. The marshals will be talking to him. The uh, 
Scrutineer will be down there as well, checking that uh, everything is okay. Somebody in our comment thread qu quoting uh, C.W. McCall's famous song, Convoy. I'm not going to sing it, don't worry. I'm not singing on the rolling lap. Should play it, really, on the rolling lap. They did a donning some one year at Convoy in the Park. There are one or two American trucks here, one of our uh, big recovery vehicles from Mick Gould Commercials we spotted on track uh, yesterday, the big Peterbilt, a show truck in its own right, that machine, saw it uh, recovering John Powell's truck yesterday. So David Smith's truck being uh, worked on down there. Hopefully Pointy can get into um, pit lane and uh, tell us what the problem is. Rest of the drivers waiting patiently. I thought there was another gap for a second there, further back on the grid. No, just Tom O'Rourke's just a bit further forward than he should be. The course car has gone out onto circuit, uh, probably checking if uh, David Smith's truck has leaked any fluid down there. We saw him slow, yes, going into Surtees. That's where the course car, you can just see in the background with the lights flashing has stopped. They're checking the circuit for any fluid that may have been dropped. That's what happened at the start of qualifying yesterday when uh, Stuart Oliver's truck was found to be leaking fuel. So maybe it's a fuel or oil leak on David Smith's truck now. OK. Um, Pointy hasn't, uh, apparently hasn't finished his breakfast yet, so uh, we're told Ian is down in pit lane and can uh, give us a bit more news. Okay, Ian Waterhouse with all these down in pit lane and has got uh, hopefully an update for us. Yeah, welcome down to the pit lane, everybody. Uh, I don't know where Point is, so I thought we'd go run down, have a quick chat with David Smith. I have heard, I overheard actually with the marshals that if he can get it going, he can start from the pit lane, but he's getting out. Let's um, wonder if we can just grab a very quick word with David. Just broke half shaft, I reckon. Broke half shaft? Yeah, just. We get the bumper off and we just do a front tuck. We can do either, it's up to and you. And like. rear end it. Rear end it. Yeah, we yeah. won't get fucked about it, don't we? Rear end it. Yeah. David, uh, not, uh, not ideal, huh? Unbelievable. Just, yeah, I can't believe it. First sort of front row, well, front row start. Um, unfortunately, I think it's broke a half shaft, so, you know, acceleration, it's just trying to steer me off the track, so. No chance. No, it's something I did hear actually over here. The marshal saying if you get if you get it going, you can start from the pit lane. That's not going to happen, though, is it? But we still got more races to go. Potentially fixable. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a half shaft. So if that's all it is, we've got spare half shaft, so we'll have one in it. We're on pole for the second race, so happy days. Oh, man, at least you're still smiling. That's important. Uh, right, so there we go. Race about to go underway. Apologies if you did hear any bad language there. I'm going to hand back to Dave. Thank you, Ian, and uh, yes, apologies for any choice language there, but uh, David Smith obviously a bit frustrated. See him back out for race four. Eleven trucks only then, a broken half shaft for the MAN, but he is on pole for race two, as we heard. We'll see him, I'm sure, back out for that one. So, attempt two at race three of the weekend for the um, British Truck Racing Championship. Um... In our comments, someone asking uh, what was the horn we could hear in the background. That hooter goes off um, when a vehicle is moving in the pit lane, just to warn 
people down there you'll hear it as um, a car or truck comes into the pit lane or leaves the pit lane so let's try again then with the first reverse grid of uh, the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship there's the man looking for a hat trick Ryan Smith his great rival David Jenkins alongside him they were bumping and boring right from the start in race two yesterday now Ryan's got it all to do from eighth on the grid and like one of the two of our show trucks are showing support there from trackside the air horn sounding John Bowler's now got a free run down the outside with no David Smith. Paul Rivett on his own on the front row in the Napa Taco Sis MAN. Simon Cole and John Powell, the other two Division 2 trucks at the back. Oh, yes, I'm looking forward to this. Waiting for the pace truck to pull into pit lane it does so they'll be up towards the red lights as soon as they go out we will be underway from the rolling start Paul Rivette Stephen Powell and John Bowler lead them away the power about to be unleashed as soon as those red lights go out race three of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship revs are up and they get underway and Stephen Powell straight through the middle you see Paul Rivette the slightly less powerful truck immediately overtaken by the Division 1 trucks Stephen Powell side by side with John Bowler. They somehow squeeze three wide towards Paddock Hill Bend. Stuart Oliver's got ahead of his son Michael into third place, but Stephen Powell, who will have the lead as they go into Druid, he locks up big time on the inside there. Ryan Smith up on the outside of David Jenkins. And here comes John Bowler down the curb, almost down the grass on the inside of Graham Hill Bend. He backs out of it, and Stephen Powell, the number three, has the lead. John Bowler in second place. Stuart Oliver is third, then Michael Oliver, David Jenkins, Ryan Smith, Paul Rivett immediately relegated back behind the quicker Division 1 runners. Tom O'Rourke getting past John Powell in the number six. There must have been a bit of a sort out further back as well with Tom O'Rourke having dropped behind Powell and Neil Yates as well. So they come round to complete the first lap then. It is Stephen Powell looking for the second win of his Division 1 career. The former Division 2 champion in the number three. David Jenkins attacking and nearly clips the back of Michael Oliver there coming off Clark Curve. Ryan Smith up alongside David Jenkins. They are deadly rivals, these two. Closing on Michael Oliver. Jenkins goes for the inside. The man from Stafford in the Digraph and Morris Lubricants MAN. GT tyres MAN not just about holding them off. They could go three wide. Surely they're not going to go three wide into Druids. No, Ryan Smith thinks better of it. David Jenkins up the inside. He gets the place away up into fourth position. It's Powell from Bowler. Stuart Oliver. Jenkins is in fourth position. We head out through Graham Hill Bend. The leader a little bit sideways through there. Ryan Smith on the back of the number 12 of Michael Oliver. Next in the order, it's Paul Rivette, the Division 2 leader. Then it's Tom O'Rourke. Then John Powell, who's up to second in Division 2. Ryan Smith trying to go around the outside of Michael Oliver. It's uh, Surtees. He won't get through there. Needs to deal with Michael Oliver fairly quickly there. You can see the steam coming off the front wheels of these trucks. That's uh, from the water-cooled brakes. Tom O'Rourke sliding up the inside there in the 86. Gets past Paul Rivette. John Powell is next. Then it's Neil Yates. Simon Cole at the back of the field. Three trucks line astern for the lead. Stuart Oliver is in attacking mode. Could have a go at John Bowler here up towards Druids. He's having a look on the inside. He's going to get close enough to go through for second. I think he is. Stuart Oliver, the veteran from Northumberland, up the inside. Leans John Bowler out wide. Bowler doesn't give way. He's on the grass again. But Stuart Oliver is through in the Volvo VNL into second place. Now down to the business of trying to catch Stephen Powell. Ryan Smith still back in P6 at the moment behind Michael Oliver. Can't get past the number 12. Michael Oliver's driven very well indeed. He had a bit of an incident packed. 2023 had a big smash at uh, Brands Hatch here at Brands Hatch at the end of the season, getting tangled up with the Reed brothers. It's driven very well indeed so far this weekend. Stephen Powell leads, but a new fastest lap of the race recorded by David Jenkins in fourth, one minute point two three six. He's closing on the top three now. Ryan Smith continues to attack Michael Oliver. Stephen Powell now coming under fire for the lead of the race from Stuart Oliver. 
John Bowler holding off David Jenkins for third. Tom O'Rourke's closing up on these two as well now. Ryan Smith is rather bottled up behind Michael Oliver. He knows his truck is quicker. He just can't get the line away from the number 12. Through Graham Hill Bend they go. Tom O'Rourke closing up behind them as well. In eighth position overall is Paul Rivette, the leader of Division 2. Stephen Powell, C, the number 7, GT tyres, Volvo, big in his mirror as uh, Ryan Smith manages to make his way through. He forces his way through at Surtees, up into P5. Finally just uh, found the gap there and went for it. And Ryan Smith up into fifth, now going after David Jenkins. Jenkins has still got the fastest lap of the race. There's Tom O'Rourke in seventh, the better run for him, had a difficult debut for his new truck yesterday, including a spin at Paddock Bend at the start of race two. Had a spin in race one down at Surtees as well, but re was able to rejoin both times. So half a second in it for the lead between Powell and Stuart Oliver. Might be less than that now because down into Graham Hill Bend, he's right on the uh, rear axle almost of Stephen Powell. Powell pulls away down the straight in the MAN. Does seem to have the straight line speed advantage, looking for the second win of his Division 1 career. First came in 2022 at Thruxton, he celebrated like he just won the championship. Windscreen wiper going on John Bowler's uh, MAN, the man from Stockport. Don't think it's raining here at Prans Hatch at the moment. Let's say that again, don't want to put the curse of the commentator on the weather. Ryan Smith now chasing hard after David Jenkins. Is he going to do the fastest lap? Yes, 59.369 for Ryan Smith. That's the first lap under one minute in this third race of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship. Stephen Powell continues to set the pace. Holding off Stuart Oliver. The only truck in the top six not to do a personal best that time through was Jenkins. He's still on the tail of John Bowler. Neil Yates is still there in ninth behind this man, Paul Rivette, who's uh, still leading Division 2. And you could see off the line there the uh, power deficit from Division 2 to Division 1. Here's the second place man in Division 2. That's Simon Cole, man from Dartford, just east of London. Another man on his local circuit this weekend. He's ahead of John Powell now, second in Division 2. And look at the way that Brian Smith is reeling in David Jenkins, taking lengths out of his advantage. He'll go for the inside into Druids. Jenkins won't give way. He moves across, holds the place. And they're closing up on Powell as well. Still Stephen Powell it is who leads, and he's increased his lead to 1.35 seconds now. Pulled away a little from Stuart Oliver. Eight and a half minutes still to go. Not even at halfway yet, Ryan Smith has still got plenty of time to make his way towards the sharp end of the field. All a question of getting the right lines. He's up behind Jenkins there. There's a squeal of tyres in the background, whether somebody's had a moment somewhere we couldn't see. No change among the leading group. There's Michael Oliver still on his own in sixth place. Ryan Smith on the back of David Jenkins. He's doing exactly what he did to uh, Michael Oliver earlier on. Squeezes up the inside. Couldn't tell if there was a, a bit of contact there. But Smith is through and up into fourth position. There's Michael Oliver. On his own now in sixth. Dropped away a little. Plunge through Paddock Hill Bend once again. Now Paul Rivette is up into seventh place. I'm wondering if it's Tom O'Rourke who's had a moment somewhere further back because Rivette's come through in seventh. Yes, yeah, so O'Rourke's dropped a place. Yes, his last lap was a one minute ten. His best lap of one minute, so he's lost a few seconds somewhere. It must have been him who had uh, that moment when we heard someone with uh, a bit of tyre squeal. John Bowler now coming under fire from Flying Ryan. It's just past half distance in this Third race of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship. Ryan Smith will try and get a run on John Bowler. It's a bit wide there, coming off clearways. Windscreen wiper still flapping around on the Rochdale LGV driver training sponsored MAN. Can he hold off the Daimler Freightliner, the bonneted machine? 
Kind of reminds me of the old Phoenix MANs that used to compete in the European Championship in the 90s. Likes of Gerd Korber, Heinz Werner Lenz and so on. A lot of the German racers favoured them. Bowler under intense pressure and Smith's surely going to get the better exit there from uh, Graham Hillbend. He's surely going to go through into third. And he does it. Up into P3 goes Ryan Smith. Now down to the business of trying to catch Stuart Oliver and Stephen Powell, who's still hanging on in the lead. It's great driving by Stephen Powell. David Jenkins now resumes the task of trying to get past John Bowler. This race results will uh, set the grid for race five later on. Who's in eighth place at the moment? It's Tom O'Rourke, so we could see him on pole for our last race of the day. Did the uh, top eight flipped around. The gap has come down again to point seven of a second, near enough. Stuart Oliver ready to attack once again. He knows Ryan Smith will be coming after them. Settling down a little at the uh, midpoint of this race beyond the midpoint now, it's over five minutes left. A little bit of damage you can see on the left there of um, Stephen Powell's truck, a little bit of a crease in the uh, bodywork. Newly liveried Tahuna Honey and GT tyre sponsored uh, Volvo VNL chases after the local man. John Powell has pulled into the pits in the number six, so uh, further gremlins for the Division 2 runner. Picked up uh, damage yesterday, unfortunately. Ryan Smith is now almost with Stuart Oliver. Another new fastest lap, 59.192 for Ryan Smith. Last time around. Average speed of 73.7 miles an hour around the Brands Hatch Indy Circus. He's caught Stuart Oliver now. It's a brief look to the inside. Not close enough. He's got four minutes to get past these two and uh, take his hat trick. Over the line they go. Still your leader is Stephen Powell. Can he hold on for his first win since uh, July 2022? Stuart Oliver going with him. We're not going to get a Caterham style three wide finish, are we? Can you get three trucks wide around Brands Hatch? Well, they did at the start with Paul Rivette, Stephen Powell, and um, John Bowler. Now Stuart Oliver switching from attack to defence because he knows Brian Smith is there behind him. Saw him drop back a little bit there through Druids. Steam pouring off his front wheels. He uses those water cooled brakes. This could allow Stephen Powell the uh, gap he needs here. He he's escaped by a couple of truck lengths. Oliver defending the battle of the bonneted trucks for second place. Here comes Smith. This is his favourite overtaking place up the inside. Stuart Oliver doesn't give him room. They lean on each other. Oliver goes wide. And Ryan Smith goes through into second place. Now, let's see what the gap was as they crossed the line. It's only 0.8 of a second. I reckon Smith's going to do this. I reckon he'll catch Stephen Powell. He's got two and a half minutes to do so. A couple more laps. And he's right with the MAN now. John Bowler under fire. He's still holding off David Jenkins somehow. He's sideways there, though, off Druids. I think he'll just have the inside line for Graham Hill Bend, but all eyes are on Ryan Smith. It's not a question of if he's going to attack and try and get down the inside of Stephen Powell, but when and where. He's on the back of the MAN. Now that's where Stephen Powell needs to be careful. That's where Ryan Smith does his overtaking here at Brands Hatch. Through Surtees and McLaren. Powell will move to defend up the Brabham straight. Takes the inside line. This is going to be a very interesting conclusion. Further back, looks like Paul Rivette's got his hat-trick in Division 2 sewn up. It's 
1.45 or just over in it as they cross the line there on the clock. So we'll have a couple more laps to go for Stephen Powell to defend. And he is defending through Druids. Got to be so careful here. There's one false move and not only will Ryan Smith be into the lead but I think Stuart Oliver will be through to second as well. Who's to Graham Hill Ben? Three of them, line astern. MAN, Daimler and Volvo. This is where Powell's got to be careful. Smith up alongside almost. He had a look there. Trying to get the inside line away for this right-hander. That's good defensive work by Powell. Oliver's having a go at Smith as well. Smith's attacking and defending at the same time. Coming round to start their final lap this time. An absorbing fight at the front. Still John, po John Bowler as well. Full credit to him. He's still holding off David Jenkins for fourth. Over the line they go. Where is the move going to come from Ryan Smith? He's surely going to go for it at some point on this last lap. Always in the background, uh, I can hear there. Sound like somebody's dragging some bodywork or something. Side by side behind them, Bowler and Jenkins, but uh, we're not going to look away from this lead battle. Through Druids, still Stephen Powell. This is a terrific defensive job. Down into Graham Hill Bend for the last time. Now he's really got to defend. He's got to make this the widest MAN in the country. Oh, and they're coming up on a back marker as well. Simon Cole, look out, Simon. Smith's up alongside. This is going to be interesting. They've met the back marker at, uh, well, possibly the worst place imaginable. Cole has got out of their way, though, and let them through. Smith didn't get the move done at Surtees. Here they come up towards the line. Has Stephen Powell done it? One last chance for Ryan Smith to try and get up the inside. Powell's going to move to cover. And Stephen Powell's going to win it. Brilliant from Stephen Powell. He takes the win. Ryan Smith second, Stuart Oliver third. That's an excellent drive from Stephen Powell. And Ryan Smith is denied the hat-trick by three-tenths of a second. John Bowler held off David Jenkins all the way as well. Michael Oliver sixth. Tom O'Rourke will come through for seventh. Well, the chequered flag officially has gone out, but uh, these two are still racing each other. There was no, there's no flag on the start-finish line, I assume, for safety reasons, but on the timing screen, the uh, chequered flag has been shown. Ryan Smith goes ahead of Stephen Powell. Have they? Well, there was no yellow earlier on, so they can't have uh, added time on. The chequered flag had already been shown on the timing screen, but the driver's racing on. But the race has officially finished. There was no chequered flag shown on the uh, start-finish line, but on the, the timing had counted down to zero. We'll have to confirm that in a moment then. A confusing end to our first truck race of the day. But the chequered flag officially uh, on the timing came out at the end of lap 15 with Stephen Powell shown as the winner they're not showing a chequered flag on the start finish line presumably for safety reasons because of marshals being down there and the uh, result I've got has Stephen Powell as the winner but they are not showing a physical chequered flag on the finish line for our truck races Now, as far as we have it, Stephen Powell is the winner. By three-tenths of a second ahead of Ryan Smith, then Stuart Oliver in third. John Bowler holding off David Jenkins all the way for fourth place. Michael Oliver in sixth, and Tom O'Rourke seventh. Paul Rivette wins Division Two. Then Neil Yates, John Powell, Simon Cole pulled into the pits at the end of uh, what we have as the last lap, and David Smith, unfortunately, a non-starter. Well, Pointy has apparently finished his breakfast and he's down in pit lane. Well, wow, good morning. Nice of you to join me. How the devil are we? So we're down here on the pit lane after a bit of a mix-up over that last lap. But the chequered flag 
like the virtual uh, safety car was in fact out somewhere so Steve Powell taking the first place for the race it's been corrected on TSL it's his first win of uh, the season he's gonna feel absolutely fantastic especially with yesterday he even himself saying not the greatest of results my friend uh, Alan over here making his way to try and get that pole position interview but I'm gonna have to take it off him <laughs> Do you reckon if I play with his iPad a bit, then he might might not notice if I just tap him on the shoulder here. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Very fantastic. The team all around here cheering on as uh, it's kind of, it's kind of, Come on, come on, we need to, even if Alan's in first, we need to get this on film, come on. Elated for Steve, the team very, very happy. I don't even think Steve knew he was going to get that, to be honest. Let's have a word, actually, with, uh, with Stuart Oliver. The whole race, fantastic race. He'll be thrilled. 3 to 4 o'clock in the morning. Let's get this on clipped. Oh, Stuart Oliver, absolutely fantastic race there. I'll tell you what, all happened in the last two laps really, didn't it? I did, I think there was a bit of oil or fuel or something was down and it just got a bit larry, but... Uh, no idea where that came from. No, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. <laughs> <For a> change. <laughs> Not guilty, Your Honour. No, no, but no, it was good, yeah. Steve. Steve drove a good race, but it had the legs on him, but he had the grip out of the corners, but on the brakes, everybody, he defended well, and whenever had any damage, so happy with that, yeah. Absolutely fantastic result. I mean, yeah, the, the, the chequered flag was a bit of a confusion point, though, wasn't it? I believe so. I was, my, 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 Simon came on the radio, he says, oh, he says, ignore that flag, it happened, it finished the lap before. Yeah. I said, oh, that's different, <laughs> I never did that before. But no, it was good, so, so that, I presume Steve has won the he race. He has, he's got the first place trophy, yeah. Oh, well, I might buy a drink then. You never know. You never Stranger things have happened. Stranger things have happened. Stuart, absolutely, congratulations. Well done to you, sir. Um, Alan's finished with uh, Steve Powell now, so you stay up there with the bird's eye view and we'll try and get a good angle. Steve, Pointy. how the devil are we? Oh, um, I, I take it you're aware you got the first place now, yes? I was, um, <laughs> I was blogging right and we had a bit of doom still in front of him. Matt said, all right, you've gone first, so I lifted. Then I go around a bit wide, there's no red flags, and I sort of crap myself a bit. And yeah, mate, what a race. And, uh, yeah. You, but, you've definitely found your form today, haven't you? I mean, you know, you, yesterday you weren't terribly impressed with yourself. Uh, you know, we could hear it in your voice. You were, you were hoping for more. And I feel like today, what a fantastic start. I mean, you'd done Paul Rivette before the first corner, by the looks of I mean, we knew we had the boost on Paul, unfortunately, but we knew we was half second off the base. We've now found that. Uh, the boys worked till 10, 11 o'clock last night on a new cowling. It's just, it's a new lorry, but for me, it's for the boys and the family and everyone, I'm so happy for them. And for me, it's like, I just need a drink, I've got a problem. You do, yeah, you, you've done well, you've done well. That was 15 minutes of pure adrenaline, hard slug. Well done, Ash, well done to the team. We can see they're on their way back down to the Park Fermo now, uh, which of course is back down in the outer paddock, which means a lot of the teams, including myself, have got a bit of walking to do. So uh, thank you for joining me for the first race of the day. What a fantastic result for Steve Powell, and we'll catch it with you after the lunch break. Well, thanks Pointy down in pit lane, and uh, that bit of confusion over the uh, Lap the race ended on there. I wonder if somebody was playing an April Fool's joke on us somehow there. But uh, Steve Powell does get uh, his first race win since July 2022. But, so Steve Powell does get his win. So that's the main thing. Ryan Smith second place this time. So still will be out in front in the championship. Paul Rivette, meanwhile. Gets three out of three in Division 2, and uh, Paul will be on pole position for Race 5 because he dropped back to eighth overall behind Tom O'Rourke. Checkered flag is apparently being shown as uh, a light only, not as a wave flag, and we can't see it from our camera position. That's uh, what's thrown me off a little. They're not waving a physical checkered flag. 
for the trucks just appearing on the light gantry. That's uh, cleared that up then. No April Fool's jokes here, thankfully. Meanwhile, our next race is for the BMW Minis, the uh, Mini Challenge Club Sports uh, grid with Airtech Motorsport. We saw their first race at the end of the programme yesterday. It was a dominant win for Ross Alexander, the man from Birmingham in the Sussex Road and Race prepared car, defeating the uh, Mini Cooper Coupe of Stephen Berry number treble six last year's open class champion they're the only two open class cars running this weekend they're the more powerful cars so they start at the front of the grid and then we've got the s class and the cooper class further back they start in uh, three groups on the grid for this one this will be a 15 minute race and we caught up with some of the drivers a little earlier on Right, everybody, I'll pop down to the garages because almost time for the next race of the day, the Mini Challenge Club Sport. We saw a cracker yesterday, didn't we? Freddie Hewitt, of course, finishing first in class, third overall on track. This is Zach Blackwell's car. Let's grab Zach. Quick word if we can. I just saw you, didn't I, coming through Park Fermi. He said you were a little bit underpowered. Yeah, yeah, it's just a bit like we've last minute change of a car, so just to mean that we can get on the grid. And uh, yeah, we're a little bit unprepared for the beginning of the season but we've only had the car a couple of weeks so we'll uh, try and make it a bit lighter for the uh, for the next round so th there's points up for grabs of course it's still up there but it's something of a glorified test session yeah definitely a glorified test session <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna be polite <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah um i mean made strides forward in the first race just purely by a little just a little setup change which was which went in the right way for me yeah. and ma managed to keep my tires in the right place for the whole race like my lap times were from the beginning of the race to the end of the race there was only half a second difference yeah. so at least that's that's a that's a that's a good stride forward and uh We'll see what we can uh, get. See what the next two test sessions leave us with. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on you, Thanks for talking to us, mate. Really appreciate it. Uh, watch your step there, John, as well. Uh, just come around very quickly with me, uh, if we could. I just want to give you a quick update uh, on Mr. David Taylor as well. Finished third in class. So we did see him this morning. He got called up to the stewards, but I'm delighted to say this is his car here. Uh, he does hold on to that third place in class. So here we go. Almost time to go racing for the Mini Challenge Club Sport here at Brands Hatch. Dave, over to you. Yes, uh, thanks Ian. Just waiting for um, the cars to uh, head out on the grid when the circuit is given the all clear. We've also got uh, one of the recovery vehicles. You'll see there removing the uh, broken down MAN of David Smith from in our pit lane at the moment. Uh, which of our recovery vehicles is that it's one of the big three axle ones that's the lj transportation uh, daf we've got down there thanks to uh, steve buers from trackside recovery who sent through a bit of background info on our recovery vehicles that's a daf xf that three axle vehicle 13 litre 530 horsepower and with two 23 ton winches lj transportation who cover across the uh, southeast of england providing motoring assistance providing assistance to David Smith because of course uh, with the half shaft broken that uh, truck has to be lifted from the uh, rear end so the minis are up next then and we're followed by the pickup trucks I'm really looking forward to that one they were for me the race of the day yesterday with um, a little bit of contact on the last lap going into Graham Hill Bend between um, the two leaders and uh, Matt Simpson ended up going from fourth to first in one move on the final lap and he started from the back row of the grid after a problem in qualifying. Then we've got more caterums. Tom McEwing looking for a double in the Sigma 135 category of the Caterham Graduates Championship sponsored by Sim Motorsports. And then we have the Track Action Saloons, a mixture of different uh, cars in that one. Let's have a quick look who's taken uh, pole position for that first race. It was Gareth Porter's Peugeot 205 that has... Uh, been on top in that one so far we should have 25 cars out there for that one look out for the separate class uh, towards the back of the grid for the Peugeot 206 GTIs We've got quite a few junior saloon car graduates in the track action saloons as well 
that's followed by the lunch break and then we'll have uh, another truck race more from the junior saloon cars Sigma 150s for the Caterhams our final Caterham race of the day then more from the Minis their third race British Truck Racing Championship finale then the second race of the track action saloons and sports cars say saloons and sports cars have got a couple of Mazda MX-5s in there as well and uh, the pickup truck racing championship finale rounds out the day waiting for this uh, truck to be cleared from pit lane at the moment if you follow uh, Mick Gould's uh, page on social media you will be able to see what some of these big recovery vehicles get up to they really have to be able to get into about just about any uh, situation any location to recover stranded or crashed vehicles and it really is some impressive um, logistics needed sometimes to get them towed away also down there I can see um, the Ito rescue and recovery Ford Ranger Steve Buers is driving that pickup this weekend also told his better half Stacy is celebrating her birthday this weekend so many happy returns Stacy it's a Ford Ranger wild track thunder two litre twin turbo very mean and moody looking vehicle that pickup isn't it wouldn't mind seeing that as the uh, pace truck for our pickup truck racers actually so it's a short pause while we uh, get David Smith's truck recovered and then we'll have the minis um, out on track truck is towed away hopefully we'll see David Smith back out uh, after the lunch break with a new half shaft fit plenty of attractions at um, trackside this weekend there's uh, some show trucks on display some fairground rides even monster truck rides I was uh, lucky enough to take a ride in a monster truck as I mentioned yesterday at uh, Northampton Stock Car Stadium a few years ago that was an experience certainly better than a roller coaster that was the Red Dragon monster truck but it's a different one we've got here this weekend Just a slight delay here, just while we get uh, David Smith's race truck back into the paddock. As soon as that's complete, we will bring on uh, the Mini Challenge, the Club Sports class. Of course, the uh, top class of the Mini Challenge, the uh, JCW John Cooper Works Cars Racing, support of the British Touring Car Championship. We've also seen the Mini Challenge Trophy category race with us on BARC TV over the last couple of years Tom Ovendon it was who took the title last year before that it was Nelson King very talented young uh, touring car racers of the future racing the mini challenge spectators keeping nice and warm on the uh, inside of Druids that is pretty cold day here at Brands Hatch on this Easter Monday how many people have brought Easter eggs with them to this event there's the monster truck the slingshots oh, I've got a couple of them out there that's a white knuckle ride if ever I saw one some of our show trucks there as well Volvos and Scania's among others only one Volvo racing in the, the British Championship, Stuart Oliver's, and we haven't seen a Scania for several years. Uh, Trevor Martin in Division 2 was last to run a Scania. 
Well, the Mini's coming up to the grid then. Let's have a look at our grid. The uh, AirTech Motorsports Mini Challenge Club Sports. It's the open class cars on the front row. So Ross Alexander and uh, Stephen Berry take the uh, front row. I think this uh, grid based on the results of uh, the race yesterday, but lined up in groups. So uh, on the uh, second row, the uh, front row of the S class for S56 and F S53 Minis. We've got Freddie Hewitt, number five, and uh, Jamie Ringer in 959. Freddie was third overall yesterday there in S56 cars. The winner of the S53 class was Charlie Newton Derby, number 12. He lines up alongside number 44, Charlie Heatley. And we've got number one, Zach Blackwell, last year's S-class champion and 14 of Lee Campbell. Next in the order, number 190 of Alan Lee, S56, and Ian Trundley, 41, with the S53. Then Gary Papworth, 55, that's a uh, Cooper S uh, Clubman Estate that uh, he's got out there. Something a bit different. And 231 of Steve Webb. Behind him, 58 of Matthew Hibbard and 33, Lauren Taylor. 86, David Maguire. 27, Emma Dawson, all the way from Aberdeenshire. And number 29, Paul Sawyer, a DJ by profession lines up at the back of that group and behind them we have got the uh, less powerful Cooper class class C as we refer to them 42 Andy Langley is the first of them winner yesterday it starts alongside Daniel Truman in the number 19 and 28 David Taylor 53 Neil Clark in the uh, Union flag livery car we call him Austin Powers and 266 Jeffrey Surrey in his first ever meeting starts from the back great uh, field of BMW Minis of all kinds. This will be a 15 minute race. There's that uh, Mini Coupe, the only one of its kind racing in the UK for treble six of uh, Stephen Berry. That won the open class title last year. There's Charlie Heatley, number 44. Zach Blackwell, we heard from earlier, the number one. Lee Campbell, Alan Lee. 41 is next, that's Ian Trundley. Lauren Taylor in the uh, Halford sponsored car. There's the Cooper class towards that. There's Neil Clark in uh, the Austin Powers look alike. Jeffrey Surrey, our novice, at the back, making his debut this weekend. See the novice cross on the back of his car. Everybody has to wear one of those on their car for their first six motor races. BMW Minis make fantastic race cars in all forms of motorsports. You've seen them in a variety of club racing classes and in rallycross as well these days. There's the estate car, number 55, Gary Papworth going through. Steve Webb, 231, had a problem on the last lap of yesterday's race and dropped a few places. Standing starts. And I suspect we'll see the two open class cars clear off in front here. Ross Alexander certainly cleared off yesterday. He won by 16 seconds in yesterday's race in the Sussex Road and Race Car. Ross based in Birmingham. And a few wins last year as well. But is he going to clear off in front again here? Or will Stephen Berry be able to match him in that uh, unique coupe? Freddie Hewitt. I've seen his sister Chloe Hewitt take a few successes in the Mini Challenge over the years as well. Jamie Ringer head the S group. Last couple of cars into line at the back. Then we'll get the green flag from the marshal at the back there. There is the green flag, so the marshals are happy. Everyone's in position. Race two of the weekend for the AirTech Motorsports Mini Challenge Club Sports. In partnership with Ravenol, Garmin and several more sponsors gets underway with race number two. This is done by Zach Blackwell there from in the S group. Steve Webb coming through as well in the number 231. But it'll be the two open class cars who lead them off. Looks like Stephen Berry's got the better getaway from the outside the front row, and the coupe takes the lead as they head up towards Druids for the first time. They're all away cleanly. Ross Alexander has a look on the inside. Berry gives him room. Looks like Berry will just about keep his foot in and keep the lead down towards Graham Hill Bent. The two leaders side by side. Alexander trying to go around the outside, doesn't manage to do it. Berry leads, and Jamie Ringer in the orange car has got the lead of the second group, the S class cars. There's two subclasses in that S56 and S53 
two more powerful open class cars will start to pull away Alexander has got the lead he took the lead at the end of Cooper Straits from Stephen Berry are we going to see him clear off in front again side by side for the lead of the S group Freddie Hewitt in the grey car trying to get up the inside of Jamie Ringer and behind them looks like Charlie Newton Derby in the black car Jamie Ringer holds the advantage then it's Blackwell next in the order then Heatley Lee Campbell and Webb completing the top 10 over the line there's Lauren Taylor chasing Ian Trundley in the number 41 Jamie Ringer with a great getaway he had a fine effort in qualifying yesterday but Freddie Hewitt going for the inside and takes the lead of the class takes third place Charlie Newton Derby the black number 12 again top of the S53 class he's got Zach Blackwell up behind him in the number one then it's Charlie Heatley Alan Lee in the white car number 190 start to settle down then it's uh, number 42 of um, Andy Langley man from Norfolk who leads class C further back the slightly less powerful cars Lee Campbell has got ahead of uh, Steve Webb the number 231 Stephen Berry and Ross Alexander as expected clearing off it's Alexander who leads by 2.3 seconds already he's just on a 54.837 seconds a blistering lap on the, on the second lap of this race as uh, Lee Campbell gets past the A. Reeve Motorsport car of Alan Lee into Paddock Hill Bend Freddie Hewitt leads the S group Alan Lee now under pressure from Steve Webb in the 2-3-1 Graham Hillbend come the leads. Zach Blackwell putting Charlie Newton Derby under pressure for fifth position overall and third in group. There's Lauren Taylor, the 33, and there's that uh, estate car, one of a couple of estates running in UK club racing, the uh, mini estates. Meanwhile, Steve Webb attacks Alan Lee. Nice to have a go up the inside through clearways. Can't quite draw alongside. Yes, it's uh, Sussex Road and Race, the uh, team that have built uh, leader Ross Alexander's car. They've got their estate car as well. It's in uh, turbo tin tops, among other series. And through goes Steve Webb, ahead of Lee, up into ninth position. It's a battle further back, Ian Trundley. if he's any relation to Bobby Trundley the uh, Team Brit GT racer trying to hold off the 58 there of Matthew Hibbard looks behind them Lauren Taylor and uh, Gary Papworth in the estates there's 27 Emma Dawson she's staying ahead of the 86 car very smartly turned out car there for David Maguire their 15th and 16th Taylor, another long distance uh, visitor. He's got a couple of Scots in this race. I mentioned Emma Dawson, David Taylor's from Dundee, racing the number 28 car there, further back in Class C, which is still being led, I think, yes, by Andy Langley. He's got ahead of uh, the number 29 of Paul Sawyer. There is Langley, the uh, red number 42. Comes from Fakenham in Norfolk. Town more famous for horse racing than motor racing. Andy Langley's been racing this car for a few years now. Well clear of his class opposition at the moment. There's Emma Dawson, the 27. Had an off down at Clearways yesterday. It's the Norfolk mini car that leads Class C. Second in that class, Daniel Truman. Then Neil Clark, David Taylor and Geoffrey Surrey on his debut at the back of the field at the moment. Five laps completed by our leader. Lead gap is just over four seconds now for Ross Alexander over Stephen Berry. Freddie Hewitt still third overall. He's 1.7 seconds ahead of Jamie Ringer in the 959. There's our leader, the SRR Motorsports Sussex Road and Race. Specialists in preparing BMW Minis, sponsored by Sitma Mini. The dealership chain was set up by British touring car legend Frank Sitna. Stephen Berry in second. There's Hewitt in third. Back marker, that'll be Geoffrey Surrey being lapped, just uh, learning his craft on his debut. Jamie Ringer may have lost a place there. Yes, Charlie Newton Darby's come through. That must have happened up at Druids. So Newton Darby's up into fourth. He leads class S53. Behind them, Zach Blackwell, the number one, last year's S class champion. And Charlie Heatley, Lee Campbell, Steve Webb, and Alan Lee. 
looking to make a move possibly on Campbell there at the top of your picture. Campbell moves to cover into Paddock Hill Bend. Steve Webb up on the outside in the number 231, the man from Guildford in Surrey. There's a green flag wave. We've got somebody in the gravel at uh, Paddock Hill Bend. Now, who was that? Who have we lost? Pick that up in a moment. There's a car in the gravel up at Paddock. Now, will that bring out the safety car, I wonder? Still racing on at the moment. Steve Webb chasing Lee Campbell. Yes, I think the safety car is coming out. You can see in the background there, we have a car into the gravel up at Paddock Hill Bend. The safety car is going to come out. You can't quite uh, see who it is. Oh, it's number 28. It's David Taylor from the uh, Class C ranks. That's a great shame. Try and uh, get a replay of what happened there if we can. I can't see um, if there's any major damage to that car. It is very easy to roll over if you slide into the gravel at Paddock Hill Bend if the car digs in sideways. Trackside recovery. Have uh, another job to do. That's their pickup truck in position. Safety car has picked up our leader, Ross Alexander. Now, he's just starting to pull away from his class rival, Stephen Berry, but this is going to close everything up again. So, David Taylor, his uh, meeting comes to an early end. Long journey back to Dundee. Try and uh, see a replay, if we can, of uh, what happened there, whether he just ran wide or if there was any contact. He was battling towards the back of the field, along with um, Neil Clark and Paul Sawyer, I think. The uh, telehandler being brought in there to lift the car out of the gravel. Nice little discussion going on in our comments about estates and vans which have raced. Yes, somebody remembering the Peugeot 806 people carrier that raced in the Spa 24 hours back in the 90s. That's, uh, thanks Dan Bartlett for uh, that one. That car still exists, it's in a museum in Belgium. It's based on a Peugeot 405 Super Touring chassis, that one was. Now, of course, the 850 estates uh, from Volvo in the 1994 BTCC. In the early days of the VW Racing Cup, there were even a couple of Volkswagen Caddy vans that raced. One year in um, the BTCC as well, uh, Honda ran the Civic Tourer. And in the Classic Touring Car Racing Club, John Hillier has his E36 Touring BMW. Scalda in our comment thread says a BTCC Volvo estate drives in a German classic racing series. I think that would be a replica. As far as I know, only two of those were ever built. And I know at least one is in uh, Volvo's museum in Sweden. Paul says, anybody remember the Montego in MG Owners Club racing? Yes. Um, I think it's Alan Forster that's got one of those. It's based on an MG ZR platform. The Montego estate. Hopefully, we'll see that back out later in the season. Wasn't racing yesterday. Stuart Evans says, "Want an estate racing at Pembroke?" Yes, yeah, that's that was the Montego, I think. But there have been other Montego estates. I think it was Andy Campbell who uh, raced a Montego estate a few years ago in the MG Owners Club. Right, so I'm waiting to see if Paddock Bend is clear during this safety car period. 
Adam Elsa reminds us, yes, of course, the BTCC Subaru Livorg as well. How can I forget that? Jason Plato and Ash Sutton among the drivers who race those. Are we going to get back underway with our mini Challenge Club Sport with AirTech Motorsport race? Just under four minutes left on the clock. This will give Stephen Berry his chance, but the safety car still out at the moment, still clearing up the incident at uh, Panakil Ben with David Taylor in the gravel. Fastest lap of the race with Ross Alexander, our race leader, 54.837. Stephen Berry second. Freddie Hewitt still leads the S-Class, Class S56. Class S53 is led by Charlie Newton, Derby, who's fourth. Still Andy Langley leading Class C. Fine panorama of Brands Hatch there. Looks like uh, Paddock Bend is now clear. Well done to the Orange family, our volunteer marshals. That's another racing estate uh, Robert Lewis has just reminded us of, A.J. Howe's Ford Focus Estate in modified Ford racing. I think that might have originally been built as a time attack car. So we'll be getting back underway very shortly. Here's a replay of what happened to David Taylor. Yep, just slid out wide, straight on into the gravel. Nobody else near him at the time, and uh, David stuck there and needing recovery. Looks like we are almost ready then to get uh, back underway. The two drivers hanging back slightly. Ian Trumsley there, the blue and pink number 41 car. Safety car is coming into pit lane. We heard the hooter go off in the background and we are racing once again here at Brands Hatch. The Mini Challenge Club Sport gets back underway. Down towards Paddock Hill Bend they go. Are we going to see Ross Alexander pull away? We've got just under two minutes left, so time for a couple more laps. Can Stephen Berry stay with it. This is his chance to try and catch up in the Mini Coupe. Freddie Hewitt in third, then Charlie Newton Derby, Jamie Ringer, Zach Blackwell. Swing their way through Druids. Charlie Heatley next in the order, but Freddie Hewitt already getting away from Newton Derby in the number 12. Jamie Ringer. First time we've seen him out on BARC TV. A fine performance from him, but Ross Alexander's already clearing off. He's heading for two wins out of two. Steve Webb making a move there on Lee Campbell. Gets past the number 14 into Surtees. Covering after a few problems at the end of yesterday's race. One minute five left as they cross the line. So we should get two more laps. Lee Campbell now in the clutches of Alan Lee. The number 190 at the bottom end of the top ten there. The A. Reeve Motorsport car. If memory serves me right, Ross Alexander used to drive with them. But now in a Sussex Road and Race prepared car. Through Druids they go for what should be the penultimate time. I think we've lost um, Emma Dawson in the number 27 and also David Maguire has just pulled into the pits in the 86. So whether there's been some contact further back, I'm not sure. We didn't see. I thought I glimpsed a car parked up on the inside on the exit of Druids. So that, that might be Emma's car up there. There's uh, Daniel Truman. Under fire from Neil Clark, a couple of our Class C cars. Neil Clark in the other Norfolk mini car, the Union flag machine. There's our class leader, Andy Langley, in the red car. Paul Sawyer in with them as well. He's an S class car, a newcomer to racing this year. Ross Alexander continues to pull away. Yes, there's Emma Dawson's car. It is parked up on the exit of Druids. I thought I glimpsed that on the previous lap. So she's out of the race, sadly. We've lost David Maguire into the pits as well. But it's going to be a win for the second time this weekend for Ross Alexander. Looks like it's going to be a repeat for all four of our class winners from yesterday. Ross Alexander from Birmingham in the Sussex Road and Race, number 320 car, out of the final corner. It's cleared away once again on the restart from Stephen Berry and he's going to come in for win number two of the weekend. Ross Alexander 
comes up to take the chequered flag. It'll be Stephen Berry in second. Freddie Hewitt wins class S56 and Charlie Newton Derby S53 in third and fourth. And it's Jamie Ringer, Zach Blackwell, Charlie Heatley, Steve Webb. Lee Campbell holds off Alan Lee. Next in the order, it's Ian Trundley just ahead of um, number 58 of Matthew Hibbard. Wait for our Class C pace setters to come through. It should be Andy Langley who takes the Class C win. There he is, number 42. Langley wins Class C for the second time. Daniel Truman just holding off Neil Clark for second in class. Now, David Maguire has rejoined from the pits and will come in to uh, complete the race. He finishes in 19th place a lap down. Final finisher will be uh, our novice, Geoffrey Surrey. Two finishes for him from his first two races. Can't complain. We lost Emma Dawson, sadly, there. So uh, not a good race for the Scottish drivers. They both failed to finish, unfortunately. But it's a win for Ross Alexander. Not quite as uh, clear-cut as yesterday because of the safety car. 4.69 seconds, his winning margin over Stephen Berry. Freddie Hewitt wins the S Group and wins Class S56 in third. Charlie Newton Derby wins Class S53 in fourth. Then Jamie Ringer fifth. Zach Blackwell sixth ahead of Charlie Heatley. Steve Webb, Lee Campbell and Alan Lee complete the top ten. Then it was Ian Trundley, Matthew Hibbard, Gary Papworth in the estate and Lauren Taylor 14th. And then came uh, the Class C winner Andy Langley. Paul Sawyer was next. Then Daniel Truman, Neil Clark, David Maguire after a pit stop and Geoffrey Surrey, the final finisher. Let's head down to Ian in Park Ferme in just a moment. Well, welcome to Park Ferme, everybody. Uh, a case of deja vu, actually, isn't it? A little bit yesterday, same top three from yesterday, but um, Ross, I'll let you get your helmet off. Things a little bit tighter this time, the safety car, of course, bunching things up. Kind of ran away a bit a little bit yesterday in the second half. Yeah. Today, you weren't allowed to because of that safety car. Yeah, no, it was difficult. Um, I know where I'm stronger than Steve, so I tried to make uh, the most of that. Um, we have the pace today over Steve, so I wasn't really too worried. We've been dominant all weekend, so no, I'm, uh, I love the car, love the team, love how it drives and I love this track, so um, no, no, I'm happy. No, that's two in the back of the net already. You've yeah. got one more race to go up for the hat-trick. 100%. Yeah, there's not a doubt in my mind uh, that we'll win. We'll try our best, obviously, if Stephen manages to find some pace magically, then I guess I'll get my elbows out, but uh, <laughs> no, I'm confident, and uh, no, the team have set up such a good car this year. No, I'm so happy with it. Ross, congratulations. Yeah. Well done. A uh, pair of wins so far this weekend for Ross Alexander. Uh, he's going to go for it as well. You hear that? Get the elbows out if needs be in race three. Uh, let's just move down a little bit, shall we? We've got uh, Freddie and uh, Stephen here as well. Let's just uh, jump in with the guys as well. Uh, we'll come to you very shortly. Sure. Uh, don't worry, let's just jump in with Freddie uh, again. Another class win, well done. Yes, yeah, sir. It's, uh, it's, it's good, we're enjoying it, so that's all I can say really. Another race still to go, hat-trick of class wins for you, are we going for it? Yeah, that's what we're going for. Um, had a little fuel surge in that at the end of that last race, so we just keep an eye on that, maybe put some more fuel in it and we'll be alright. Top man, well done, congratulations, and uh, well, it's been some, some weekend so far, hasn't it? That's it, <laughs> no, not for me, Ant. <laughs> uh, right, we've got another race still to go though. Yeah. Alright, what's going to happen? Uh, I imagine it's going to mirror this last two, unfortunately. Thanks. I don't think there's anything else I can get in the, out of the car. Um, easy track to learn, very difficult to master. You've got to get Brands out India, you know, a bit of respect for that. Uh, we're working with new, t new setup, new tyres, um, and Ross is just a bit more experienced around here. I think he's just pulling away and it, and it shows. Never give up. This is most Never sport. Anything can happen, Never right? Anything can happen. Indeed. Yes, anything can happen. Uh, well, what is going to happen right now, though, is the pickups are about to go on track. So I'm going to hand you back to Dave to take you through the action. Thank you, Ian. And, uh, well, action is certainly what we are going to see in our next race for the Pickup Truck Racing Championship. If you missed yesterday's race, you missed out. It was a fantastic affair with Matt Simpson, as we said earlier, going from fourth to first in a single move to uh, take the lead on the last lap. Chris Brockhurst and uh, Dale Gents have been battling all the way for the lead of the race. They made a little bit of contact coming down towards Graham Hill Bend for the last time. Gents slid wide. Brockhurst followed. That was uh, the momentary distraction for third place Dean Tompkins and uh, Matt Simpson slid through up the inside of all three of them to take the lead. Simpson though after problems in qualifying will uh, again start from the back of the grid for this race in 13th. We've got 14 pickup trucks out there. 
If you've not seen them before, this is uh, possibly as close as we get in British club racing to uh, NASCAR. I know we see the Euro NASCARs come here for American Speed Fest at Brands Hatch every year, but very similar to um, the uh, NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, these machines are certainly not anything like pickup trucks you would see uh, your uh, local uh, tradespeople using. These are very specialised uh, machines with race-tuned two-litre engines based on Ford or Vauxhall units. And uh, Sonny Howard has been uh, running and promoting this series for many years now. A lot of these drivers are ex-short oval racers in the world of stock cars, hot rods and uh, even one or two ex-banger racers. The trucks are making their way out onto the grid now, so let's hear from a couple of the drivers earlier on. Well, welcome back to the assembly area, everybody. Something I'm very excited for. I love these pickups, don't you? They look absolutely incredible. And what was incredible was yesterday's race. Absolutely remarkable. That man there, the number 30, Matt Simpson, came from the back of the grid all the way through to win. It was sensational. Mark Willis as well, uh, right from the back two, came through to finish in second place. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it because it was sensational. More of the same, please, everybody. Uh, come with me for a second. Let's go have a quick chat. We've got to Dale Gent up here. Remember last year, came second in the championship. Let's just uh, have a quick chat here with Dale. Dale, things didn't quite go to plan yesterday, but we're expecting uh, big things today. I hope so. We'll see how we go yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I'm trying to forget about that one. Obviously, I'm really sorry for bringing it up. <laughs> yeah, see, see, for some reason I seem to come off worse out of all that, through out of everything. I don't yeah. know how that they think it was all my fault, but I forget about that. We'll move on, we'll focus on this race. I feel like the team have done a few little changes and hopefully we've got a bit more pace in it and I'm looking forward to this one and see if we can get it up the front there. 100%, look Dale, it's a new day, the sun is shining, perfect conditions for racing, right? Thank you very much. Best Cheers. of luck, thanks for talking to us Dale. Right, let's keep moving around, shall we, a little bit. Let's, uh, let's just have a look at some of these as well. We've got Chris Brockhurst here as well, started in third yesterday. Let's see uh, what he is going to do today. Chris, how are we doing? How are we feeling for this? Perfect conditions, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's, it's lovely actually, because considering they said it was going to meant to be raining today, so... It's, it's nice all I've heard all summer. week. All I've heard. Easter Monday it's going to chuck it down, it's going to chuck it down, but a uh, pleasant surprise. Uh, what are we expecting from this race? Uh, be nice in the top three. Um, car's feeling, you know, we've got a nice, I feel like we've got a good balance with the car. Um, obviously we've got new tyres for this year, yeah. the Hoosiers now. Um, so we're all still in a bit of the unknown of how they're going to behave and stuff, but they seem to be quite good all the way through the whole race, so... Um, yeah, it'd be nice if we can, you know, get a top three. Top man, Chris, best of luck. Thanks for talking to us, really appreciate it. So, thanks guys, are we doing all right? So let's keep moving down, shall we? And uh, keep walking and find out. Let's go chat to uh, Matt Moore, shall we? Starting from pole position. This one's a little bit easier, actually, because we don't have that mesh in the way, do we, Matt? Makes my life a lot, a lot easier. Uh, how are we feeling ahead of this one? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, a lot of pace in the cut? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Excellent. Look, I'm going to look forward to it. Uh, just a quick chat on the, the start of the season, Browns Hatch Indy. Is it one of your favourites? Yeah, I like it. It's only local to me, so... Oh, well, I hate it better then. You yeah. sleep in your own bed last night, eh? Sorry? <laughs> sleep in your own bed last night. Yeah. Got mad. Best of luck for the race, mate. We will be watching, of course. Right, here we go. Time for the pickup truck race two. There is another race a little bit later on in the day as well, but these look sensational. Absolutely love this. I'm going to hand over to Dave. He's going to take you through the action. Okay, getting ready for pickup truck race action once again then. The grid for this uh, second race, it's a partially reverse grid from the second uh, half of qualifying. So pole position will be number 84, Matthew Moore, who I believe is in the ex-championship winning truck race by George Turicki. He starts alongside number 21, Dean Tompkins. Second row number five, Dan Fisher, had a great run to fourth place yesterday. And number 93, pickup veteran Michael Smith. Third row, 89, Chris Brockhurst, went from second to eighth on the last lap yesterday. Starts along the side, 68, Eric Bolton. Now row four, number 44 of Ryan Hadfield, and 12, Paul Tompkins, father of Dean. Row five is the man we just heard from, Dale Gents, alongside number eight, the Irishman, David O'Regan. And then on uh, row six behind them will be number 72, Alan Cooper, alongside number 65, Mark Willis. Great run from him from the back yesterday. Matt Simpson starts from the back again in the uh, number 30. 
problems of getting qualifying, didn't manage to set a lap. And Jonathan Hadfield, who I think starts from the back as a novice in the pink number 42, brother of Ryan, completing the grid. Now, it was a pink truck that has won the last two championships. Number 40, Reese Jones, but uh, Reese, the man from Hearn Bay, not racing this year. So we will see a new name in the winner's circle come end of season. Matt Simpson's in with a chance. He was in the top three of the championship last year. Mark Willis, veteran of pickups, had a lot of mechanical problems last year. There is number 42, Jonathan Hadfield. He and Ryan have raced in Ginetta sports cars in the past. They've done short oval racing as well, started at their home raceway of Buxton up in the Peak District, along with their dad, Rob. They've raced Formula 2 stock cars as well. Rob, an ex-banger and hot rod racer, looking on from the sidelines today. Matthew Moore in pole position. We've seen him in the Special Saloon series in the past in a space frame Ford Escorts. He's in one, I think, is the ex uh, George Tariki truck, as we say, won a couple of championships. This will be a 16 lap race, not a timed race, this one. This is on a uh, number of laps. Watch for Matt Simpson, the number 30, former British touring car racer, race winner back of the green in the white truck. Pace car is in pit lane. Here we go. Matthew Moore and Dean Tompkins lead them off. This is going to be an absolute cracker on the Brands Hatch Indy circuit. Revs are up and away they go from the rolling start. Dan Fisher's got away well from the second row there, but he can't get through on the inside. Matthew Moore will have the lead in the number 84. Now, he spun on the first lap yesterday up at Druids after a little bit of contact with Alan Cooper, so aiming for better fortunes today. He holds the lead on the inside of Dean Tompkins. Fisher trying to get through for second. It's a NASCAR-style draft, and uh, Matt Simpson getting hung out to dry around the outside there at uh, Druids. Dean Tompkins might have a look for the lead here. No, he's not close enough down into Graham Hill Bend. Dan Fisher in third. Michael Smith is fourth. Then Chris Brockhurst, Eric Bolton, Ryan Hadfield out onto the grass. Now, he ended up in the gravel at Grant Paddock Hill Bend yesterday. A spinner at the back. That's Alan Cooper in the 72. Oh, and uh, contact there. And Dan Fisher's gone. Over the grass goes Dean Tompkins. Chris Brockhurst's off as well. Oh, goodness me. David O'Regan caught up too. Well, that was a NASCAR-style pile-up almost there, wasn't it? We're at Brands Hatch, not Daytona. And that's handed Matthew Moore a huge lead. Everybody else self destructive behind and again. That's Eric Bolton. Contact there down the home straight. Bolton goes off. Damage to the front of his car. He's hit the pit wall. What's got into these drivers this morning? Goodness me. Well, is that going to be a safety car, I wonder, unless Eric Bolton can get going again? Well, they're still under green at the moment. It is Matthew Moore with a lead of over two seconds at the end of the first lap. It's even bigger, a been bigger lead now, I think. I didn't quite see it. Might have been Ryan Hadfield who made contact with Eric Bolton in the 68, the ex-Ford uh, Fiesta racer, among others. Well, there goes our leader. He's probably wondering where everyone else has got to. Second place is Dean Tompkins, then Michael Smith in third. Looks like Dale Gent has come through into fourth place in the 83. Then it's uh, Paul Tompkins, Dean's father, the former World Banger Racing champion. Well, they've kept going without the need for the safety car, so it looks like um, Eric Bolton's got his truck out of the way. Whether he's still racing, I don't know, because that was quite an impact with the pit wall. Okay, things settle down again slightly, and look where Matt Simpson is, right up behind Ryan Hadfield. He's up to seventh already from the back row of the grid. Uh, make that six, because he goes up the inside into Druids. Speaking of going up the inside at Druids, through goes Dale Gent into third place. Fourth is Paul Tompkins there, past Michael Smith. And I think Matt Simpson's going to get through there as well. There's damage, a bit of damage to the front of Simpson's truck as well. Michael Smith is all over the place. I don't know whether he's got some damage as well. But he's losing places. Simpson goes through. You can see there a bit of damage to the front of Matt Simpson's truck. Whether he got involved in that mayhem on the first lap at some point, he must have done. Pause for breath as they uh, come round to complete lap number three. Matthew Moore, number 84, looking for his first pickup truck race victory. Paul Tompkins does the fastest lap of the race, 52.42 seconds as Ryan Hatfield up the inside. That's not going to work, he's tangled with Michael Smith. Both of them go off into the gravel and surely out of the race. Exactly where Ryan Hadfield went off yesterday. Well, he nearly got out of the gravel on that occasion, got stuck as he uh, tried to rejoin, and that's surely going to be a safety car this time. That move was never really on there at the inside, bit over optimistic, I think, from Ryan Hadfield, one of the newcomers to pick ups over the last couple of years. And that's most likely going to bring out the safety car. We'll wait and see. 
instead your leader is Matthew Moore. The last thing he wants to see is the safety car boards as Paul Tompkins nearly loses it there as well. Matt Simpson trying to get up the inside in the number 30. He's got to get it done before Paddock though because there'll be yellow flags out there for the two cars, to, the two trucks that have gone off. Through goes Simpson, yeah, he gets the move done in time. Into the yellow flag zone, so no passing there. Well, no sign of uh, the safety car, no full course yellow. Side by side for second place. Dean Tompkins holding off Dale Gent, then Simpson, Paul Tompkins. Mark Willis is in sixth position, then it's 42, Jonathan Hadfield, who started at the back of the grid, and now the safety car is coming out. So the safety car picks up Matthew Moore, and there goes the lead he'd built up, which is about one and a half seconds. There's Jonathan Hadfield, the very bright uh, pink machine. Up to seventh from the back. Then Alan Cooper, he was the first to spin on the first lap. I think that was caused by cold tyres. David O'Regan is ninth. Chris Brockhurst, who went straight on about here at uh, McLaren, is 10th. Then Dan Fisher, who also spun there. Eric Bolton's going again in 12th. And then we've got these two in the gravel. Ryan Hadfield on the left. Michael Smith on the right. We'll try and see a replay of uh, what's happened there. OK, under the safety car then here at uh, Brands Hatch with two pickup trucks in the gravel at Paddock Hill Bend. Ryan Hadfield uh, trying a move up the inside of Michael Smith, but it didn't work and both of them went spinning off. This is all, uh, in my opinion, playing into the hands of Matt Simpson, who's gone from 13th on the grid to 4th. There's Eric Bolton still going. I'm surprised that truck is still uh, racing on after that uh, impact with the pit wall. I didn't quite uh, catch who he got spun out by there. There was definitely contact down the pit straight. A pretty chaotic start for the pickup truck racers today. That was at the end of the race where we saw a bit of mayhem yesterday. Flatbeds from trackside recovery heading out of pit lane. As we say, this is um, a race based on number of laps rather than uh, a timed race. Coming through now to complete um, lap number six. In fact, is the safety car stopping them there? Yes, uh, the red flag is coming out. So the race has been stopped. Well, await news on uh, a restart. Perhaps uh, deciding there, the officials, that um, if we stayed under safety car, we would end up behind it for the full 16 laps. So giving the drivers a chance to race, they've decided to bring out the red flag to uh, conduct the recovery. And we'll wait to see how many laps we get on the restart. Matthew Moore, who uh, made his debut in pickup trucks last season, was a regular winner, as you said, in the uh, Special Saloon and Mod Sport series with the Space Frame Mark One Escort, an RSR Escort in years gone by. Dean Tompkins, who's looked very quick this weekend. In second, the Tompkins family with new liveries on their trucks this weekend. Now, replays of uh, the drama early on. That was what started everything on the first lap. Uh, Dan Fisher bounced off the side of Dean Tompkins. He then spun, and that sent uh, Brockhurst and O'Regan off under the grass in avoidance. I thought Chris Brockhurst said he straight on into the tyre wall, but he got going again. Alan Cooper had already spun early around the lap. We see it again here. They just bounce off each other. And Fisher went spinning. Very lucky not to be T-bone there. There goes Brockhurst off down the fairway. Did he, did he meet the tyre wall? No, he just got the thing stopped in time, I think. Very lucky for Brockhurst. And then down the pit straight. I think it was Ryan Hadfield involved here as well. He tried the inside. Eric Bolton didn't see he was there. And wallop straight into the pit wall. 
Amazingly, Eric was able to get going again in the uh, purple number 68 there. This front end stoved him, but he's still moving. And then up into Paddock, down the inside for Ryan Hadfield on Michael Smith. Didn't work. Looks like Mark Willis was uh, possibly caught up in that as well. He was able to keep going. The other two were not. See there, Hadfield up the inside. They were all just too late on the brakes, really. And Ryan Hadfield, who it has to be said has proven uh, a bit of a loose cannon so far this weekend, ends up in the gravel for the second race in a row, along with, the, along with uh, Michael Smith, the pickup veteran and former champion. to Alison Sharrett who's uh, watching on member of the Orange family in motorsport so mainly in rallycross over the years Alison and her parents long time marshals particularly down at their local venue of Pembrey in South Wales and the trucks go there in uh, a few weeks time for their second event of the year trucks also appear at Thruxton in July they go to Donington Park, as we mentioned, Snetterton in Norfolk. The big finale, of course, is here at Brands Hatch at the start of November for the Trucks and Fireworks meeting. Thanks again for all your messages and comments coming in. Stefan Miller has confirmed that um, Matthew Moores is the ex-George Tariki truck that's uh, leading the race. Ryan Hadfield is in the ex-Danny Hun truck in the yellow and red. Of course, the Hun family, based down in Essex. Hot rod racers for many years. I remember uh, in my youth at Hensford Hills Raceway watching Ricky Hun in his famous Peugeot 205 National Hot Rod, number 639, the former world champion. Still got that car. Stunning-looking machine, that is. Uh, while we have this red flag, we can head down to Ian in pit lane for an update. Yeah, welcome down, everybody. Here we are. We're actually on the pit wall. We're not allowed on track, unfortunately, but uh, what a shame that was for Matt Moore there. He built that lead up. It's been wiped out. It's so hard first place, of course, but all of that hard work he's going to have to do. And, of course, he's got a charge and Dean Tompkins behind him. Just a reminder, Dean Tompkins yesterday set the fastest lap in that race. So we, we know he's got a lot of pace in that car. We spoke to Dale Gent a little bit earlier as well. He uh, finished runner-up in the championship last season. No Rhys Jones, the two-time champion champion for the pickup truck and defending champion he stepped away from the series this year so uh, a bit of a nervous wait I think for these drivers but it's great to see on the cars are now firing up so it sounds like we uh, might be going racing very very soon safety car people just getting themselves ready to uh, can I just give a big shout out as well to all of the marshals here the orange army what a job they do uh, we would not be able to go racing if it wasn't for them we've been told to get off the pit wall now as well so it looks like we're about to resume racing very very shortly I'm going to hand back to Dave to talk you through the action 
The engine's firing into life down there. Thanks, Ian, for the quick updates. As you probably worked out from its livery, uh, Jonathan Hadfield, number 42, is in Reese Jones' championship winning uh, pickup from the last couple of years. Can't be many shocking pink pickups out there. So, Reese Jones not coming back to defend his title and go for a third consecutive crown. And great names have won. Um, the pickup truck racing championship over the years of course Michael Smith is a, a former champion out there Gavin Seager was one of the early stars the late great Pete Stevens won the title several years ago Steve Dance who now races uh, a Capri in historic saloons he was a three-time champion Anthony Hawkins the West Midlander Michael Smith's won it twice Freddie Lee the son of the legendary Barry Lee won it in 2016 Scott Bourne National Hot Rod regulars won it a couple of times. George Tariki was uh, technically champion for three years because of the global pandemic. The um, series didn't run in 2020. In the last two years, it's been Reese Jones from uh, Hearn Bay on the Kent coast. Dale Gent was second last year. Matt Simpson third. Mark Willis has. Uh, been Rockingham champion on the oval, the one and a half mile oval at Rockingham, but has um, never won the overall title. I remember in the uh, late 90s when pickup truck racing was first uh, drew, drawn up by Sonny Howard in the UK along with the Euro cars. Remember those? Space frame Mondeos, the V6s and V8s. Among the first to race pickups were Kevin Clark, who we now see racing various BMWs. So, um, the likes of Pete Chambers, now a historic racer in a Lotus Cortina. We're getting back underway. It's going to be a 10-lap restart. So, pretty much picking up where we left off. Picking up. Get it? Still a dozen trucks out there. Ricky now back in Brisker F2 after his stint in National Hot Rods, thanks to Tuput Shakur on our comment thread. That's a name I recognise from uh, a certain stock car forum many years ago. Nice to see you again, Kev. Anyway, we're ready to get back underway. Over ten laps with race two of the weekend for the pickup trucks. Matthew Moore with the lead, the uh, pace car into pit lane. Revs are up from these two litre engines and we're racing once again. Good restart by Dale Gents having a look on the outside of Dean Tompkins. Tompkins goes to the inside but it's Matthew Moore in the ex-George Turicky truck who leads the way through Paddock Hill Bend. They're all round the first corner okay. Alan Cooper fishtailing a bit there as he challenges Jonathan Hadfield in the ex reese Jones truck a bit further back. Nat Simpson up on the outside, he'll try and get the inside line for the left-hander at Graham Hill Bend, he's going to try and move through into third, he does take third, and Mark Willis, uh, Paul Tompkins rather, trying to follow him, past Dale Jed, Jed's lost two places, next in line is Mark Willis, Dean Tompkins going for the lead, doesn't quite get alongside the yellow machine of Matthew Moore, Dale Jent over the curve there as he tries to retake the number 12 of Paul Tompkins, the ex-world banger champion, a bit different to a Ford Granada, these uh, two litre pickups, Alan Cooper's got ahead of Jonathan Hadfield, also coming through is David O'Regan, the man from Cork in Ireland in the number eight, another ex-national hot rod racer. Side by side, Paul Tompkins and Mark Willis. Willis going through on the inside. Still Matthew Moore hanging onto the lead. There's contact there between Simpson and Dean Tompkins, just sliding into each other. Up the inside goes Simpson at Druids, and Moore's gone wide. This is Simpson's opportunity. Keeps the line though for Graham Hillbend. I think Matthew Moore will just about hold his lead there. Simpson had his nose in front down the hill. Dean Tompkins sideways. There may have been some contact there with Dale Gent. Off goes Dean Tompkins, just avoids the gravel. That's dropped him back down the order. Now we'll wait to see who's going to come out of this with the lead because Simpson may well have the inside line here. Up on the kerb as they go through Surti. Simpson's going through. Dale Gent still up there with them as well. I don't know how he stayed up there after all that uh, pushing and shoving around this lap. 
Simpson now gets the lead as they come out of Clark Curve. Goodness me. Pause for breath again. And Dale Gent now going through past Matthew Moore for second. Here come Willis and Paul Tompkins. Dean having dropped back down the order after that moment through at Graham Hill Bend. Dale Gent is fired up after that last lap defeat yesterday. He led all the way until that melee at Graham Hill Bend on the final lap, and he is determined. You can see there on the tail of Matt Simpson. Down into, oh, and kicking up the dust there. I thought Paul Tompkins was going to lose it there, putting a wheel on the grass. There's Dean, his son, ahead of Jonathan Hadfield, who's been pushed literally there by Dan Fisher in the number five, the ex-Honda Civic racer. Goodness me, this is like a NASCAR race. Rubbins racing, as they say in NASCAR. First two have now pulled away slightly. Willis is up to third ahead of Paul Tompkins. Moore, the early leader, goes down to fifth. Here comes Paul Tompkins. Winkle, as he's known from the, his days in the Bangers. We don't know why. He's up to third. That's his lap of the race by David O'Regan. Here comes the Irishman. Up the inside on Matthew Moore at Druids. And the number eight goes through. Tompkins now ahead of Mark Willis in third place. Moore holds fifth, though, ahead of David O'Regan. He didn't quite get the move done there out of Druids. But out front it is still Matt Simpson and Dale Jens. Jens, who ran the Dale Earnhardt's uh, tribute livery last year, the ex-classic Thunder Saloon racer. Racing hard after Matt Simpson began his career on the short ovals in mini stocks. His father, Jeff, was a very successful national hot rod racer. Matt moved on into Legends cars, then to national hot rods himself. He won the European title in Ireland. Then moved on up into pickups and then uh, the British Touring Car Championship, of course. Had a memorable win at Alton Park in his Honda Civic. Further back, more now under fire from O'Regan and from Alan Cooper, next Formula 2 stock car man in the number 72. And a couple of spins this weekend, unfortunately, uh, Alan. And he's starting to catch up onto this uh, battle for third place. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh all together. Dean Tompkins still going in eighth position. There he is recovering after his off earlier on. Then a gap back to ninth, which is Dan Fisher. Tenth is Jonathan Hadfield. Eleventh, Chris Brockhurst. Brockhurst uh, never really recovering from that uh, off on the first lap down at Clearways. In the DLRD run truck, that's Dave Longhurst Race Development. It's Dave Longhurst, a former National Hot Rod World Champion. That was in 2003 at Ipswich. And Dave later became manager for Lee Wood in British Touring Cars. pickups himself now concentrates on running his team so Matt Simpson leads Dale Gent Gent's got the fastest lap of the race though 52.188 seconds he's all over the back of Matt Simpson he's not letting the number 30 Simpson recycling and Simpson race exhaust sponsored car get away Paul Tompkins not getting away from Mark Willis either and Matthew Moore the early leader in fifth O'Regan giving chase. Here comes Gent having a look on the inside. Not close enough, though, as they go through the right-hander at Druids. We're on lap number seven now. Another new fastest lap that time through for Gent. 51.854. Only a few hundreds quicker, though, than uh, Matt Simpson ahead of him. 85 miles an hour average around Brands Hatch. Now Mark Willis turning up the pressure. On Paul Tompkins for third still behind being threatened by David O'Regan though over the line come the leaders and the gap if anything has opened up just a little that time through yes uh, Simpson pulled away by about three tenths of a second on that last lap things calming down again after, after those rather frantic opening stages of this uh, race two of the weekend for the pickups Cooper and Dean Tompkins trying to close up and make this a six-way fight for third position. Tompkins and Cooper side by side. Tompkins goes through at Druids. Hasn't done a lot of luck in this one, sadly. 
second of the A4 metal recycling run trucks. And we gap back to Dan Fisher next in the order ahead of Eric Bolton, Chris Brockhurst. They've got ahead of Jonathan Hadfield, lost a couple of places on the last lap. Two laps to go this time for Simpson and Gents. Gap as they cross the lines, half a second. Dale Gent is he limbering up to make a, a last lap lunge at Matt Simpson. White and the grey trucks go up the hill together. Meanwhile, Paul Tompkins continuing to hold off the 65 of Mark Willis. Matthew Moore wants to get uh, back in contention for the podium as well. there on the inside of Surtees, they always do there. Can Mark Willis get into the slipstream and get ahead of the number 12 of Paul Tompkins? They're going into their last lap this time. Dale Gents, one last attack for the 83. Based in Dale Earnhardt's colours last year, Dale Earnhardt was known as the Intimidator. That's what Dale Gents got to do now, he's got to intimidate Matt Simpson and try and find a way past, or it's going to be two out of two for the number 30. Through Graham Hill Ben, that's where it all came apart for Dale Gent yesterday. No problem for Simpson and Gent. Still third, Paul Tompkins just about holding off Mark Willis. It looks like it is going to be a win for Matt Simpson unless Dale Gent can do something special on the run to the line. His only hope now is to get into the slipstream as they come out of clear ways. I don't think he's going to do it. Matt Simpson gets the foot hard down. Out of Clark Curve, up the Sir Jack Brabham straight. It's going to be two wins out of two for Matt Simpson in number 30. Dale Gent second. Who's going to be third? It's going to be Paul Tompkins ahead of Mark Willis, Matthew Moore, Dean Tompkins getting ahead of David O'Regan on the last lap there. Eighth place for Alan Cooper. And Dan Fisher ninth. Eric Bolton in his uh, rather battered truck takes tenth. Chris Brockhurst eleventh. Never really recovered from that off on the first lap. And Jonathan Hadfield will be the final finisher. Well done, Matt Simpson, two out of two. That puts him on a hat-trick going into what's effectively the final at the end of the programme. As Jonathan Hadfield brings the ex-Reese Jones truck across the line. There's another frantic race from the pickups. Provisional result there, Matt Simpson, the winner by uh, 0.37 of a second from Dale Gents, who got the fastest lap. Paul Tompkins taking third, holding off Mark Willis, Matthew Moore, Dean Tompkins, David O'Regan, Alan Cooper. Dean getting past David O'Regan on the final lap. Then a gap back to Dan Fisher in ninth, Eric Bolton tenth and Chris Brockhurst eleventh, all involved in incidents on the opening lap. Jonathan Hadfield completing the finishers as he continues to learn his new truck. We lost Ryan Hadfield and Michael Smith into the paddock Ben gravel. Pickups will be back out at the end of the programme then for an 18 lap grand finale be a partially reverse grid for that one as well based on the aggregate results of the first two races to make things a little bit more interesting two more races to go before our lunch break here at Sir Brands Hatch next out it's more from the Sim Motorsport Caterham graduates the Sigma 135 category for the uh, slightly less powerful cars than the ones we saw earlier yesterday they had their first race and it was Tom McEwing who took the win meanwhile though we'll head down to Ian in Park Firming Well, <laughs> these pickups keep on delivering, don't they? Oh, my word. Matt Simpson won yesterday from the back of the grid. He's done exactly the same again today. We'll let him get out. And actually, uh, just on a quick note, just feel a few bits of rain coming down, actually. These guys have got in at the right time. Let's jump in, Matt. He just talked to his engineers. So, Matt, that was unbelievable. Uh, a bit of a, almost a like for like yesterday because the red flag safety car doesn't help things at all, does it? But, um, wow. How do you describe that? Yeah, I'll, I'll say, because we had limited running we had on Saturday with this new tyre, we were sort of on the back foot, we were obviously missing qualifying. Um, but yeah, I mean, first mega race yesterday, 
Um, obviously we tweaked it last night, um, just trying to get it more to my liking and for it to last a distance. Um, You're telling me in race one it was, still wasn't to your liking? <laughs> no, obviously I'll, I'll leave that to Dave and Carol, DLRD, they, that's their bit, they do. But no, I mean, I, you know, we made a few tweaks last night and it was definitely a step in the right direction. Still not perfect, but a, definitely a step in the right direction. Uh, unbelievable driving. Congratulations. Uh, they've got to do it all again as well. Uh, we do, I just want to give a shout out actually as well. Uh, look at that. Uh, Paul Tompkins yesterday at DNF. He's in third today. Quite remarkable. I don't know where he is. Uh, is that Paul there? Is that Paul down there? Let's just grab him very quickly. Paul, we have a quick word because uh, they didn't quite get a plan, but this makes up for it a bit, hey? Well, <laughs> we've had the weekend from our. My boy's car blew up, and we fixed that, and then mine blew up, so we fixed that, so, uh, you know, to have results, my boy was up there in seconds, got took out, so, you know, everyone's a little bit upset at the minute, but all in all, pickup truck racing's a place to be, but not when you've got people driving like it's that. It's so tight though, isn't it? Even coming over the line on that final lap, <laughs> my word, it's, nothing it's, in it. It's all tight, but, you know, they can drive without hitting each other, but they don't seem to be able to. Right, you still got to do it all again a little bit later yeah. as well. Thanks for talking to us, Paul. Uh, doesn't seem too happy, but he's on the podium though, so uh, let's move around as well. Dale Gent uh, as well. Let's just uh, grab a quick word with Dale. Dale, how was that? Uh, tough one. Didn't mean for that to happen out there. It seemed, seemed like he just checked up on there, coming in. We're all come down in there, tearing into there, and Dean's in just checking. Yeah, you guys are going pretty quick. I, I, yeah, we was going in there pretty quick. I, I wouldn't. I, that's not intentional. It's not what I wanted to do. There, I didn't mean for that to happen. So, um, yeah, thanks for the team getting this sorted out for us and getting us up there so we'll see what happens in the next one awesome. thanks for talking to us there so i really appreciate it oh uh, yeah seems to be something of a somber mood uh, down here so uh, i'm going to hand back to dave because uh, as you can see the catering 135s are on track dave over to you Yes, thanks Ian. See the pickup trucks back out at the end of the programme and it's time to go Caterham racing for the third time this weekend. Second race for the Sim Motorsport Caterham graduates Sigma 135s. These are the less powerful cars, as the name suggests. Ford Sigma engine, 135 brake horsepower. Tom McEwing will be going for his second win, but for this race he's back in eighth on the grid. Ian caught up with some of the drivers a little earlier on. Oh, what a day we're seeing so far, the racing has been sensational, hasn't it? Uh, exciting, full of drama, and talking of drama and excitement, we now have the K2 graduates, Sigma 135. What a race we saw yesterday from them. Tom McEwen winning it, Dan Neal second, Richard Groom third. Come from one end of the grid to the other, and let's have a quick chat with Alan Bateman. He's gonna see a lot in front, but there might be opportunities for you, Alan, right? Yeah, absolutely, I'm really looking forward to it. It's first time I race with the graduates, I'm loving it. What's, really it, what's the atmosphere guys. like in the paddock? Really, really friendly guys. Though. First time I've raced with them and everybody's really welcoming and sharing tips as well because I'm, as you can see, towards the back and the guys at the front are very happy to share suggestions. Not just that, you talk about sharing. Yeah. I understand uh, John said to me from CTS that there's a bit of a hog roast last night. Did, did you uh, go down? I didn't make the hog roast, but I understand it was suitably messy. Yeah. I didn't make it either, but I'm really regretting that decision. Best of luck, yeah, Alan. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, let's keep moving around, shall we? Grab a, a word here with Paul Steed and uh, see what the expectation is for Paul. Paul, what are we expecting from this race? Uh, a bit better than yesterday, really. I, um, I, I felt I underqualified yesterday, but um, it, first time out in the car in about four years yeah um, uh, yeah let's just see if I can put it forward at four paces yesterday in the race if yeah. I can do the same again today just little incremental gains I'm happy with that is it like riding a bike four years away but you, you've come back now and, and slightly obviously need a little bit of practice to get used to the car again but uh, it comes back quick well hopefully yeah it hasn't come back as quick as I thought it would we're gonna find out in the next 20 minutes we will we can can we have this interview again at the end all right yeah well if, if you're on a podium yeah <laughs> next time the next meeting I promise thank you cheers thank you Cars already on their green flag lap then, ready for this uh, second race of the weekend for the Caterham graduates. 135s. This grid based on the second fastest time set by each driver in qualifying yesterday. It's Craig Storey and Tom Power, 65 and 70, on the front row of the grid. Second row, Paul Goldstein and Alaric Barney. Richard Groom and Paul Armitage on row three. Richard Groom, championship runner-up last year. 
Ben Wheatley was the champion last year, not out this weekend. Tom Gunter and Tom McEwing on row four. Fifth row is Kevin Turner and Daniel Neal. Daniel Neal, the reigning Caterham Academy champion. Got a second place yesterday. Had a great race with uh, Tom McEwing and um, with Richard Groom as well. Sixth row, James Emson. He was in the battle for the lead as well yesterday, along with Giles Derry. That's James Hapgood and Peter Motts. Row eight is Andrew Bergbaum and Andrew Sagar. Row nine, Liam Baslington and Chris Griffith. The tenth row, Simon Arnold and Paul Vokes. So Chris Griffith is a non-starter. We did see in the notes he'd only be racing yesterday. Eleventh row, Mark Barrett and Simon Nicholas. Row 12, Mark Soden and Michael Munns. Row 13, Andrew Cooper and David Poulter. Fourteenth row, Paul, Steve and Alan Bateman, who we just heard from. Row 15, Simon White and Simon Ockenden. And Michael Seagal, a veteran of the uh, Caterham Graduates Racing Club, starts from the back of the grid. So there should be one gap on the grid because Chris Griffith only able to race yesterday. I think everybody else is there. Pole position, Craig Storey, a newcomer to racing this year. The black car with the yellow roll cage. Made a slow start yesterday and dropped back a bit, but he'll hope to stay in the lead battle today. Tom McEwing, the bright green car on uh, row four of the grid, was yesterday's winner. Richard Groom wants to watch. Last year's championship runner-up in the red car on row three. Alaric Barney black car with the blue cage on the second row also could be a favourite here revs are up and away we go then great start by Alaric Barney a slow start again for Craig Storey perhaps showing a slight lack of experience good start by Daniel Neal the reigning Caterham Academy champion the light blue car and it looks like it is Alaric Barney who has got the lead coming around the outside from the second row as they go up towards Druids for the first time it's Alaric Barney from Tom Power sliding on the inside big lock up there for Paul Goldstein in the gold 135 car he went into the gravel on the first corner yesterday and had to uh, play catch up play catch up he certainly did who's that charging down the inside that is Richard Groom in the red car takes at least three cars up into third place so a big sort out around the first lap of the race there and it is Alaric Barney number 88 from fourth on the grid who has taken up the lead ahead of Tom Power Groom up to third it looks like it's uh, Thomas Gunter in the black number 95 car in fourth 69 of Paul Vokes, the uh, man with two Caterhams here this weekend, competing in both divisions of the Caterham graduates. Change for the lead at the end of the first lap, possibly coming up here, because Tom Power, I've seen this move in the Sigma 150, is going for the outside. Is he going to power his way around the outside of Alaric Barney for the lead? Side by side as they come off Paddock Hill Bend. Richard Groom lurking behind them. They could make it three wide here. Groom up the inside. No, he's not going to find the room there. And Alaric Barney somehow has kept his lead. Paul Goldstein is in fourth place. Craig Storey in behind them. Then it's the uh, silk-cut Jaguar lookalike of Paul Armitage, the number 56 head of Daniel Neal. And Tom McEwing is uh, in behind them as well in the lower reaches of the top ten at the moment, yet to make his move through the field. Alaric Barney, always there or thereabouts. We've not yet on BIRC TV seen him take a win. Could this be his first? He said it was Ben Wheatley who beat Richard Groom to the title last year in the Sigma 135s at uh, Ben not out at this event hopefully we'll see him back later in the year they divided up the wins uh, between them pretty much uh, last season Tom Power had a couple of wins but finished fifth in the championship things starting to settle down or are they because uh, put Richard Groom having a go here around the outside of Tom Power then it's Gunter Goldstein Storey Armitage Neil there's Giles Derry, the green and gold number 77. He was third in the championship last year. Didn't quite uh, manage to take a win. Up the inside, Richard Groom tries to take Tom Power. Doesn't quite manage it. The rest of them funnel through behind. Number seven there making a move. That was uh, Mark Barrett on the inside of 54 of Michael Munns, the Australian. Daniel Neal up on the back of Tom McEwing, who's got ahead of him there in the bright green car. Tom McEwing, the former Caterham Academy race winner. I think he won an academy championship in one of the groups a few years ago as well. Stayed on the Caterham ladder ever since. Now moving to the Graduates Racing Club. Further back in the order there, that's the 196 of Peter Mott coming under fire from uh, James Emson in the 120. Slightly quieter starts the race for James Emson. Paul Goldstein moving up the inside there trying to take uh, Tom Gunter. Side by side with the number 95 for fourth position. Behind them is Craig Storey, the pole sitter. Again, a slow start, stymieing his efforts. Gunter up the inside, takes Goldstein. In the gold car, certainly uh, living up to his name there. 
But still Alaric Barney holding off Tom Power for the lead of the race. Third is Richard Groom. The rest of them go through Surtees and McLaren behind. Tom McEwing not yet able to uh, make his move up towards the front of the field here, trying for that double victory. Now here comes Tom Power. Has he got a run down into Paddock Hill Bend? Side by side. Is the outside line going to work for him this time? Again, Alaric Barney holds him off. We saw that work on every lap for the Sigma 150s. The 135s not able to make that wider line work. Tom Power having to defend there from Richard Groom in the 23. It's Alaric Barney who's able to pull away by a, a couple of lengths there. The man from Reading. Side by side, that's the... Uh, Number 120 of James Emson. He's going under fire now from Giles Derry. He dropped back there coming out of um, Graham Hill Bend. Fantastic sight they make through there. The 62 car running just a little wide. That's Kevin Turner with the uh, yellow roll cage. It's a great drive by Alaric Barney at the front of the field. James Emson attacking Turner. Peter Mott coming under fire now from uh, the uh, number 51 of Simon Arnold, I think that is, in the yellow car. Still Alaric Barney able to hold them all off. Richard Groom trying to go around the outside of Tom Power, but in there is Paul Goldstein as well. One car a bit slow up uh, the run to Druids, and it was three wide briefly. They all got away with that. I thought there'd been some contact in there, but it was all OK. Goldstein has got through into third place now in the number 135. way through Surtees and McLaren once again and there was a bit of contact there Richard Groom got a tap from uh, Thomas Gunter I think in the 95 that could allow Craig Storey you can see the novice cross on his car to attack and uh, yes uh, Tom Gunter's got some damage off comes uh, some bodywork that's uh, one of the rear wings off Tom Gunter's car the result of that contact with Richard Groom is that a front or rear wing the car I think it came off the back of the car 28 goes through there that's uh, Daniel Neal, the light blue car, is a little further back in the order than we saw yesterday. He got the runner-up placing. There's a wing off Groom's car. Ah, I know what's happened. The wings come off Groom's car when Gunter hits it. It must have got stuck underneath uh, Tom Gunter's car. That's why it flew up into the air from there. 119 goes through. That's uh, the car of Andrew Sagar. Tom Gunter's dropped back, I think, as a result of having to get that bodywork out from underneath his car. A bit like Mario Kart there, wasn't it? <laughs> Unintentionally dropping uh, a hazard for your rivals. Well, there is Tom Gunter. You can see one of his front wings is a bit loose. Yeah, his are all intact, so that came off Richard Groom's car and got stuck underneath Tom Gunter's car. So that's how that little incident happened. Less than a second covering the first five, and it's still Alaric Barney who leads. And what he'll be hoping is that these two, the gold machine of Paul Goldstein and Tom Power in the number 70, start squabbling with each other, lose time, and he's able to pull away. Fourth place is the number 23 of Richard Groom. Then it's Craig Storey, the pole sitter. Then a small gap back to Tom McEwing, who's attacking Paul Armitage for sixth place. But the silk-cut Jaguar lookalike is still in P6 at the moment. Going through to complete another lap. Still Alaric Barney has led all the way so far. He's loving this out in front. Paul Goldstein on the outside, runs an air conditioning company, looking for some fresh air here at Druids. It's quite fine here, he's still side by side with Tom Power. He's down the inside though into Graham Hill, he's surely going to take P2 here. Yes, he goes through, they dance them through onto the Cooper straights. This is allowing Alaric Barney to open up just a little bit of a lead here in the 88. Yes, we've seen him drive in the Caterham Academy on BARC TV. Richard Groom holding off Craig Storey for fourth, then it's Armitage in the white, purple and gold car. 
Seen that livery used in the Jaguar Championship, of course, was the livery made famous by Jaguar's Le Mans cars. Tom McEwing, there's Gunter and James Emson. Quite a race from him today. There's Daniel Neal, yesterday's runner up, the light blue car. Second season of motor racing for him. Here comes Paul Goldstein. Now he's on the attack for the lead. There's contact. Contact between Goldstein and Barney. Now, has that damaged the suspension on either of those cars? They both lost uh, wings. But is there more damage? We'll have to wait and see. Barney still with the lead. That was uh, optimistic there by Paul Goldstein. There's damage to both cars, but is it only superficial? Find out. Trying to keep it going there. Hope they haven't suffered any suspension damage. They don't seem to have done. They're still battling away. Tom Power third, Richard Groom fourth. Alaric Barney, the tail out a little bit there. I hope that car's not wounded. Still ten and a half minutes of this race to go. First time I've looked at the clock all race long. There's been so much going on. Paul Armitage in the silk cut lookalike closing up. They're side by side for the lead now. Paul Goldstein's going to have another go on the outside this time. Power is going to have a go up the inside. Goodness me, how, how is Alaric Barney holding all these cars off? Richard Groom's up there as well now. This is fantastic stuff. Alaric Barney still holds the lead. Looks like they've got, they've got away with any major damage from that collision. Groom to the inside now. And here comes Tom McEwing. The bright green car is up there. He's got ahead of Paul Armitage now. And he's going to go after the top five. We reach half distance in this 20-minute race for the Caterham Graduates Sigma 135, supported by Sim Motorsports. Tom McEwing now up into P6. Are we going to see him move into this? No, he's not up to P6. Paul Armitage has got back ahead of him there at Clearwoods. As soon as you call one thing, it all changes again. Giles Derry there making a move on Daniel Neal. That's for 10th place. Behind them, Kevin Turner. Somehow, Alaric Barney still holds the lead. A great defensive drive from the number 88, from the uh, driver from Reading. 135, Paul Goldstein from Billingshurst in the uh, southeast of England. Tom Power holds third. He comes from Redditch in Worcestershire. Craig Storey side by side with Paul Armitage now. That's for fifth position. Paul Armitage tries a move there, it doesn't work. He's still holding off Tom McEwing. His hopes of a double starting to slip away. That's how closely patched these cars are. Over the line they go. Some of the runners further back. We saw the number 10 of uh, James Hapgood. Andy Bergbaum behind him. Be a change for the lead there. Yes, Goldstein has gone ahead in this contact and off goes Craig Storey. Didn't see who he made contact with. Looks like his steering broke there and straight on into the gravel, into the tyre wall at Druids. That's end of race for the pole sitter. But just before that, uh, Paul Goldstein had taken the lead from Alaric Barney. I think he got him up Halewood Hill. Now, are we going to see a safety car with uh, Craig Storey off at Druids? Are we going to see Alaric Barney able to fight back? Race still green at the moment as they come up over the line. It's Paul Goldstein, number 135, who now leads the way. There's a couple of back markers ahead. Michael Seagal is uh, busy in a battle with um, the number 73 of Ockenden. They move aside, but uh, these yellow flags out. They, uh, they had to slow right down there. They can't pass the back markers. There's yellow flags at Druids. Everybody had to slow there. Now they can, because they're out of the yellow flag zone. And they've met Michael Seagal at the worst possible place there. He doesn't know where to go to get out of the way. And Alaric Barney's going to lose second place, I think. Well, the blue flag's waving, but there was nowhere he could go there. They met the back marker at the worst possible moments. Now they've got the 73 car of uh, Simon Ockenden to get past. The blue flag's waving and Ockenden not moving fully to the side there. And this has handed uh, Paul Goldstein a huge lead in the uh, number 135 car. Alaric Barney under fire now from Tom Power. Richard Groom trying to go through as well. And he saw what looked like one or two drops of rain on our camera lens up there on the uh, home straight. Somebody's gone out wide. That's Tom Power. 
just about saves it from going into the gravel. That's dropped him back to about sixth position. He may drop further as well. I think there are still yellow flags there at uh, Druids. I couldn't quite uh, see, but everybody slowed. So it's Goldstein from Barney, Groom, Armitage. Looks like Gunter in fifth and Tom Power down to P6. Then it's a solid swarm of Caterhams behind. Through the middle goes Peter Motts, nearly clipping the 51 there of Simon Arnold. This three and four wide as they come into um, Surtees and McLaren. But I saw a yellow flag there. Yeah, the safety car's coming out. So the safety car is going to come out. That's the last thing Paul Goldstein wanted to see. That'll be because of Craig Storey's car off at Druids. Well, they'll try and sort themselves into uh, order then. Kevin Turner, I think, was giving places back there. Doesn't want to be penalised for overtaking under a yellow flag. There's the reason for the uh, safety car. Craig Storey, the man who started in pole position for both races on his Caterham graduates debut. There was contact going into Druids and that broke his steering. And off he went into the gravel. Driver is OK, but... Uh, Recovery needed, the car in an unsafe position. Try and uh, get a replay of what happened there. There's not been time to look at any replays during this race because there's been so much going on. Here comes the trackside recovery pickup. And the flatbed as well. Have a look back and see what happened there. Yes, uh, oh, nose went up in the air. He clipped the back of uh, Richard Groom, Craig's story. No wonder it broke his steering. And he's got a he's got a wing caught underneath the front wheel you saw there as well. So that's what sent him skating off. He had uh, bodywork caught under his front wheel. We saw Tom Power have a moment there as well. That dropped him down the order to sixth place. Four minutes of the race to go, so um, hopefully we'll get uh, back to green flag racing. It might be a one-lap shootout, this, and we may finish under the safety car. As Caitlin Penny, a top sim racing commentator, says in our comments, there's only so much contact you can get away with. And it rather boiled over there into Druids. I thought the steering had snapped on uh, Craig Storey's car, but uh, looking again, you saw the right front wheel there had a piece of bodywork from Richard Groom's car stuck underneath it. And he wasn't there, and he just skated off. I don't think I've seen that before. So Richard Groom's car, I think, is now wingless. Safety car going slowly past the incident there. They're hoping to get a one-lap shootout here, which would be a cracking sight. But I fear we may be about to finish under the safety car. Great to see uh, such a huge crowd here at Brands Hatch. Look at the uh, south banking there replete with cars all parked at the at the top of the bank they're all parked along the old rallycross track here at Brands Hatch just in the foreground there that route into the paddock at the bottom of the picture that used to be part of the rallycross course as well we used to come the wrong way up Cooper Strait and turn through a chicane there it's back in the 80s and early 90s Paul Goldstein, your leader in number 135, ahead of Alaric Barney. Richard Groom in third, then Paul Armitage fourth. He briefly got up to second as a result of that melee at Druids, Paul Armitage. Tom McEwing's got a bit of damage 
on the nose as well there, the 49 car. So there's only 90 seconds left on the clock and uh, it looks like this race is going to finish, unfortunately, under the safety car. Still trying to get Craig Storey's car recovered there. We've got the, uh, the medical car there just uh, to check on him. That's just as a precaution. And it looks like we are going to finish under the safety car. A bit of an anti-climax to our third Caterham race of the weekend, but uh, safety first. And it looks like uh, it is going to be Paul Goldstein who takes, I think, will be his first win in uh, the Caterham graduates. He's raced in Caterham Motorsports uh, factory supported series in the past. He's come through the Caterham Academy. may run an air conditioning company but he certainly didn't find that race a breeze started racing last year fifth in the, his group in the Caterham Academy second full season of motorsport this year and this will be his first Caterham graduates win ahead of Alaric Barney Richard Groom, last year's championship runner-up in third. Gold sender, it says on the uh, back of the car. Well, we've seen Austin Powers out already in the minis. <laughs> The chequered flag is going to come out as they come across the line this time. It will be a first Caterham graduates win for the gold car. Even a gold crash helmet as well. There's the chequered flag. We finish under the safety car. Paul Goldstein wins race two for the Sigma 135s. Alaric Barney second. And Richard Groom in third. Paul Armitage is fourth. Then Thomas Gunter. Tom Power. Tom McEwing only 7th this time, then James Empson, Daniel Neal and Peter Mott rounds out the top 10. Craig Storey's car being brought back into the pit lane. The steering hadn't broken because he was able to drive it back. If that's our race winner sounding his horn in the background. Well, so some of these caterers, especially if they're academy cars, they are road legal. So Paul Goldstein the winner ahead of Barney and Groom. Paul Goldstein got the fastest lap as well, 54.863. Paul Armitage fourth ahead of Thomas Gunter, Tom Power and Tom McEwing, the three Toms, fifth, sixth and seventh. James Emson, Daniel Neal and Peter Mott completed the top ten. Then Giles Derry, Simon Arnold, Kevin Turner and Andy Bergbaum. The only non-finisher was Craig Storey. 29 cars going the distance in uh, that one. Just uh, a bit of a shame we had to finish under the safety car, but Paul Goldstein won't be complaining. Fought his way past Alaric Barney to take the win. His first win in the Caterham Graduates Championship. Let's have a look back at some of the highlights. It was Alaric Barney who took the lead from the off round the outside of Tom Power. Bit of a lock-up for Paul Goldstein. He was lucky there. There was no contact with Tom Gunter ahead of him. Alaric Barney set the pace. Bobbing, weaving line of caterers behind him. That was the contact between Tom Gunter and uh, Richard Groom. And there was the uh, wing from Groom's car. They got stuck underneath Tom Gunter. Then there was contact for the lead. They only just survived that. I was surprised that Goldstein and Barney were able to keep going. Then Craig Storey charged into the back of Richard Groom on the run-up to Druids. Bodywork stuck under his front wheel, slid straight on. Tom Power then nearly lost it into the gravel as well. So frantic stuff from the Caterham Sigma 135s, the Caterham Graduates Racing Club, sponsored by Sim Motorsports. And hopefully we can go down to Ian in Park Fermi.
Well, it's safe to say gold by name and gold by nature as well. Paul Goldstein coming over the line, taking the win, of course, under the safety car conditions, but it's probably actually a fair result, Paul, because you had broken the toe and you were leading comfortably as the safety car came out. So, uh, well deserved, I would have to say. Yeah, no, thank you. My first race win. Oh, come on, come on. And when you like to say hello, and get your helmet off and then give some people some shout outs. And I love this, by the way, look at that. That is beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful gold. Goldstein, of course, is the name. Absolutely unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, right, Paul, this is your magic moment. So uh, is there anybody you want to say hello to, thank you to, anybody you want to shout out? Go ahead. Yeah, big thanks to the wife, family, kids. Up in the box today, we've got friends, family, some work colleagues as well. Uh, special thanks to DPR Motorsport, CTS who are looking after in the weekend, Darren Burke, driver racing coach, couldn't be here without him to be honest. What a day. Thank you very much. It's going to be a party in the Goldstein household later, I can tell you that. Let's go grab uh, Alaric. We spoke to him yesterday and, and that's a bit more like it, eh? It is a bit. I got some good traction off the start and uh, tried to settle in for the race. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it appeared it got a bit scrappy towards the end. <laughs> did back markers cause an issue? Because Paul ended did, up just yeah. breaking the tire. They did, yeah. So. Uh, you have to make a decision which way to go and stick to it, basically. But uh, that was a good fun race. A good haul of points, that's yeah, important, it was right? Indeed, indeed. Oh, man, best of luck, we'll see you at the next round as well. Uh, of course, Richard Groom coming home. Is that a pair of third places for him as well? I wonder if we just correctly got a pair of thirds Hello, for you. A pair of thirds, a good weekend all round, yeah, after tricky qualifying. I know I find myself a pair of rear wings. That was a bit of an interesting one. They got hit three times by the same guy, but uh, it's all part of the fun occasion racing. It was a good day out. These are tougher than they look, aren't they? Yeah, it's only 50 quid for a wing. <laughs> oh, there you go then. There you go. We can uh, knock them off all day then. <laughs> well, not all day. Not all day, every day, please. But uh, yeah, no, good fun. Pair of podiums. Great weekend for me. Really well, happy to be here. Cheers. Congratulations. Great stuff. Uh, right, I'm going to have to hand back to Dave actually the next race. They're already heading out on track. So, Dave, over to you. Yes, thanks very much, Ian. Well done to our Caterham racers. And uh, now for something a little bit different. A mixture of saloon cars. This is the uh, Track Action Saloon Car Series. We've got uh, saloons of uh, a whole variety out there for this one, it has to be said. Let's have a look at the grid then. Var various classes in this one as well. In fact, there's loads of different classes in this race. Pole position went to Gareth Porter in his Peugeot 205 GTI in qualifying this morning alongside the Renault 5 GT Turbo of David Clark. Second row, Paul Roddison, long-time Mazda MX-5 racer, but today he's in a VW Scirocco alongside Charlotte Birch, regular Ginetta racer these days. She's in a Honda Civic. Row three, another Renault 5 Turbo. When was the last time you saw two of them on the same grid? Tom Franklin starts alongside Joel Daniels in his Renault Clio. Row four is Charlie Constable, junior saloon car graduate in his VW Scirocco. And Robert Buckland has been racing his Renault Clio for many years. Row five, Marshall Groves, ex-Alfa Romeo racer in a Vauxhall Vectra Challenge car. That might be the last one remaining for that one-make series back in the 90s. He starts alongside Lee Bull in his Renault Clio. Row six of the grid. We have number 92, Adam Parker. He's in a Honda Civic alongside Andy Mitchell in a Peugeot 206 GTI. And there's a separate class for 206 GTIs. That's class TF. They have their own Peugeot 206 GTI challenge. CJ Morgan, another ex-junior saloon racer in his 206 GTI, starts alongside Lee Rickard's Honda Civic on row seven. Row eight, it's David Thomas in his Mark 1 Toyota MR2 alongside Dave Beecroft, the uh, promoter of this, uh, one of the promoters of this series in his Citroen Saxo. Ninth row, Jacob Baldry, another ex-junior saloon car racer, and Noah Checkley, a pair of Peugeot 206 GTIs. Two more 206 GTIs, David Scotting and Paul Rice on row 10. The uh, row of Peugeot 206 GTIs continues with uh, row 11, number 25, Matt Anderson, and 34, Stephen Fuller. Row 12, another pair of the French hatchbacks, Harley Connolly and Jake Richardson, and Alexander Quacheté, I hope I pronounced that correctly, the Frenchman, at the back in his Mazda MX-5. They head off on the green flag lap then. This will be a 15-minute race in Track Action Race Club. Track Action, also the promoters of the Junior Saloon Car Championship. That's why we've got a few graduates out there. Previously known as the Track Attack Race Club, and they promoted various series, including the Nippon Challenge for Japanese cars, the Deutsche Marks series for German machines. Got a couple of VW Scirocco's out there representing Germany. 
and the Tricolore Trophy for French cars as well, mainly French cars on this grid, including our Peugeot 206 GTI Cup. Great to see those out there as a former 206 owner myself. It wasn't a GTI though. Pole position going to the uh, Peugeot 205 of Gareth Porter. He's raced this car for many years. I think he used to compete in the old Mod Prod Saloon series, modified production saloons in that car. And two Renault 5 turbos. They're a rare car these days. David Clark has raced his since 2007. He's uh, what I call a freelance club racer. He races any event his car is eligible for. Look out for um, Charlotte Birch, another graduate of Junior Saloons and a subsequent Ginetta racer in uh, her Honda Civic. She could be in with a chance here. There's Alexandra Quashte at the back of the grid. There's various classes in this race, a lot of different classes. You can see the various colours at the bottom of your screen. Well, Gareth Porter was a race winner at the very first circuit race meeting I ever commentated on. In fact, that was Boxing Day at Mallory Park in 2010. He had a win there. Still in the same car. That's the dark green Peugeot 205. The yellow Renault is that of David Clark. Paul Roddison in the uh, orange and white VW Scirocco, multiple Mazda MX-5 champion. And Charlotte Birch in the uh, black and red Honda Civic on row two. Row three is the other Renault 5 of Thomas Franklin, the white and orange car. Then we've got um, Joel Daniels in his Renault Clio, blue and red with the white stripes. On the fourth row, another Scirocco, that of Charlie Constable, junior saloon car graduate, the white Scirocco alongside Rob Buckland in his blue Clio. It's really an open series for just about any uh, kind of saloon car. There's a lot of smoke or steam coming from Charlie Constable's car there. A bit of smoke from uh, the Renault 5 as well of Tom Franklin on row three. Revs are up and away we go. The race gets underway. I hope Charlie Constable's car is all right there. One of the Clio's getting uh, a rapid start. That's Lee Bull in the silver car, but it is uh, Paul Roddison with uh, one of the best getaways there. A poor start for the pole sitter in the Peugeot. And it's Paul Roddison who has gone to the front of this track action race one in the Scirocco ahead of David Clark in second in the Renault 5 Turbo. Fast but uh, fairly fragile that car. And yeah, it looks like all is not well with Gareth Porter's Peugeot. He's got away fairly slowly there, which is a great shame. So Paul Roddison leads in the VW. David Clark in second as they uh, make their way through Graham Hill Bend for the first time. As you say, quite a few junior graduates. And well, Gareth Porter looks to be back up to speed now. He's alongside Tom Franklin's Renault. The Vinner Sport Honda of Charlotte Birch is passed there by Charlie Constable in the VW. And all this contact there with uh, Rob Buckland's Clio. They, uh, they're going into the pit lane. Look out. Goodness me, that was a bit dicey. Buckland and Constable crash into the pit lane entrance. I've never seen that before. Thankfully not too much damage, I don't think. Buckland's getting going again, so it's Roddison and Clark who lead the way. Everybody else trying to be third. I think that's, um, yeah, Gareth Porter's back up into fourth place, so he just made uh, a poor start there. The Vectra's come through into third place. Where's that come from? Of uh, Marshall Groves. So it's very chop and change in the uh, first lap here in this track action, certainly living up to its name. David Clark having a go at the race leader. There's Groves in the Vectra in third, then Gareth Porter. Fifth is Joel Daniels' Clio. Lee Ball running wide there in his Clio, and Charlotte Birch will go through. Everybody got caught up there when there was that tangle at the end of the first lap between Buckland and Constable. Tom Franklin's Renault under fire. Through goes the Clio of Joel Daniels. As we say, the reason we've got a lot of junior saloon car graduates in the track action series is that uh, they have the same promotional team. Daniels under fire from Charlotte Birch now. She tries to get uh, round the outside in the Vinner Sport Civic. This is great stuff so far. Very eventful indeed. A nice mixture of uh, different saloons in action. Here comes David Clark in the Renault 5. He's going to try and take the lead away from uh, Paul Roddison, the South Yorkshire-based racer. Pioneer of racing in uh, Mark III and Mark IV. Master MX-5s in the UK. Joel Daniels under fire. Here comes Birch. She gets up the inside down the Cooper Straits. Civic will move ahead into uh, P6. Lee Bulls Clio behind them. 
David Clark coming under fire now from Gareth Porter. Uh, now he said this uh, this Renault 5 Turbo is quick but fragile. I hope he's not got a problem. He's dropped away very quickly there. Porter's come through into second place. I'm wondering if that Renault is losing turbo boost because Marshall Groves in the Vectra is catching him as well now. Roddison from Gareth Porter is recovered from his poor start. Yep, Groves goes through. Vauxhall Vectra challenge. We used to see uh, the likes of Mark Blair, who won a drive in the uh, independence class of the BTCC after winning the Vectra challenge one year. Flavio Figueiredo, the Brazilian, was another leading runner. He got one um, BTCC drive, replacing uh, the injured John Cleland. Oh, and the uh, Vectra, number 86. No, number 86 is the David Clark, my apologies. The Vectra's 186. David Clark has got a 10-second penalty for a false start. He was creeping at the start. So uh, David Clark gets a penalty for jumping the start. He'll have 10 seconds added to his race time in the Renault 5. Peugeot 206 is further back. Who's leading them at the moment? That's TF. It's CJ Morgan, number 59, leading the 206 Cup. So many different classes, it's tricky to uh, bring you the leaders of all of them. Meanwhile, Gareth Porter has taken the uh, overall lead of the race in the Peugeot 205. He's taken Paul Roddison. Porter's leading Class TA, Roddison Class DH. Groves is in Class Brit, the track action British car class. Clark's leading Class TG. Charlotte Birch Class NA, that's uh, Nippon Challenge Class A for Japanese cars. Class NI is being led by David Thomas's Toyota MR2. Charlie Constable there rejoining after his uh, off earlier on. With, gets past the number 52 Honda Civic there. Running a bit further, the number 92 I should say, Honda Civic of Adam Parker. Trying to keep up with all the class leaders here. Class TC is Dave Beecroft. David Clark has pulled into the pits in step being the uh, Renault 5. I thought he had a problem. Yeah, there he is, in pit lane. Here's the battle of the uh, Peugeot 206s. They're catching Dave Beecroft in the Saxo. That's an ex-junior saloon car, Saxo, isn't it? The uh, number three, one of the RX competition cars. Here's CJ Morgan. He leads the 206 category and he's got Andrew Mitchell he used to race the 205 in uh, second place in the 206 GTI Cup Peugeot 206 in uh, motorsport more famous as a rally car of course Marcus Gronholm taking one to the World Rally Championship title Richard Burns works on over for Peugeot as well CJ Morgan defending from Andrew Mitchell and uh, Another 206 coming up behind them there. It's the uh, number 25 of Matt Anderson. Marshall Groves in the Vectra under fire from Tom Franklin's Renault 5 Turbo. This is the battle for third place overall. Plenty of entertainment then from track action. The name promises action, and they've certainly delivered. Charlotte Birch on her own in the Honda in fifth position. It's Lee Bull and Joel Daniels in the Clios. Here's the fight for the lead. Paul Roddison's retaken the lead from Gareth Balls. These two are having a fine scrap. Here comes the 205 around the outside. The speed of that Persia. Beautifully done around the outside down the Sir Jack Brabham straight. They've got back markers ahead, though. Gareth Porter's been racing this Peugeot for many, many years. Now he's racing the old modified production saloon series back in the 90s. Paul Roddison. It's unfamiliar seeing him in anything other than a Mazda MX-5. We've got one MX-5 out there, Alexandre Quashti. At the back of the field, the Frenchman. Listen, try and hunt down our race leader. They're lapping 206s. David Clark has rejoined the race, I can tell you, further back. 34 there, that's Stephen Fuller, the yellow Peugeot, and Paul Roddison went very wide there, nearly into the gravel through clearways. Bit of a mistake there, lapping the 206. There's been a change in the lead of the 206 class because Andrew Mitchell has taken over. 25 of Matt Anderson, third behind CJ Morgan. Behind Anderson, I think that's uh, Jacob Baldry, the number 33, the black and turquoise car. There's uh, 42, that's 
Paul Rice coming under fire from Adam Parker's Honda Civic. Civic gets through the uh, car of Paul Rice going wide there through Surtees. Paul Rodison still chasing Gareth Porter, that 206. So quick in a straight line. I certainly agree with um, that's a bit of a sort out between a couple of the 206s there as the leaders lap Alexander Quashte's MX5. I certainly agree with Caitlin Penny's comment there. Run what you brung style club races. Every car has so much character, and when you're trackside, you really get to know them during the race. That's a my sentiments exactly, Caitlin. Gareth Porter continues to set the pace, coming up to lap one of the Peugeots. One of the 206s, that is. It's the number 520 car. It's Noah Checkley from Birmingham. I want to spin there. Who's that that's gone off? I think that's uh, Tom Franklin on the edge of the gravel at uh, Paddock. It's getting going again. The Renault 5 Turbo. Yes, it was, but he's rejoined. So the order is Porter, Roddison, Groves. That uh, moment has put Charlotte Birch up into fourth place. And P5, I think it's now Lee Bull in um, the Renault Clio, possibly after that moment for Franklin. 1.28 seconds in it between the leaders with five and a half minutes of the race to go. Here's the uh, leading 206s. This is the battle of the third in the 206s. Paul Rice chasing Jacob Baldry. Still leading Class TF. It is... Uh, 25 of Andrew Mitchell. He's raced in the uh, Tricolore Trophy for French cars in his 205 in the past. Now Tony Hunter was one of the top names in Tricolore Trophy with his Renault Clio for many years. Gerard Merriman in his Martini livery in Citroën Saxo had a lot of class wins as well. In the Nippon Challenge, we used to get um, all sorts of big modified Japanese cars. James Janicki's Nissan Skyline. Um, Adam Lockwood's um, Nissan Silvia, or 200SX, one of the two. Bright green car, that was. Plenty of MR2s. The Track Attack Race Club, as it used to be known uh, before the change to track action. Used to run a series just for Mark 1 MR2s. Gareth Porter finds a gap there. Takes four cars in one move as he laps the back markers. Paul Rodison's going to negotiate this little phalanx of 206s now. Which side, which side's he going to go? <laughs> He'll find his way through. Very experienced is uh, Paul Rodison. Here's Lee Bull slicing his way through the uh, 206s as well. From Dar the man from Derby. He's past the 34. That's Steve Fuller. Joel Daniels got to get through this slot. The young gun in his Clio as well. It's under four minutes of this race to go. Now the leading 206 is being lapped by the 205. That's your predecessor lapping you, that car. Thinks Andrew, and thinks Andrew Mitchell. Dave Beecroft a lap down as well now in the Saxo. That's everybody up to 11th place has been lapped by the flying Gareth Porter who leads by over two seconds now. Paul Rodison having been delayed lapping the back markers. There's the Sirocco, the Sirocco. Where's the other one, uh, Charlie Constable? He's back up to eighth now after his uh, tangle on the first lap with Rob Buckland. Buckland uh, retired his car into the pits. David Clark was our other pit visitor. He's now a lap down. There's Marshall Groves in the Vectra. Much the uh, largest car out there. It's most famous as a British touring car, the Vauxhall Vectra over the years. In the super touring days. Charlotte Birch in her Civic. She's still in fourth place, safely clear of Lee Ball. Chase, trying to chase down the Vectra. We'll see what the lap times are as they cross the line this time. Yes, Birch closed by half a second on that last lap. She's only two seconds back off uh, the Vectra, so it could be close for third place here. And there's the uh, 206 of David Scotting from Warrington in Cheshire. He's currently in 18th place. Charlotte Birch up to lap another couple of 206s Paul Rice and Jacob Baldry they're battling for third in class 
we'll take you through all the class winners. In fact, the top four overall are all leading their classes. You can see on the timing tower, two minutes to go. Rice holding off Jacob Baldry in the number 33 Peugeot. See the orange heart stickers on most of these cars. That's uh, the driver's way of saying thank you to our marshals. The orange family. Those stickers uh, first appeared after the very sad loss a couple of years ago of uh, Marshal Robert Foote here at Brands Hatch. He so tragically lost his life. Marshall Groves lapping CJ Morgan. No CJ's family are watching on. They'll be uh, cheering him on as he tries to take the Peugeot 206 Cup victory. Blue flags waving to the back markers, let them know the faster cars are coming through. Slaps the uh, number 25, the uh, number 95 rather of Andrew Mitchell. 25 is Matt Anderson, a little bit further back. It's Morgan from Anderson. Andrew Mitchell is actually showing as being in class TA, not class TF, so. Maybe a change of class there. I thought he was fighting for the lead. He's down as TF on the entry list, but he must have changed class. A few seconds left then. And this may well be chequered flag this time for Gareth Porter. We haven't forgotten about the 205. Will it be chequered flag this time, or will we get one more lap? It's a matter of seconds. Here comes Gareth Porter. Made a poor start, but has recovered very nicely indeed. He will go through to uh, start his last lap. The clock went to zero just as he crossed the line. Battled with Paul Roddison all race long there. Well clear of Marshall Groves in the Vectra. Charlotte Birch in fourth place, but they're all provisionally going to win their classes. Beautifully turned out the uh, Peugeot 205. The 206 class, there's about four seconds between Morgan and Anderson now, so it looks like CJ Morgan's going to take the win there. Certainly entertainment from the Track Action Racing Club. The Saloon Series will be back out for another race later on. Well, he may have dropped well back off uh, the start line. It didn't take him long to recover. And here comes Gareth Porter in the Peugeot 205. We're going to take our first win of the day in the Track Action Saloons. Paul Roddison second in the Scirocco. Just under two seconds between them at the line. They're well clear of Marshall Groves, who's going to win the British car class in his Vectra. He crosses the line just ahead of Charlotte Birch. There were only two tenths of a second in it. Birch nearly caught the Vectra. Next through it should be uh, David Frank, uh, Tom Franklin, rather. There he is in the Renault 5 Turbo. Lee Bull will take uh, sixth place provisionally in the silver Clio. Yes, there he is ahead of Joel Daniels. Charlie Constable, after a tangle on the first lap, making it back through for eighth place. And the only other car on the lead lap, the yellow Honda Civic of uh, Lee Rickard. There he is. The Peugeot 206 Cup, it's thought of as a, a separate uh, division. CJ Morgan taking the win there in 14th overall. Confirm the full results in a second. Very grey clouds over Brands Hatch at the moment, has to be said. So Gareth Porter the winner by just under two seconds ahead of Paul Roddison. Porter taking the class win. Roddison, Groves and Birch all win their classes. Then it was Franklin, Bull, Daniels, Constable and Rickard. David Thomas in the Toyota MR2. We didn't see much of him, but he took a class win in 10th, as did Dave Beecroft in 11th in his Saxo. CJ Morgan in 14th, taking uh, the Peugeot 206 Cup class win. Uh, the back, uh, Alexander Quachete won his class in the Nippon Challenge division in his Mazda MX-5 as well. And David Clark won his class uh, despite finishing a couple of laps down after problems with his Renault. Just one non-finisher, uh, Robert Buckland, in his Clio. Let's head uh, down to Park Fermi with Ian Waterhouse.
Oh, do you know what? Everybody? There's something about a Peugeot 205 going toe to toe with Scirocco, isn't it? Uh, Gareth Porter started on pole, did get the win as well. I wonder if I could just open his door and. Uh, Get him out of the car, look, uh, a roasty, toasty car, but what a fantastic race. By the way, that battle for third overall, my word, went on, on to the line as well. Gareth, this is some machine, isn't it, my word? It's a beast, it really <laughs> is, yeah. Now, you managed to get, you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Paul all race, of course, and then it looked like back markers might have just helped you a little bit, just, just get a bit of breathing space. I was just a little bit more aggressive, I think, and a little bit more lucky where I met the back markers, so it's a bit of luck, but a bit of being aggressive. Yeah. And skill, come on! Thank skill. you, thank you. Oh, hey. uh, you just got to do it all again later today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for talking to us. Really appreciate. Yeah. Uh, let's move down. I'm not too sure if. Uh, oh, here is Paul. Let's uh, have a quick chat with Paul if we can. Uh, mm -hmm. Paul, you go toe to toe with Gareth the whole race, and it, it did look a little bit like back markers might have played a part. Yeah, um, there's a few things really. This the first time I've ever raced this car, so getting used to the car. Um, but it went very well. But he's got such straight line speed, and um, I, I knew I'd get him off the line. Um, he, he, he had openly admitted that he was a bit steady off the line, and I just got to run while I could. Um, I knew he'd come at some point, and then it's a case of you try and make your car wide, but there's a limit for what you can do. And then the back markers, they're either going to work for you or against you, aren't they? And you know, it didn't work for me, so. I, yeah. I, ju I just want to thank you both actually because the 205 and Scirocco are going toe to toe. It's a visual treat, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I had one, one of the lunge at him up here uh, on the last corner. I just got on the inside of him, but then he just out dragged me down the straight. So, yeah, we'll see what next race brings. Oh, there we go. Fighting talk indeed. I just want to find out where our number, our third place car is, of course, the, the Vectra. Uh, I believe we spoke earlier. Just stay with us if we can and have a little walk over. Don't And uh, uh, it was a great race. I want to find Charlotte as well if I could, but I'm not too sure where she has gone. Uh, so, well, where is Charlotte? Where has she gone? Oh, she's up. I think she might be up here. Come with me. Come with me, everybody. Come with me. Uh, let's let's grab her very quickly because she's right here. Uh, Charlotte. A uh, quick word if we can, because that, I, I, fourth overall, of course, but my <laughs> word, over the line, there was almost nothing between yeah, you and the Vectra, yeah, was Well, I had like a pretty crappy start, um, it was wheel spinning off the start, um, and then there was a bit of drama around here on the first lap, coming out of clearways, and I just thought, I don't want to total the car, so let's just like back out a little bit, um, yeah, and then I got, sort of, everyone just came through, um, I did think that P3 was a little bit too far away and I could see I was gaining him a little bit but I didn't you think it would be enough. Um, he went wide at clearways, I just got under him. Um, yeah. I thought I had the, the run but yeah he just crept past me well, again. Well actually we were lucky to get that extra lap in because Gareth just got over the line like, like by point yeah. one of a second and that gave you the chance didn't yeah. it to have a run on the final yeah. lap. I think yeah I think one more lap probably would have had him so we'll try again on the next well one. Well done it was, it was fascinating you. to watch thank you so much. Uh, right first race of the day for track action done. They have another one later as well. Uh, it is the lunch break here, but I believe we might be handing over to Pointy very soon, who's going to be taking us through the next race for the trucks. But we're going to have the grid walk before then. So, Dave, over to you. Yes, thanks uh, very much, Ian. It is now uh, into the lunch break here at Brands Hatch. The next race is coming up at around 10 to 2 at local time, the British Truck Racing Championship Race 4, but so uh, we will have the trucks out for a grid walk. We hope it doesn't uh, start raining during that grid walk because there's some very threatening clouds we can see over the uh, Brands Hatch skyline. Coming up this afternoon, we've got the Junior Saloon cars, then uh, our final Caterham race of the weekend, the Sigma 150s, Mini Challenge third race of the weekend, a final truck race, the Track Action Saloons are back out again, and the pickups round off the day. But uh, I'm going to take a, a quick break now. We'll be handing over to Pointy soon, hopefully, for the uh, grid walk for the trucks. And I'll be back with you to take you through the race a little bit later on.
Well, good afternoon. How the devil are we? I'm down here with the uh, bestest bud on circuit this weekend. Oh, Ian. Thanks, Ian. Oh, thanks, Point mate. Thanks. Point thanks. That's very nice of you to say. So, have you had yeah, a good weekend? I've had a great time. I haven't seen a lot of you, though, because you've been busy doing all of this. There's been a lot going races. on. There's been a lot going on. Yeah, huge support package this weekend. Uh, and, of course, uh, a pretty clean sheet from the truck so far. <laughs> it's great. Well, <laughs> there's this... Uh, yeah, no, right, when I say clean, I mean the racing was clean, not the trucks were clean. <laughs> but right, what, what's going to happen now? What are you going to do? Well, we've got, we've got two races ahead of us, but of course, this is the fan favourite grid walk, which has been made possible, of course, by those clean races I was just talking yeah, about. Has, yeah, Always yeah. the excuse for no grid walkers crashes earlier in the day. <laughs> They've behaved themselves, so here they are. And if, uh, John, if you just want to spin round there and have a look into the distance, we can see the wave onslaught, yeah, an absolute wave of uh, of of people coming in from the uh, the paddock entrance now uh, and we've got half an hour half an hour in half an hour, half an hour to uh, get to meet the punters get to meet some drivers yeah, hi buddy good to see you man good to see you hi there hello well, half um, an hour then pointer what am i might do i might let you go enjoy yourself have a good time okay i'm gonna go get something to eat because i'm gonna, have a, I'm gonna literally. have a sandwich literally okay have a sandwich have a good time meet enjoy you back this. here this will be entertaining <laughs> it will be be entertaining for someone i'll have a great time i don't care about anybody else right Right then, wow, they are really starting to come down now. Let's have a walk then, shall we, John Boy, and see uh, what we can find. I'm going to do my, my backwards. Very good for the quads walking backwards, just to let you know. Um, right then, Monkey, how are we? Why any pops Eastern? <laughs> so, reigning champion division two, uh, we've got Paul Rivette. Uh, at the very front here, of course, we've got a reverse grid this afternoon. So these guys will be lined up with the grid uh, for the start of the race, just after this grid walk, of course. Now, quick explanation about the reverse grid. It's the top eight reversed. So we did the first race of today, reverse of the first eight yesterday, and then reverse grid this afternoon will be the first eight of yesterday's second race. And then this afternoon will be a reverse grid of this morning. Sounds complicated, really isn't. Makes some great racing action, as you might have seen. Uh, right, who have we got? Family, come on over. Hello, hello, what's your name? Maria. Maria? Freddy. Freddy. Phoebe. Phoebe. Sophia. Oh, you've not got an F. <laughs> and Ben. And Ben, neither of you. Great to meet you. Have you been here all weekend? No, just, just today. today, yeah, just today. Is it a good day out? Is it worth coming? Amazing day out, yeah. The trucks are amazing. The monster trucks were great. Oh, you love the monster love trucks, it. did you? Yeah. Which we, oh, wow, I like your blue monster truck. Have you named it yet? No. No, what are you going to name it? <laughs> Slingshot. No, no. You're going to name it Slingshot? Well, have a think about it. Let us know on the socials, at Official BTRC. I'll let you guys enjoy the grid walk. Thanks for Thank coming, you. guys. See you later. Fantastic family affair uh, here, and, and that is the great thing about it. We love to get all the spectators involved, no matter what the age. I mean, it's under 13s go free anyway, which is just lovely to see so many people coming down on their bank holiday Monday uh, to spend time with us here at Brands Hatch. It really is lovely. Uh, let's go. Hi, you guys. You've been accosted now. What's your name? Becky. Becky. I'm Alan. Alan and Becky. Uh, have you been down for the weekend just today? Yeah, I've been down all weekend. This is our first time truck racing. First time, right? I'll speak nothing. More to you That's now over here how how have you found it yeah it's been good it's been fun yeah. will you be coming back yeah yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll definitely sure? bring her back. She's got the bug now. But, well, this is it. I mean, at least you, you only have to buy tickets. Oh, yeah, when these drivers get the bug, it costs a lot of money. 100%, yeah, yeah. 100%. So, uh, you'll be at Pembury next, will you, maybe? Or? Uh, unfortunately, it's a bit far for us. Obviously, I live down this way in Kent, so it's a bit far for us to travel. So, with the M4, mate. I mean, look, I know, if Steve Powell can make it, he lives down the, 100 yards true. down the road. That is very That's true. That's relief. Uh, I might do, you know. I'll give, it, I'll give him a <laughs> shout in a minute, you know. But. Well, Alan, Becky, thanks for coming. Thanks for getting involved. And I hope to see you at some point in the year, okay? Thank Take you, care, man. guys. Cheers very much. Right. Wow. John, I don't even know if you can even... You might have to get on my shoulders or something, maybe, to see what is going on. It's absolutely insane. Yeah, it's absolutely insane, the amount of people. I think it's probably one of the most successful grid walks we've had, uh, and we've been blessed with good weather so far, although I've said it out loud now, which probably means we're going to have some rain for race three. Sorry, race four uh, of the weekend. My gosh, look at they're still coming. It's absolutely crazy. Right, let's find some more people to speak to. You, okay. No swearing, I can see it in your eyes. What's your name? Uh. Brilliant. Well, that went well, didn't it? <laughs> you had your chance and you just failed. Um, of course, I could uh, instantly just, uh, you know, just completely uh, uh, go somewhere else because I got... <laughs> 
fantastic team here at the circuit that put these events on as the years go by uh, and they, they only get better. They've done a great job. Grand job, Phil. A grand job. Any special words to the circuit management? Oh, marvellous. Absolutely marvellous circuit. Marvellous. Well, I'm sure they'll hear. Thank you very much for coming along. Uh, yes, we, we, we shan't embarrass the circuit team, but they are very good uh, and they put these events on. Uh, there's great events going on during the year as well. Of course, you can find all those either on the Bark website or the MSV website as well. Um, we are literally getting bogged down, John, aren't we? I can't believe it. Hi, hi, mate. How are we doing? Circuit commentary, not to get confused. That is not the person you hear on the uh, on the uh, the stream. Right. Uh, okay. Let, let's just let's just go. You've been kidnapped. Do you need help? Yeah, I'm. But I'm cable tied. You've been cable tied. Brilliant. Right. We've got evidence. If anybody needs a copy of this. Um, oh. Brilliant, excellent. Oh, Hello. this is wonderful. You're right. So, I'd like to introduce you. Oh, easy now, falling from you already. Right, I'd like to introduce you to Mark. Uh, Mark actually handed out the trophies this afternoon for uh, race three of the weekend. Now, Mark, you are from TMS. Now, TMS is this year's onboard camera company. You're sponsoring the championship, providing your wares and your expertise. This is correct. What we're doing is uh, assisting all the judicial system in uh, all the video telematics. We're also providing all of the speed around the circuit, which we're supplying on a one second data. Wow, that's incredible. So, uh, I mean, you've got like onboard hard drives, which is capturing not two, but three cameras. We've got driver, rear and forward facing now. That's correct. And, so. and of course, it gives the opportunity to the guys in the tower to be able to see everything that's going on on circuit, doesn't it? Literally everything you can see. We have the live views and we can download it and um, hopefully put it on the socials as well. Now, obviously, TMS not just around truck racing. What, what else are you involved in in your day to day? Uh, we've got two sides to the company. We've got Carbonology that does all of the installations for your dash cameras, your DVS, uh, your work lights, strobes. And then we've got the TMS, which supplies all of your live telematrics, uh, video. He noticed mid-walk. He just noticed, went, oh, no, I'm on camera. Yeah, I did. So, ah! yeah, yeah, like, kick him and all yeah. that. Oh, wow, so, so, so you guys are kind of responsible for all oh, those amazing light everything. bars and all of that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the light commercial game must be pretty big for you guys then. Uh, we're fairly new into some of the light commercial stuff, but we've actually been producing our own work lights for about seven, seven years now. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> the Carbonology's been installing for 28 years. Wow, Carbon that's amazing. So Carbonology, you heard it here first. Give a wave to everybody. Hi. Well, look, Mark, thank you very much for being involved in the sport this year. Thank you for your support. And uh, I'm sure we'll hopefully maybe get some kind of uh, some onboard footage at we some will, point this year to have a look at. We'll some onboard footage, definitely. To see what they see. Wouldn't that be interesting? Yes. Right, Mark, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, Mark from TMS. There we go. Championship sponsor and the eyes in the sky. Yeah, yeah. You can open a casino next year. Uh, right. Let's um, let's go round the outside, round the outside. Coming through, coming through. Watch for the cameraman. Thank you very much. <laughs> Here we go. We'll keep moving. We're on the grass. Won't break the camera when you fall if you fall over. <laughs> Hi, cameraman. Not the cameraman. Uh, right. Let's have a oh, let's have a quick chat over here. To, excuse me. Can I borrow you a moment, please, sir? Of course you can. I'm going to guess your name's Ian. How'd you get that? I'm just skilled. You're clever, aren't you? I am, I you am. Are. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I know nothing else about you other than the fact you're a marshal. Exactly. But well, what would you like to know? You I mean, me. that's about it, really. Oh, Thanks. Nice to meet you in the marshal. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, sure, you, sure. You're way too clean. I know. Do you what's, know why? What's the backstory? New overalls. My missus. Ah. It was my birthday last week, so my missus said, "Right, we need to get some new overalls. A little bit larger." Maybe. You know. I wasn't going to comment. Spread. Yeah, I wasn't. I mean, you know, let's just say you can tell it's There's cold. Been a bit of investment here, over but... winter. <laughs> That's all winter I storage. That's oh, what that's yeah. called. Yeah, it'll keep you going till summertime. I've got to roll around. I mean, when I see some diesel, I'm just going to have a little scrub. That's why I'm actually here. I'm actually a little run around. <laughs> Are you join me? If you see me on my back doing like yeah, a, like, there he is, our friend Ian, man on the 
the ground, <laughs> literally. Um, so, just to the racing this weekend, obviously they've been behaving quite well, haven't they? I they mean, have. you've probably been around truck racing a little bit before. Yeah, a couple of years. It's only a couple of years. It's my second season. So, um, I did the end uh, last year's race. Obviously, it's nice to see the trucks in one piece. I'm used to seeing bits Always. and pieces missing. So, yesterday, to see them with all nice, sparking new stuff, yes. this is how they should see them, right? It's rare, right? It's I mean, rare. by the end of the season, it's just a dogfight. I love it. I love yeah, it. I mean, we'll be back here again in November, won't we? And that's where it all starts to get a bit close for calling. And, uh, yeah, a lot more slap and tickles, I yeah, like to say. more gentlemanly, though. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's <laughs> Less like, gentlemanly, hey, yeah. I mean, we just hope that, you know, we don't have any more, uh, you know, wet stuff coming down. Hopefully not, because then, you know... I mean, the clouds are rolling over. They've that's the problem. Kind. They have They're been very... very kind, if we... I mean, look, if it's been dry up until now, I think we've all had a great weekend so yeah. far. And, yeah, the rain may come. It may be cold, but at least, you know, they, we've enjoyed this grid. We've enjoyed the weather. It's been a decent bank holiday weekend, hasn't it? It has, it has. And it's great to see this crowd out as well. I mean, Phenomenal. you know, if you if you love your trucks, it's a great weekend to come and see. So, and yeah. there are quite a lot to... Well, look, Ian, thank you very much. No, nice to meet you. Um, see less of you <laughs> next time, yes? I'm having you <laughs> yeah, bigger one. Cheers, Take a quick image of this to make sure, just Hang in on, case he, if he gets a different one, then we'll know he's changed where the stickers are, won't we? Are you well? Yeah, Good to see you. Right, let's have a let's have a, a wonder. Are you still with me, John? You're doing very well, I must admit. You're keeping up wonderfully. Hi, team. Hi, team. Hi, hi. Right, hello, hello, hello. You're right. Hello, oh you look you look high up. What's your what's your name, young man? William. William, hello William. Right. Are you here to see the trucks? Yeah. And which one is your favourite? You can point to it or tell me what colour it is. The green one. The green one? Which green one? The green one at the back, the black and green one? Yeah. Or is it the green one with the big bonnet, the big nose on it? Yeah. Yeah, I thought it might be. So Ryan Smith then, is that who you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Have you had a great time today, William? Yeah. Yeah, he likes you. Do you like the word yeah? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and what's your name, sir? Dave. Dad, I, I assume. Dad, yes, Hope. that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's like otherwise, put him down. <laughs> uh, and what's brought you down here today? It's the second time. We came last year and we loved it. Oh. So we we come back. That's what we like to hear. Become a tradition. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Oh, I love that. And and, and is this the uh, yeah, better half? Emma and Lana. Hello, Lana. Hello, Emma. Hello, you OK? Uh, have you been dragged along or come willingly? No, I came willingly. I saw it was in the diary and, yeah, booked the ticket. Family diary. That's a thing, isn't it? You know, you've got a diary, she's got a diary, but then you've got a diary. Yeah. Yeah, it's more just that goes into my diary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we sometimes read it. To and have a diary. And get told yeah. off if we miss something that's enough. been in there for like three months and you're like, yeah, I missed that bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, look, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming back. That's and right. uh, we'll hope to see you again at some point in the, in the future, right? Brilliant. William, watch out for that green one, mate. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thanks Thank you. Lot. Right then. Oh, my gosh. Oops, oh, sorry, sorry. I tell you, this is like an assault course of people. Absolutely incredible. We've got Michael Oliver over here uh, to your left. Uh, fantastic start to his season, two trophies on a Saturday. Never been heard from him before, which is really, really good news. Um, Ryan Smith, of course, just missing out on that first place in the last race uh, this morning. Uh, there was a bit of a contest about it, but they still decided to fall in with Steve Powell. Um, we did interview Steve Powell in the pit lane as well. Hi, hi, you are right. Hi. They think I'm waving at them, bless. So it's nice, yeah. So, uh, yeah, why are you here? Unchaperoned, what's going on? <laughs> We're here to support Ryan. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, you're from near there, or you just know him, or? Around here, yeah, we know him. Oh, you know him, right, okay really then. The what, sorry? We brought baby Joe with us, but he's asleep. All tuckered out. That is the sign of fresh air and entertainment. Yeah. You won't get them to fall asleep unless they're like, okay, I've had a good day, I'll go now. <laughs> yeah. Am I right? I'm yeah. right. Right. Well, it's been wonderful talking to you. Yes, thank you. You should turn him round a bit, get a picture of him parked up in that little starting grid there. Just make sure the brakes are on. We are on a bit of a slope here. You don't realise, actually, how much of a slope this grid is on. I mean, you can't really see it, but I'd say we're at about 10 degrees off level. It's crazy. I mean, they're coming round here at 100 miles an hour, full speed out of that uh, uh, grid straight bend. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Joseph. Lotta. Wim. Wim, Lotta and Joseph. Cool. Lotta, that's an interesting name, isn't it? 
Yeah, do you like it? Yeah. Works out well for you, I take it, yeah? Yeah. And uh, what's your favourite truck? Um... Point it out, that one. Steve Powell, brilliant. I like that one. He'll be happy to hear that. You got Steve Powell's autograph. Look, show the camera, look. Steve Powell's autograph. And which one's your favourite? Um, probably the same one. Well, we're doing very well for the number three Steve Powell, aren't we? And yourself, sir? Uh, that one. That one is Michael Oliver. He will be pleased. And uh, what about you? Um, Steve Powell. Steve Powell, see, he didn't need a picture. He just knew. That's a, that's it. Oh, mega fan. Young lady at the back. Uh, Steve Powell. Steve, I think Steve Powell's won it in this group. Let's hear some noise to Steve Powell. Ready? One, two, three, go. Yay! Yay! Excellent, excellent. Right, we got some more spectators over here. Thanks, guys. Thank what have we got over here? Let's have a look. Slip the clutch. Oh, yes. Love it. It's your birthday. You're uh, six. Seven. Seven? Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it is a seven. It is a seven. Right then, birthday boy, what's your name? Ralph. Hi, Ralph. Right, go on then. Enlighten us. Which is your favourite out that of the pack? One. Oh, Stuart Oliver. We won't tell Michael. You know, <laughs> you know they're brothers. Yeah. Yeah, it's just Stuart's had a hard life. Bless him. <laughs> yeah. And what about yours? Uh, I like the... that one. You like Simon Coles? Is it because it's pink? Yeah, I thought it might be. Are you having a great weekend, guys? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Oh, good. we just got to double check. Sometimes I need some prompting. Do you know what I mean? It's okay. Right, thanks for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day. Well, we can see that the ocean is starting to move in a certain direction now, isn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> Everybody a wave. You can stream this back on Bark Live later on. Just search Bark Live on YouTube and you can screen record it to your heart's content. Don't screen record, it's illegal. <laughs> right then, wow, what's the time now? We've just got a few minutes left now of the grid walk. We can see security and the marshals making their way down the grid, clearing out uh, the spectators because, of course, we'll be going racing very, very shortly. Um, have we got any drivers about? I mean, let's let's see if we can just, sorry, come through here. We'll wiggle over a little bit. So, what's that? There we go. There we go. Coming through, coming through. Where, where's John? Not from there. Here he is. Here he is. Hi, hi. Hi, hi Linz. All right, Graham. Paul, how are you? Oh, all right. All right. All right. Now this is uh, John Bowler's mum. I know it's 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 uncanny. Doesn't look old enough, does she? Um, but yeah, um, uh, let's, let's talk about stress levels first no, of all. Stress levels are good. Yeah, you. But you, I mean, your stress levels. You've been coming racing with John for quite some time. Now. I have certainly. Have. Uh, and uh, yeah, you, how do you deal with it? How do you cope? I don't really you know. just don't care whether he crashes or no, <laughs> not bother. I just like him up there at the front, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah at the no, front. Well, that's yeah. it. And he's been doing very well this week. He's weekend. been doing good, very pleased. Extremely yeah. well. going well. Very well. Yes, and I think, yes. have, we got, have we got the man himself? Yes, John. John, come on over. Do you want a signature point here? Yeah. Uh, no, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sign my left boob. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Papa Dazarus. Um, so, John, I wanted to speak to you earlier on today, before the, the first race. Yeah. Brilliant start, obviously, cracking position, and you really held on to that for quite some time, didn't you? I mean, you've really found that, that groove this weekend. That's it, yeah. I'm not sure if it was in the curry we had last night, but we'll work <laughs> around that. Some rocket fuel got slipped into the madras, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> what, uh, so, obviously, reverse grid again today. Uh, well, sorry, this next race. Uh, you're what? One, two, three. Fifth position. Yeah. Um, but we saw some serious changes changing positions before the first corner uh, in the right, first yeah. race this afternoon. Yeah, so we did see some good positions, we had a good, uh, we, we, the truck's running really well, uh, we, were on a, we were unsure how it was going to perform, it seems to be performing well, I think it's just a bit of fine tuning with myself and getting myself on uh, on song for the next race. That's fantastic, well it, it appears the marshals might have to have something to say. <laughs> Can you hear something? I can't, I can't. I think they might want us to leave. So that's it for that. John Bowler, good luck. Well done. Fantastic effort. Let's see another great result uh, for him. And uh, yeah, we are literally being ushered off the grid now, ready for the start of the race. However, I have bad news. Possibly good news for some of the drivers. It is starting to rain a little bit. It's only spitting, only spitting, just a little bit. 
but it's probably going to get heavier. So this could be the race of the weekend that we all see. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll hand back over to you in the studio. Thank you for joining us on the grid walk and it's been emotional. Well, fantastic stuff from uh, Pointy as ever there. Welcome back after that uh, lunch break and uh, grid walk. And the marshals just clearing the uh, grid down there. Great to see so many fans down there. Getting uh, up close and personal with some of the officials uh, down there as well. Good to see. As we get ready to resume racing here on BARC TV here at Browns Hatch on this Easter Monday. British Truck Racing Championship race four up next. That's followed by the Junior Saloon cars for their second race, with um, Harry Smith going for his second win of the weekend. Final Caterham race is next, the Sigma 150s, their second race of the day. The Mini Challenge have their third race of the weekend, then the final truck race, the track action saloons, and finally the pickups to close out this very, very busy weekend here on BARC TV. Plenty of action coming up uh, throughout the year. Myself and Adam Weller will be taking you through the action this year. Interesting to note that pace truck we've got in position. It's from Lenham uh, Storage, owned by Andrew Fulcher, who uh, used to race in the championship. And that, as you may have heard, is an electric lorry. I've never seen an electric uh, tractor unit before. Zero emission. Could that be the future of truck racing? You may also have noticed that our pole sitter, unfortunately, is missing. It should have been David Smith, the number 11, but um, he hasn't been able to repair after his problems this morning. Looking at the uh, grid, we have Paul Rivette, the Division 2 truck, and I've also noticed that Tom O'Rourke has gone back into the pit lane, so I hope we're not losing another truck. Hopefully uh, Tom will be able to take the start of this next race, another 15 minutes coming up. This grid, based on the uh, results of race 2 from yesterday with the top 8 reversed, and as you may be able to hear in the background now, there is some rain coming down. I said those clouds were threatening, but it is starting to rain, unfortunately, here at Brands Hatch. It's the UK in March. Of course it was going to rain at some point. I work in, I work in speedway commentary. I know all about rain-offs. Nothing worse than driving for hours to get to a meeting that's uh, being rained off just before the start when it's been dry all day and the heavens open half an hour before the start. Oh, yes, that happened on, on Friday at Redcar. Really feel for the Redcar promotion on Friday. It's four wheeled action that we concentrate on here. Behind Paul Rivette, we've got Stephen Powell. Plenty of his fans here, as we heard on the grid walk, and Stuart Oliver. And John Bowler and Michael Oliver on row three. Fourth row is Jenkins and Smith. Ryan Smith had his winning run ended earlier on. Bit of confusion at the end of uh, race number three. He did get ahead of David Jenkins, but just too late. Tom O'Rourke and um, John Powell should be at the back. And we've got uh, Simon Cole and Neil Yates completing the grid just ahead of them. Tom O'Rourke in the pit lane. You can see the rain is... Coming down quite considerably, if you look on the left of your screen where the course car is parked, you can see how much uh, rain has already fallen. It's going to be slippery in this next race. Trucks and rain, bring it on, says uh, Stuart Evans. Hannah Fulcher says April showers. Yeah, well, it is the first of April today. No April Fool's jokes here. Yes, it is, it is raining. The microphone isn't broken, as somebody said. Dan Bartlett. Yeah, you're right. Wouldn't be a bank holiday money, but that's a downpour of some description. I remember being at um, a short oval meeting one Easter Monday that was early in the year, and it snowed once. It was at Hensford. Yes, uh, Maccas, I did get to Donington on Saturday. 
They spotted me in the grandstand there. So Adam Weller on our coverage from there. Hope you've enjoyed the action so far this uh, weekend. Four days of racing on BARC TV. Plenty more to come throughout um, the season. to Lee Harris tuning in from the USA a few uh, watchers from America this weekend and uh, one or two from New Zealand as well going international here on the ARC TV hi to Cole who's watching from uh, down in Swansea and Mackers says yes Kurt Goranson would love this wet track well there was only one way the great Kurt Goranson knew how to drive and that was sideways The great Swede who uh, drove logging trucks on icy roads during the winter. That's where he got his driving style from. OK, so let's uh, confirm the grid then. Uh, David Smith should have been on pole, but he's not there. So Paul Rivette starts there alone on the front row. Second row, Stephen Powell and Stuart Oliver. Row three, John Bowler and Michael Oliver. Fourth row, David Jenkins and Ryan Smith. Fifth row, Simon Cole and Neil Yates. And on row six, uh, we should be seeing Tom O'Rourke and John Powell, but Tom O'Rourke currently in the pit lane. As we get ready to slip and slide here at Brands Hatch. Ah, David Smith is making his way out. He's just coming down the Cooper Strait now. So that's good, David Smith. Our pole sitter has made it out just in time. He missed the grid walk, but he is going to make it onto track. Broken half shaft in the MAN. The, uh, just before the start of uh, the race this morning. Now, is he going to be allowed to come through and take his uh, grid position, or is he going to have to start at the back? Thanks again to all the partner sponsors of the British Truck Racing Championship. TRP Parts, Truck and Trailer Parts, Lubricants and Consumables, GT Tyres, Dines Motor Group, Accident Recovery and uh, Repairs, MV Commercial, Total Care Vehicle Lifts, Sylvie Fleet Management and Fuel Cards, BWOC Bulk Fuel Supplier, Transport Monitoring Solutions, Truck and Driver Magazine and Freyhauf Trailers. All partners of the British Truck Racing Championship this year. Interesting comment from This Is Cool Games. This looks more exciting than the NASCAR race in the wet last night. That's not an April Fool. NASCAR actually raced on an oval in the wet on grooved tyres for, I think, the first time ever. Let's see how the trucks get on in these wet conditions. Viewers from Australia and Canada on here as well now. They've all heard it's raining and this is going to be even more fun. Thanks for joining us today on BARC TV. The hooter sounds in pit lane, so it looks like we're ready to go. That's the signal that the uh, pace truck, the electric pace truck, is about to move off. 30 second board from the marshals on the gantry. Race number four of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship. It looks like David Smith has taken position at the back of the grid. 
hopefully Tom O'Rourke can start from the pit lane in the number 86, the international Navistar. Here we go then, they roll away. Paul Rivette on the front row, the uh, dominator of Division 2. Ryan Smith going for win number three in Division 1 of the weekend. Tom O'Rourke is going to join from the pit lane, that's good. We've got the full complement of trucks out there then. That marshal's braver than me in pit lane, standing in front of Tom O'Rourke's truck there. As he joins the back of the grid, I thought, I thought he was going to be stopped from joining and he'd have to start from in the pit lane, but he has been allowed out onto the grid. As the electric uh, pace truck from Lenham's leads them round. It's become very wet very quickly. The circuit here at Brands Hatch. Stephen Powell going for win number two. Bit of bodywork missing from the front bumper of the Pink Panther there of Simon Cole. There is Tom O'Rourke. He's getting to know his new truck this weekend. He's had a couple of moments. Shout out to Pure Track Racing, who are here spectating today. Consider it done, thank you. So, how long is it going to take flying Ryan Smith to come through to the front? Division 2 truck of Paul Rivette leads them round. Stephen Powell will probably get a free run down the inside here to try and take the lead. Or is David Smith, he's making his way through, look! David Smith is going to take pole position, he's weaved his way through the grid. And we are going to have the uh, correct grid order out there. Tom O'Rourke on the back row. So here we go then with race number four of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship. They're going to get an extra lap behind the pace truck because of the changing conditions, I think. Yes, that's allowed David Smith to take pole, so they're going to get an extra green flag lap just to acclimatise to the conditions. It's the first time they've run in the wets this weekend, indeed this season. Ryan Smith weaving to keep those GT tyres warm. This run into Paddock Hill Bend in these conditions is not going to be for the faint of heart, certainly. Let's just hope everyone makes it round on this first lap. We saw Paul Rivette, the Division 2 truck, uh, was uh, rather swallowed up by the Division 1 runners at the start of uh, the race this morning. So my advice to him will be to stay out wide and just uh, let them come through. He, know, he knows he's well ahead of his Division 2 rivals. There's John Powell at the back of the field in the DAF. David Smith and Paul Rivette lead them round there. Looks like we are going to go green this time. First electric truck I've ever seen leading this field round. Keeping it steady at the moment, waiting for the pace truck to pull into pit lane. They won't start racing until the red lights go out. David Smith, Paul Rivette, Stephen Powell, Stuart Oliver, Ryan Smith coming through once again from eighth on the grid. Pace truck now into pit lane. This is going to be certainly not for the faint of heart as we said as they charge down towards Paddock for the first time. Coming up towards the red lights, race four of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship. Lights go out, here we go, and Stephen Powell giving David Smith a bit of a push there as we get underway. Down towards the first corner, Paul Rivette's held his advantage up on the outside there this time as well, was slow away earlier. Decent start from the back by uh, John Powell as well, he's, he's made up about five places, he could get ahead of Ryan Smith here. Paul Rivette's got the lead, we've got a Division 2 truck in the lead, Stephen Powell loses half his front bumper as they head 
up towards uh, Drew. It's amazingly, they've all got round paddock bend in one piece. John Powell got an absolute flyer there from the back. He's uh, right up there in the midfield. It's Paul Rivette who leads from David Smith, Stephen Powell, Stuart Oliver having a look down the inside. He clips the back of Stephen Powell. John Bowler is uh, up alongside him. Bowler gets forced out wide onto Cooper Strait, but it's Paul Rivette in the lead. We thought he was going to drop back, but in the wet, this is proving a great leveller, and we've got a Division 2 truck in the lead. David Smith goes wide at 30, so does John Bowler. Powell in third, then it's Stuart Oliver. Have you seen that bodywork, Stephen Powell, because he clipped the back of uh, David Smith off the line. Michael Oliver now runs out wide. But they're all being very careful, very sensible in these conditions. And, they've all, and they're all going to make it round at the first lap in one piece. Rivet, he's clearing off into the lead. Look at this. Side by side for uh, fourth position between John Bowler and Michael Oliver for fifth place, I should say. Ryan Smith in behind them. Then it's John Powell, who's got an absolute flyer of a first lap. Behind him, David Jenkins, who's got the opposite. He's dropped back. Then O'Rourke, Yates and Cole round out the field. Stephen Powell up the inside. David Smith got out of shape there, coming out of Paddock Hill Bend. He loses two places. Could be three, because John Bowler's going to try and go through as well. Stephen Powell up into second place. Third, it is Stuart Oliver. David Smith will try and hold the inside line, but John, Bow John Bowler just powers ahead of him down the hill into Graham Hill Bend. Ryan Smith trying to go around the outside as well. It is really wet here. Ryan Smith sideways on the kerb. He tries to get past uh, John Powell and Michael Oliver. Look at the spray they're throwing up. They can hardly see where they're going. And Smith is, Ryan Smith is boxed in there behind his namesake. He's on the grass. So is Michael Oliver. Off goes Ryan Smith. In fact, is he pulling up there? Or can he just not get any grip on the grass? Has he got a problem there, Ryan Smith? Yeah, he's coming to a halt. Or is he? He might just not be able to get any grip on the grass to keep going. Is that Ryan Smith's race over? He always seems to have problems, Ryan Smith, in the fourth race of every weekend for some reason. Yeah, he just can't get up the incline there. Look, it's, it's just too slippery for him. Which way now, Ryan? So your leader is Paul Rivette from Stephen Powell. Then it's Oliver. Bowler. Michael Oliver is fifth. David Jenkins coming through into sixth place after a bit of a slow start. He's got ahead of John Powell and David Smith. Well, Ryan Smith could well be out of the race if he can't get off the grass there. Whether that's uh, just because he's beached there or because he's had a problem. He did seem to slow coming out of this. He's still trying to back off the grass. But <laughs> where is he going? I've no idea even where Ryan Smith's going to rejoin at, at this point. Here come the leaders. Well, where's Ryan got to? There he is, pacing the wrong way on the inside of Clearways. That is bizarre. He's had to reverse all the way across the grass because he can't get any forward motion. Unless he can only get reverse gear, of course. So it's Rivette from Stephen Powell. Three laps completed, just under two seconds in it. Could we see a Division 2 truck win overall? Certainly a possibility with the way Paul Rivette's going in the MAN. MAN's one and two, the Volvo of Stuart Oliver in third place. And Ryan Smith, he's got the truck off the grass, he's got the uh, Daimler running again. But he's at least a lap behind. When was the last time we saw Ryan Smith a lap down? Tom O'Rourke has pulled into the pits, looks like he's out of it. His problems uh, just before the start have returned. John Powell's running well in uh, seventh position overall now. Paul Rivetti is slowly being reeled in, I think, by Stephen Powell. Stuart Oliver closing on the MAN. Then in fourth place, it's John Bowler. Michael Oliver fifth. David Jenkins in sixth. Paul Rivetti, you can see him fighting to stop the back end of the truck coming round on him almost there through clear ones. That's how slippery it is out there. There's Tom O'Rourke in the pit lane. The lead gap now is 1.4 seconds. New fastest lap of the race for Stephen Powell in second with a 1 minute 9.682. So they're lapping about 10 seconds slower than they were earlier on. Don't get out onto those painted curves, Paul Rivette. That'll send you spinning. We've seen touring cars do that there many times. Remember in the early 2000s, uh, Matt Jackson got the back wheel of his BMW onto that kerb and went spinning and uh, caused a pile up in the BTCC involving about three quarters of the field. 
Stuart Oliver still chasing on in third, the ten times champion. John Bowler going well in fourth, the rain proving a great leveller here. Now Ryan Smith is still going, but a lap behind. Always seems to be the fourth race of the weekend where he hits some kind of misfortune. Here's Simon Cole chasing down Neil Yates. This is the battle for ninth position. Simon Cole third in Division 2 in the Pink Panther. Neil Yates his first full season. Oh, and uh, Stephen Powell and Stuart Oliver both run wide. Onto the dirt coming out of uh, Paddock Hill Bend, still allowing John Bowler a chance to attack for a podium. I don't know if there was any contact just before there, if they just uh, ran, slid out wide. It's very easy to do there, whatever you're driving. Look at the standing water coming down into Graham Hill Bend. John Bowler's found it, he runs wide. This is just treacherous. While all that's going on, Paul Rivette's been able to pull away. This will be for the first time since the classes went back to combined races a few years ago that Paul Rivette, that a Division 2 truck in the shape of Paul Rivette, has taken an overall win if uh, Paul Rivette can stay in front. Stephen Powell will want to try and go after him here. Over the line they go, the gap was uh, just under two seconds, it's now just over four seconds. Shows how much uh, Stephen Powell and Stuart Oliver were delayed there. Here's what happened. They ran out, well, yeah, they just both ran out wide, independently of each other. Lost about three seconds there. And Michael Oliver went wide as well. It shows you how uh, treacherous it is at Paddock Hill, Ben. Let's hope nobody... And uh, David Smith going wide over the gravel as well. They need to keep off those curbs on the outside. Look at the way John Powell is going in the number six. He's catching David Jenkins for seventh place. The sixth place, I should say. In fact, on the previous lap, he briefly got ahead of the uh, MAN. Neil Yates has pulled into the pits, I can tell you. So another truck in trouble. Still got uh, just over six and a half minutes of this race to go, so we're just past halfway. John Bowler's had a problem somewhere as well, because he's dropped back behind uh, David Jenkins as well. and fight his way back. This is a repeat of race three earlier on. These two are fighting it out. As uh, through into second place goes Stuart Oliver. I wonder if Stephen Powell ran wide again there coming through Paddock because he seems slow up the hill. And Stuart Oliver goes through into P2. Where's Paul Rivette? He's off in the distance. Stephen Powell looking rather second hand. Lost the front uh, bodywork on the opening lap. Oh, who's that going straight on in the background? Going into the tyre wall, wallop straight in. That's John Bowler. He's gone straight on at Graham Hill Bend. Now, we might see uh, a full course yellow for that, if John, unless John Bowler can extricate his truck from the tyre wall. But how damaged is the uh, the tyre barrier? Try and uh, look at that again. Now, this is a replay of uh, Stuart Oliver, meanwhile. He goes over the grass at Surtees. It holds that uh, second place. Well, it's hard to know where to look, there's plenty of incident. John Bowler is in the tyre wall at Graham Hill Bend, that's Oliver again! Going off on the run up Paddock Hill Bend, Stephen Powell says thanks very much, I'll take second place back. Michael Oliver could get past his father for third here. They're having trouble just keeping these trucks on the road now. There's David Jenkins in fifth, John Powell in sixth. Sixth overall will be his best result for some time. And there's another one going off. Oh my goodness, that's Michael Oliver and he almost goes straight into the back of, of John Bowler. They've got to stop this. 
It is getting too dangerous down there. That's two trucks gone off and one has hit the other. Yeah, red flag is coming out. No surprise there. Michael Oliver straight on at Graham Hill Bend and he collected the truck of uh, John Bowler, I think. Let's hope both those drivers are okay. Amazingly, Michael Oliver's driving off. But the race has been stopped. That will surely be result declared. It is too dangerous out there. I thought for a second we were seeing a replay of John Bowler going off there. Then I realised that it was another truck going in. Poor, oh, poor old Michael Oliver. Every time he races at Brands Hatch, he seems to get into some sort of accident. And he was very lucky not to blitz full bore into the back of John Bowler there. That was a very nasty one. What's been going on at Paddock Hill meantime? Stephen Powell's turn to run wide. So I don't know who's going to be classified second. The race will surely be declared. But this was the incident with John Bowler. He was trying to stay ahead of David Jenkins. Got wide onto the grass. No grip there. Straight on. Straight in. That is a scary incident. Then we'll see what happened to Michael Oliver. Yeah, exactly the same. No grip there. Straight ahead. Look out. And collects at the back of John Ball. He was lucky not to T-bone that truck. That was a very scary incident indeed. Just clipping the back of it there, thankfully. He just had no control there at all. Thankfully, looks like both drivers are OK. Michael Oliver was able to drive away. But so when you see that back in replay there with Michael Oliver going straight on and uh, straight towards another stranded truck, that was a frightening incident there. Thankfully, everyone's OK. So we await trackside recovery to appear then. We're just awaiting uh, news, I suspect, uh, as we were past two-thirds distance in that race. I suspect the result is going to be declared. There were four and a half minutes left. And if so, for the first time in... Uh, for the first time since combined races were brought back into the championship, we have a Division 2 overall winner, provisionally. Paul Rivette, subject to confirmation, has won it. OK, I think we can hand down to Pointy down at Trackside to uh, give us an update. Well, the conditions have well and truly changed. I did say it was starting to rain when we left that grid walk earlier on. And as you can see, the race conditions deteriorated very, very quickly. The uh, scrutineers and, of course, the clerk of the course have called a red flag. We've got a lot of steam coming out the front of Neil Yates over here. Um, but, of course, behind that, we can see the triumphant Paul Rivet starting in first place and essentially finishing in first place. We'll have to see uh, the final order uh, that comes down on TSL once we've decided what's going on. Team Napa very, very happy with the result. I'm not 100% sure whether we're allowed to speak to the drivers or not, but better to ask for forgiveness rather than permission. Paul, you must have seen yes, some sin. <laughs> First overall, incredible, incredible performance. Well, the wet is always a great leveller. I mean, I can't believe how many incidents we had behind you during that race. Ryan Smith, we lost halfway through as well, went off on the grass. Michael Oliver, John Bowler, even Stuart almost hit Michael at one point. It was action-packed. It was so slippery out there, and it was getting more and more slippery towards the end, so good call from race control there. But this Napa Racing UK truck, she was flying, wasn't she? I might not have the power of the Division 1 boys, but when it's wet like that, all that power, you've got to be able to put it down still. You certainly have, and there was serious consistency there as well. We could see with your tyres, you could see with your line. You weren't going anywhere, were you? No, no, and that was everything I had. I was pushing the whole race, knowing that if they caught me, they'd be coming through, and I just needed to keep that gap. I'm guessing there was plenty of fighting going along, going along behind to help me out. We're always going to need a bit of luck, and one of my goals this year, a silent goal, because I didn't want to say it, was to try and put it on the podium overall. Didn't expect we'd be winning a race in the first weekend. 
Well, it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, incredible, incredible one. It's just a shame you're not in Division 1, isn't it? You've got, you got a big trophy then. <laughs> well, oh. Hang on, surely I should get that one. Yeah, yeah, maybe we should. Maybe we should. We'll, we'll speak. I'll have a word. I'll have a word. Two bowls of champagne from the same race. I don't know. Right then. Paul Rebecca, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we are hurrying things along now um, because they have got some recovery work to do with John Bowler out on the track. Such a shame for John. Real disappointment that that happened. But as you can see by the rest of the trucks out on the circuit for that race, it really could have been anyone uh, that found that wrong wet patch and ended up uh, on the grass. I mean, I hope he's OK. I hope the truck's OK. With one race left to do this afternoon, John, you need to come this way. <laughs> trucks literally everywhere pandemonium would be a word i'd use anyway let's head back to the studio now for a few cheeky replays of the absolute carnage that was race four of the weekend here at brands hatch yes let's have a look back at that uh, rather chaotic truck race where well, we knew it was going to be chaos truck racing in the wet always is and ryan smith an early casualty but uh, just went straight on there. He didn't seem to be fighting for control or anything. As if he, as if he just, I thought he was pulling up with a problem. Then uh, lost a lap and got going again. See it again here. Back end just breaks away slightly and he suddenly goes straight on and then just couldn't get the truck off the grass. He had to back down again because it's uphill up to clearways there. No grip at all on the grass and he just had to slide back until he was on the tarmac. Paul Rivette nearly lost it at one point going sideways coming out of uh, Paddock Hill Bend. And then Stephen Powell and Stuart Oliver seems to be having a competition to see who can run wide there the most times. Michael Oliver joined in as well and subsequently David Smith a little bit further back. It was getting impossible through the first section of the lap. John Powell had a strong race. John Bowler, that was his first off, which is what dropped him back down a few spots behind uh, David Jenkins. David Smith did a bit of ploughing. Or at least he managed to get out there, only just got out in time for that race to take his pole position. Stephen Powell then ran wide again. And I think Stuart Oliver threw for second place. Incidentally, still no official confirmation of a result of this race. And then John Bowler, having already won run wide at Graham Hill Bend once, lost it, went straight on and wallop straight into the tyre barrier. Stuart Oliver then ran wide again over the gravel, allowing Stephen Powell to go through. On that difficult run out of Paddock. And then, things really got scary. A soaking wet downhill run through Graham Hill. Michael Oliver lost it, straight on collected the stationary truck of John Bowler. Thankfully, everyone was okay. And now they've got to clear the wreckage and repair the barrier. As we say, no results um, given officially as yet. The timing screen still showing just red flag. But, so we will get the result through from the timekeepers as soon as we can. The telehandler is going to try and pluck John Bowler out of the uh, tyre barrier there. So Paul Rivette provisionally the winner ahead of Stuart Oliver and Stephen Powell, then Michael Oliver and David Jenkins. John Powell in a uh, good sixth place. It's David Smith, Simon Cole, uh, John Bowler obviously won't be classified. Michael Oliver, we don't know whether the result will be uh, counted back. Ryan Smith two laps down after that uh, incident early on and we lost Neil Yates and Tom O'Rourke into the pits but uh, no result confirmed as yet that is all provisional main thing is the drivers are all right the marshals are okay and now the clear up operation will begin see in the replay that uh, Michael Oliver was frantically trying to steer his truck away to avoid John Bowler but there was just no grip there at all he couldn't avoid him
Sam Watley in our comments thread on the stream says, what are they going to use to recover the trucks? A helicopter? No, they're going to use Mick Gould Commercial's huge pizza build. So I can see it down there at uh, Graham Hill Bend. And they've got the, the big daff out there as well from LJ. Hopefully we'll see some American truck action from the big four-axle Peterbilts. Mick Gould commercials. Uh, Mick Gould himself, uh, a former drag racer in years gone by, so he knows his motorsport. And next up after this, we will have the junior saloon cars. Now, some of their young racers have never raced a car in the wet before. It's going to be a baptism of fire for them. First of all, you can see the barrier being rebuilt, the tyres put back, and the JCB is going to be used to pull the barrier back into place. Obviously we will have a bit of a delay here while the truck is cleared away and the barrier is repaired. It looks as though Don Bowler is able to drive the truck away. And he's trying to at least. Doing a three point turn. Get up from behind the JCB and he's driving off. I'm surprised. I thought the front axle would be broken after that impact with the tyre wall, but he's OK. Very carefully getting it off the grass. Looks like he's not going to need the big uh, Peterbilt after all. Or is he? He's parked up down there just in front of the recovery entourage. Ito uh, Ford Ranger pickup truck there as well with Steve Buers, the uh, owner of Trackside Recovery at the wheel, doing a bit of off-roading. Ah, now the Peterbilt might be being brought in, let's have a look. Yeah, I think he is going to possibly tow John Bowler in, so we'll hopefully get a better look at that uh, huge American truck you can see in the background. So the recovery operation ongoing, the red flag coming out on our fourth truck race of the day. We have an incident at Graham Hill Bend, John Bowler and Michael Oliver sliding straight on into the tyre wall. The red flag came out with four and a half minutes of the race remaining. Uh, the result hasn't officially been declared as yet, but uh, traditionally Paul Rivette will be your winner. And Division 1 winner will either be Stuart Oliver or Stephen Powell depending on what lap we count back to. Where is the uh, Mick Gould Commercials recovery vehicle, the big four-axle Peterbilt? 
got a 600 horsepower 15 litre diesel engine that's a big American machine and an 18 speed gearbox imagine seeing that on the motorway at night all lit up it weighs 21 tonnes and the maximum gross train weight that's the truck and what it's towing can be up to 100 tonnes used to recover the biggest vehicles from uh, mishaps out on the road There's our track sweeper in position as well. That looks pretty impressive too, the three-axle truck there. Mip Gould Commercials based down in uh, East Sussex. And they had this uh, pizza built, custom built in America and shipped over to the UK. It's got the uh, fleet at Mick Gould's uh, HQ includes quite a few American vehicles. Show truck in its own right, but... Uh, earning its living today in partnership with Trackside Recovery the organisers of the uh, recovery vehicles this weekend haven't seen a pizza built in truck racing since the uh, since back in the 80s, in the early days of sport, when the Dutchman Ad van Coverden brought over a Peterbilt tractor unit. I've seen photographs of it sir, being raced at Brands Hatch. Goodness knows um, how he got it round Druids. You can see uh, where that uh, truck has taken the impact from Michael Oliver as well. It's bent the rear axle. I would say that's the end of, end of the day for John Bowler. I don't think he'll get that repaired for the final race. So see on the back of the cab there the uh, sleeper cab extension the uh, operator effectively lives aboard his vehicle don't be king of the road in that thing wouldn't you scan your sweeper in action as well getting uh, the oil and debris off the track they're trying to dry the track out a little as well I think I think uh, while we have this break in uh, the action, while the track is cleared up, we can head down to Ian Waterhouse, who's in assembly with the junior saloon cars. Well, I think we got away with it, didn't we, really, for three and a half days. It was inevitable that we were going to get a downpour. I have to say a big thank you. As I was walking down, well, I say walking, as I was running down to get to the assembly area, somebody just said, do you want a hat, Ian? Why not, indeed? I don't really wear them very well, but here we go. Right, Junior Saloon Car Championship, second race of the day, final race of them for the weekend as well. Now, you may remember in race one, Harry Smith took the win. We didn't actually get a chance to speak to any of the drivers because the race but straight after them was the truck, so they had to get to the outer paddock. So let's go have a chat, shall we, with Harry and uh, congratulate him on that race one win. How you doing? All right. You better, you? Good to see you. Uh, right, let's jump in. Harry, we're going to have to come and have a chat. Let's okay. touch on race one first because we didn't get a speak, uh, chance to speak after it. Congratulations. How does it feel to be a junior saloon car race winner? Um, I was kind of at a loss for words, really. I mean, being I've been on the grid since 2021. I think last year everyone knew I had the pace in me, but the luck just wasn't there. Uh, and I think kind of over the off-season I progressed so much uh, in myself and uh, with the car and learning the tracks and different lines and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I think today I kind of proved to everyone what I really can do. Well, you certainly have done, but you get a chance to do it again. Different conditions, though. We had a dry race earlier, wet conditions now. Uh, uh, are you a fan of these wet these wet conditions? Uh, yeah, I like the wet conditions. I've, I've never done, like, carting and stuff like that before, but I kind of got thrown straight in a deep end. My first ever uh, time out in the car was wet, and I loved it. So hopefully uh, i come away with another P1 today. Top man, thank you so much. I really appreciate you talking to me. I'll shut this door because it is uh, the rain's it's still coming down, but it's not as heavy as it was earlier. Let's go uh, chat to uh, Jonathan Moore, shall we? Uh, second place, of course, in that race as well. Lines up second for this one, too. Let's just open the door. I'm trying to get myself in so I can stay as dry as possible. Poor old John, our uh, fantastic roaming cameraman, has uh, got the full wet gear on here. Uh, Jonathan, race one, pretty good on the podium. You must be delighted. Uh, yeah, I mean, me and Harry have been pretty equal on pace all weekend. Um, 
couple of mistakes in the first couple of laps meant we dropped back and then he, he got about a second and it never really closed, you know, he wasn't getting away, I wasn't catching. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously wet race for now, it looks really slippy out there, so it'll just be about uh, car control really, um, making sure you're not locking up, things like that. So easy to um, lose the rear or lock up or, or whatever in these conditions, but um, as long as you keep it on the road, you should be alright. That's the beauty of the JSCC, isn't it? You know, they're all the same cars, of course. It, it really comes down to driver skill and, and the wet really highlights that even more so. Yeah, I mean, um, the wet is just, it's an equaliser. Um, you'll see people often in the wet who come from like 10th, 12th on the grid up to top five. Um, you know, people have different strengths, obviously. Um, not everyone is strong in the wet. It is a really difficult um, thing to learn. Um, learning wet lines and, and whatnot, but when you do learn it, it can be very beneficial. And Jonathan, did, did you get many Easter eggs yesterday? Uh, we got one actually, we did a briefing with Motorsport UK and got one there, so um, apart from that, no, but uh, more teasers, so it was a good one. Well, oh, there you go, more teasers, that is a good one there, these obviously pro athletes here, uh, they don't eat too much rubbish, do they? Uh, let's jump in here. <laughs> And uh, let's just move around a bit. I just want to go to Sherrington actually, because uh, finished on the podium third yesterday. Let's uh, just have a quick word. I'm just going to jump in. Car starting to fire up. I, I think there's still a bit of repair. In fact, there's quite a lot of repair work still going on. So we're going to have quite a bit of time. Uh, James on the podium yesterday, uh, earlier today. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it was a good race. I enjoyed it. I had a few battles along the way, um, but I think we're looking to go a bit higher up on the podium for this one. Now, wet conditions. Okay, do you like that? Is this going to suit your style? I mean. I'm quite a smooth driver normally, but I haven't had much experience in the wet in this car, so I'm going to have to be doing a lot of experimenting when I get out there, but hopefully we can make something happen. So tell us about your route into the Junior Saloon Car Championship. What have you done before? Uh, why motorsport? Um, so I've been at a racetrack since pretty much birth because my dad's been racing for years, uh, doing things like Formula V, Sports 2000 and V to V. Yeah. So obviously I got into it by him, um, and then I started myself when I was about seven or eight in karting, but then we sort of just had enough of karting a bit because it wasn't really going anywhere. So when I was 13, we bought a junior saloon car. And then last year at 14, I did half the season. 14 years old, bro. Yeah, go on, sorry, that's insane, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, so last year I did half the season and by the end we were sort of hit the front a bit. And then this year we're aiming to do the full season if we've got the budget for it. And we hope to sort of at least top three in the championship, if not win it. Top, yeah. top man, thanks so much for talking Thank to us, buddy. Best of luck in this race uh, as well. Uh, let's keep moving around, shall we? We've uh, got to, I don't know if you can, you might have to go around that way. Do you want to squeeze through that little gap there? Uh, let's just jump in here, shall we? Maserati, what a name. Here we go, let's jump in. Uh, right, race one, how was it for you? Yeah, it was good. Um, yeah, got off to a bit of a bad start, you know, my first race start, but, um, yeah, just kept my head in the game, um, made a few overtakes and got P5 in the end. Luca, tell us about your journey in motorsport so far. Where have you come from? What have you done before JSCC? Well, I've only really done um, some sort of like not very competitive karting at Daytona Sandown. Uh, yes. Yeah. Just local track. Um, done some in-kart, Super Champs, championships there. What's like. it like being part of the JSCC? What's it like being a teenager hurtling around Brands Hatch in one of these? <laughs> It's great. Um, I'm sure uh, my parents and all my friends are scared, but you know, I'm <laughs> loving it. Um, yeah, it's a great environment to be in. It's a great championship. Really enjoying my first weekend. Yeah, hoping to get some more silverware. Learning a lot. Yeah, always. Top man. Best of luck. We'll let, certainly keep you an eye on you there, Luca. Let's just uh, keep moving around. We've still got time. Still, uh, I believe there's still repair work going on. So uh, let's keep going on. There's quite a lot of bodies. Let's just jump in, shall we? And. Uh, and, uh, Alex, he was a driver last year. Oh, Alex, how are you doing? All right. It's, it's, uh, yeah, good. It must be quite tough for you. You probably want to be out there, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, it's it's quite nice just being around, seeing the cars and everything. So, what's on the horizon for you? What's the next step? 
I've I've been looking to go into track attack, maybe the yeah. Hyundai Coupes, but I have to find some sponsorship to get that done. Well, there you go. Well, give it a plug. If anybody wants to sponsor this young man, get in touch. How do we get in touch with you guys? Uh, well, we have a website which is speedygonzalex.com. <laughs> oh, Speedy Gonzalex, <laughs> I love that. That's brilliant. And the the Instagram is speedygonzalex.06, and yeah, you can find me through there. That's it. Uh, go check your social media because uh, we might just be about to go through the roof. Uh, let's uh, just jump in here, shall we? Uh, it is open. And uh, oh, look, very kind bringing the netting down as well for us. Uh, right, different conditions this time, wet conditions. Have you got much experience racing in the wet? A uh, fair bit in karting, but not a lot of testing in the car really in the wet. Only like races last year in the wet. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, if you can handle karts in the wet, it should be a doddle, right? <laughs> um, hopefully. I mean, Hopefully you can do well in this race, you know, I want to move up, not go backwards. Yeah. I want to wait for mistakes in front, not really make the mistakes myself, so. Well, they will say rain is, is a great leveller, isn't it? It's going to be an exciting race. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, hopefully. It should even out things, you know, I've been struggling a bit, like, just getting the set up right, but, you know, hopefully we can make, just go forwards in the race and not go backwards, like I say. Top man, best of luck. Thanks for talking to us. Best of luck out there, and uh, let's just uh, Parents? Yeah. Parents, right. Let's let's talk to you guys because it must be petrifying, mustn't it? Seeing yeah. your kids going around uh, a racetrack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, he's a bit, yeah, a little bit, but he's fine. He's used to it. He's uh, done karting since he was eight. So he's so fine. You used to be nervous and yeah. scared all the yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> so we, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, guys, we're going to leave you to it. Uh, actually, the cars are starting to fire up now. I'm just trying to have a look over at the other side of the circuit where the uh, repair work was ongoing. And I think, actually, we might be about to go racing very, very shortly indeed. The uh, engines are firing up. This is going to be good. Second race of the day for the Junior Saloon Car Challenge. Remember, these kids here, they're 14 to 17 years old racing these Citroen Saxos. I remember being 17 years old when Saxos were all the rage, but that was a long time ago now. Uh, fantastic racing action, surely about to come on. I had a, I did have uh, an ex-girlfriend of mine, actually, uh, she had a Citroen Saxo, a gold one. Uh, didn't work out though, so, uh, <laughs> right, time to go racing for the JSCC. Uh, I'm gonna hand over to your commentator, Dave Goddard, to take you through the action. Thanks, mate. That was in there. Thanks, Ian, and uh, take that label off your hat next time, will you? Anyway, um, just before we get the JSCC underway, uh, we have a provisional result confirmed now from the trucks. Uh, Paul Rivette, your winner. Second place was uh, Stephen Powell. He wins Division 1 for the second time this weekend. Stuart Oliver, third. Then it was uh, David Jenkins in fourth place. Uh, the result counted back, in fact, uh, at the end of lap seven, according to the timekeeper. So it's Rivette, Powell, Oliver, David Jenkins, fourth. Then John Powell, fifth and second in Division Two. Sixth for David Smith, Simon Cole, seventh, and Ryan Smith, eighth, a lap down. Uh, non finishes for Michael Oliver, John Bowler, obviously, Neil Yates, and Tom O'Rourke. Hopefully, we will see as many trucks back out as possible for race five. I don't think we're going to be seeing John Bowler back out. The rear axle was bent on the uh, number 14. So he'll be heading uh, back to Stockport and getting ready for Pembroke. Anyway, the junior saloon cars will be out on track shortly for race number two. Harry Smith, after over two full, after two full seasons and part of 2021 trying, finally getting his first win in uh, race number one. This grid, uh, the, based on the second fastest time for each car in qualifying, Kyle Wells will have another chance here. He went off after a bit of a tangle with Josh Salvadori while they were fighting for the final podium position earlier on, letting James Sherrington in to take third place behind Harry Smith and Jonathan Moore. And tell you, Kieran Roberts will have a two-place grid penalty for this race, that contact with James Sherrington. Saw a bit of push and shove between them in the first race. Been a couple of warnings given for contact in that first one. It's that first day back at school. Track just being swept at the moment, and uh, we'll be back underway as soon as we get the all clear from the clerk of the course. So, uh, despite the weather, the change in the weather, very enjoyable day of racing here at uh, Brands Hatch on this Easter Monday. We've still got uh, six more races to come, including the junior saloon cars coming next.
Plenty of supporters in our comments at the moment. Hi to Nolene Lynch, who says good luck to Cole Lynch. Where is she on the grid? Cole is uh, 11th on the grid for this one. Hello to Hannah Brown as well. Watching before football later. And Dan Bartlett says, didn't they used to race trucks on ovals back in the 80s? They did in the US. Yes, there is um, a truck race from uh, Dover Downs International Speedway, Delaware, from the 80s on YouTube somewhere, the Big Rig 200. It's where it, the American uh, truck racer EJ Utley had his famous crash in qualifying in the uh, Yellow Mac. Many people have seen that clip on crash compilations, but the full race is available on YouTube now. Some good old American truck racing. Just a pause while the circuit is checked at the moment. We want to make sure that uh, all the conditions are the best they can be for these junior races. This is going to be very tricky for them. Right to Brad Philpot supporting. Kieran Roberts, Jude Cooper and the whole of Team Oryx competition. Phil Manson says, racing is life. And as Steve McQueen said, everything before or after is just waiting. We are just waiting at the moment for the track to uh, be uh, cleared. Just making sure that any fluid that may have been spilled there is cleared up. Someone asking, what engines are in the Saxos? They're uh, 1600cc Citroen Saxo VTRs. All identical. The series used to be known as Saxmax in years gone by. And we now see the cars coming out onto track. We'll take you through the grid very shortly then. I imagine they'll get uh, two uh, green flag laps because of the changing conditions. That's normally the protocol. Harry Smith up to pole position in the number 10. Alongside him, number 12, Jonathan Moore. Second row, 448, Kyle Wells in the Vinner Sport car. And number 40, James Sherrington for Chandler Motorsports. Row 3, 46, Luca Maserati. He's run by MRM alongside Josh Salvadori. Driving for Chandler Motorsport as well. Row four is Kieran Roberts. Two-place grid penalty for him for contact in race one. He's alongside 77 Oliver Law. Row five, Francisco Howitt, number 50, and Bertie Bream in number eight. On the sixth row of the grid, 353 Cole Lynch alongside 88 Harvey Kersley. Row seven, treble two, Oliver Kerr and 70 Wilf Butler. The eighth row, 19 Lewis Stannard and four... Jude Cooper. Row 9 is 90 Jake Renshaw and 17 of Will Crutzen. Caitlin Scharfiger and Sherry Ann Powell on the 10th row. And the last row of the grid will be 95 Ben Smiles and 29 Alex Bergbaum, who failed to set a lap in qualifying with problems, has to start from the back. Looks as though everybody is present and correct. This will be another 15 minute race. Things are a little bit fraught first time out. Well done indeed to the uh, recovery crews and the marshals. They're getting everything cleared up after that accident in the truck race. And now the cars head off for their, what I suspect will be the first of two green flag laps. Yes, that's just been confirmed. There'll be two green flag laps just to get the drivers acclimatised to these wet conditions. Looks as though spread the rain may have eased off. Still some umbrellas up there. Is 
is still coming down, not as heavily as it was though. You can see that, look at the standing water at the bottom of uh, Paddock Hill there. Drivers are going to have to go very carefully. Spare a thought for our marshals out in these wet conditions as well. Have to shelter under their flags. James Sherrington in the number 40 could be one to watch here, I reckon. He's telling us about his family heritage in motorsports. His father, a super a sports 2000 racer, among others. Harry Smith leads them around, one of several drivers for Chandler Motorsports. And they've got five cars out there in this race. Along with Harry, there's James Sherrington, Wilf Butler, Ben Smiles and Josh Salvadori. Vinner Sport have got uh, Kyle Wells, Francisco Howitt. Kersley Motorsport running uh, Harvey Kersley and Bertie Bream. The Oryx cars, Will Crudson, the uh, scholarship winner. Sherry Ann Powell, Jake Renshaw and Cole Lynch. There's just some of the teams involved in this championship. Another lap under the green flags. Kyle Wells, unlucky not to get a podium in race one, the ex Ninja Kart racer. Tangling with Josh Salvadori on the final lap. Not going into the final lap at so Clearways. Can anyone stop the two front row men, Harry Smith and Jonathan Moore? We used to get lots of Jonathan's friends, I remember commenting in uh, our stream. Greg Wilkes says good luck Harve, I presume that means Harvey Kersley. Daniel Erlester says Luca Maserati, great name. Yeah, that's a, that's a proper racing driver name, isn't it? Well, most of his family have been racing drivers, mainly in Porsches. Lee Fletcher cheering on Johnny Moore. Smith comes from uh, Maidenhead in Berkshire. Jonathan Moore from Leeds. Darren Ambrose says good luck, Kieran Roberts. They do look small compared to the trucks, don't they? Coming up so so soon after the big rigs, these little saxos. John Foote, hello to you, cheering on Sherry Ann Powell. One of uh, a couple of young ladies on this grid. Our next uh, live stream coming up on the 13th and 14th of April. That's from Snetterton. Hope you can uh, tune in for that one. There's somebody who's just asking on our comments thread, but uh, we're almost ready now for the start of our next race. Here we go then. The revs are up and Junior Saloon Cars race number two gets underway. Decent start from the second row from the outside by James Sherrington. Jonathan Moore got away well from the outside, three wide, further back in the pack, the treble two car of Ollie Kerr trying to get through the middle, and he's done so on the inside of Harvey Kersey, that was Cole Lynch on the inside. Looks like they've all just about made it round 
Paddock Bend in one piece. It's uh, Smith and Moore side by side on the run up towards Druids. Third place is James Sherrington. Great getaway from him. And uh, running out wide there, that's the uh, number 88 of Kersley, the Lancaster Bomber. I think we're going to call that car the Lancaster Insurance Cup. It's still raining out there as Harry Smith has got clear. Jonathan Moore's down to third because James Sherrington up into second position. Then it's Kyle Wells, Josh Salvadori, Kieran, Kieran Roberts is uh, next in the order. They all made it round the first half lap or so and it is Harry Smith who holds the lead. Jonathan Moore putting James Sherrington under pressure for second place. Josh Salvadori coming under fire from Kieran Roberts. Red headlamps on Josh Salvadori's car. That reminds me of um, Lewis Saunders' car when he won the title a few years ago. He had the red and black livery like that. Not sure if it's the same car. Side by side there a little bit uh, further back. The number 50 on the inside of Francisco Howitz. Who's that uh, coming up on the outside? Here? That might be Luca Maserati trying to uh, make a move there. That's... Uh, not Maserati, he's a little bit further forward. So your leader is Smith from Moore, Sherrington, Wells, Salvadori, Roberts, Law, Maserati, Kersley, and Howitz is your top ten. It was Harvey Kersley making the move up on the outside. Blaze of headlights as they come up towards Druids for the second time. Salvadori hanging on around the outside of Kieran Roberts. The red machine moves ahead of the green car. In behind Kyle Wells up into P5. So Harry Smith leads. Jonathan Moore running wide there over the kerbs, but holds second place. See the uh, tyre tracks there as they uh, frantically try not to slip wide through the left-hander. And the leader out of shape there. Harry Smith just about holding it together. A lot of spray in there making visibility an issue as well. Jude Cooper being chased now by... Um, I think that's Ollie Kerr. What's the back there? Caitlin Scharfegger being uh, challenged by the number 90. That's... Um, Jake Renshaw. Jonathan Moore is now back up into second place ahead of James Sherrington. Behind them, Kyle Wells, then Salvadori. I think we've got a car pulling into the pits. It's Francesco Howitz, number 50, has gone into the pits, unfortunately, so problems for him. As the leaders head up towards Druids, Harry Smith is pulling away. Jonathan Moore can seem understeering a bit there as they head into the right handed hairpin. Kieran Roberts under fire from Oliver Law in the number 77. Surprisingly, Harry Smith's done the fastest lap of the race, 107.976. Through Graham Hill Bend, kicking up the water from the puddles. Oliver Law chasing Kieran Roberts. That's the battle for P6. Just keeping it as steady as they can, keeping it sensible. No need to take unnecessary risks in this one. There's Luca Maserati chasing... Oliver Law runs a bit wide there through clearways in eighth place, chased by number four of Jude Cooper in the White Cup. It's a line astern. Battle for second place. There's another car in the pits there. Oh, it's Cole Lynch, 353, unfortunately, has pulled in. Whether those two had some contact, I don't know. The lead gap is up to four and a half seconds. Smith's last lap at 106.64 compared to Moore, who did a 108.25. So it's getting on towards two seconds quicker on that last lap, Harry Smith. Sherrington in third place. Then it's Kyle Wells in fourth in the 448. Salvadori is fifth in the red headlamped car. And Kieran Roberts, Oliver Law, Luca Maserati, leading the top ten, Jude Cooper and Harvey Kersley. And Cooper straight into the left at Surtees, the right at McLaren, into the longer right at Clearways. No change in position at the moment. It is good, sensible, level-headed racing. Driving to the conditions, these young racers. Don't forget, there's some youngers only 13 or 14 in this series. And uh, oh, a bit of uh, push and shove there. James Sherrington tried a gap on the inside. Bounced off Jonathan Moore. And that's allowed Kyle Wells down the outside. Well, he tried to gain a place, James Sherrington. But he's lost one because Wells got the momentum to get down the outside. And he's up to third. Now having a go at Jonathan Moore for second place. Kyle Wells making up for lost time and lost points after retiring from race one. He's up on the back of Jonathan Moore there, trying to take second place away. Side by side for fourth between Sherrington and Salvadori. Then it's Kieran Roberts, Oliver Law, Luca Maserati, Jude Cooper hanging on behind them. Salvadori going to have a look down the inside here into the left-hander. No, he's not. 
Kieran Roberts fighting back after that two-place grid penalty. But Harry Smith is still lapping over one and a half seconds quicker than uh, Jonathan Moore and the rest of his pursuers. He's just in a 106.615 and he's over six seconds up in the lead. There he goes, just caught a glimpse of him in the background. Moore's gone wide, coming out of uh, somebody else going wide there as well at Clearways. That was Maserati, I think. Now we could see a change for second place here. Carl Wells has got the run on the inside as they go towards Paddock Hill Bend. Now they've got a, li a little more used to the conditions. They can start racing a little closer. Wells up the inside, takes Moore for second place. He's up to second. Good driving by Kyle Wells. He's our leading rookie in this race. You can see he's got the novice cross on the back of his car. Jonathan Moore, one of the more experienced racers on this grid, was third in the championship last year. Will not give up easily, though. He'll fight back. Fourth is Sherrington, then Salvadorian Roberts. Oliver Law behind him in the 77 car. Down towards Graham Hill Bend once again. Jonathan Moore soaring at the wheel almost there to try and get the car round. Doesn't seem to be as handli handling quite as well as the cars around him. Kieran Roberts now getting sideways well he's so slippy out there but Kyle Wells driving superbly here in the Vinna Sport car what's the gap going to be this time through it was 8.2 seconds last time over the line it's up to 9.7 seconds yeah he's pulling away by a second and a half a lap at this rate so Harry Smith we're only just coming up to half distance and uh, already Harry Smith looking good as uh, Kyle Wells makes a mistake there got sideways coming off Paddock Bend and does all his good work he's lost three places he could lose more because through goes Moore for second Sherrington to third Salvadori to fourth Carl Wells could lose fifth as well because Kieran Roberts is there on the inside poor old Carl Wells he's just not got the luck going for him today and he's a new driver he's learning a bit of contact there between Salvadori and Roberts ahead of him Jonathan Moore back into second place. Roberts forces his way through on the inside at Surtees. He's up to fourth ahead of Salvadori. Again, Moore runs wide around Clearways. It's going to allow Sherrington to attack. Harry Smith's probably wondering where everyone else is. Lee was 9.74 seconds last time over the line. What is it this time? 10.7 seconds now. He's continuing to drive off into the distance. Biggest winning margin we've had so far this weekend. Uh, Carl Wells has lost it. Spins coming out. Look out. Bang. Oh, dear. Big shunt there. Jude Cooper straight into the back. There was, no, there was nothing he could do there. And that's going to be a race stoppage, certainly. Big shunt there on the run up into uh, Druids. Jude Cooper straight into the back of Kyle Wells, who had spun. That's going to be a red flag straight away. Let's hope both of those uh, young racers are OK. That was a big impact there. We're just over halfway through. Six minutes, 16 on the clock. The red flag outs. So the race has been stopped. Kyle Wells, I think he just got a wheel onto the kerb. Coming out of Paddock Hill Bend and spun. We saw him get sideways there the previous lap. And uh, unfortunately, Jude Cooper had nowhere to go. Straight into the back of the uh, 448. Race stopped immediately. Let's hope uh, both of those drivers are OK. Officials will check on the drivers. We'll um, wait to hear news from the scene. Wait to see if the race is going to be uh, restarted as well. But uh, obviously, our concern at the moment is with those involved in the incidents. 
That is such a shame for Kyle Wells because he ran as high as second at one point, but uh, Spurnan was uh, collected by Jude Cooper in the number four. Kyle Wells from Surrey, Jude Cooper from Wyndham in Norfolk. Uh, medics heading out onto track just as a precaution to check on the drivers. So there'll be uh, a pause here while the uh, officials deal with this incident on Halewood Hill. So quite a nasty incident there on the run uh, out of Paddock Hill Bend and um, just a pause in proceedings while we uh, deal with the incident. It's come up on the TSL timing screen, the session will not be restarted. So that's uh, race abandoned and provisionally the results will be declared as a win for Harry Smith. I think it will be John O'Moore in second and um, James Sherrington in third. That's only provisional at the moment. But uh, we've been told the race will not be restarted. We'll uh, bring you news on the drivers, Carl Wells and Jude Cooper, uh, as soon as we can. Under the red flag here at um, Brands Hatch on this Easter Monday. The uh, second race for the Junior Saloon Car Championship stopped after an incident on the exit of Paddock Hill Bend involving number 448 uh, Kyle Wells and number 4 Jude Cooper. The officials checking on the drivers and uh, clearing up debris at the scene at the moment. We'll uh, give you an update on the uh, drivers as soon as we have one. It's uh, obviously every precaution being taken to make sure that they are in the safest hands possible. Uh, thanks to all our marshals, medical staff and everyone else here for their services. We couldn't go racing without them. And we'll give you an update as soon as we can and uh, hopefully be back underway in racing. The Junior Saloon car race will not be restarted. So provisionally that will be a win uh, awarded to Harry Smith. Two wins for him this weekend. Next up on track schedule to be the uh, Sim Motorsports Caterham Graduates uh, Sim Sigma 150. But, uh, obviously at the moment um, just uh, dealing with the incidents on the exit off Paddock Hill Bend. And we'll be back underway as soon as we can.
Well, thanks for your patience, uh, everyone. Just uh, during this enforced pause in the action, following incidents coming out of uh, Paddock Hill Bend in our second junior saloon car championship uh, race of the day. The officials just dealing with the incidents at the moment. We're back underway and racing as soon as we can and get uh, some news on our drivers. They'll be uh, sure just being checked over by the medics at the moment, just as a precaution. Following that incident involving Kyle Wells and Jude Cooper. Next out on track, it's the Caterhams. Then we've got Mini, the BMW Minis, the trucks, track action and pickup trucks. As soon as we have uh, any news on that incident, we will bring it to you straight away. But as the race, at all, as the race had not hit 75% completion, there may be a restart for our junior saloon cars, but that is unconfirmed at the moment. Well, it may be later in the programme. We will wait and see. I believe the cars have gone back to the paddock, so we believe that race can be restarted as we had not hit... Um, 75% distance, so there might well be more junior saloon car action later. see that um, the scene of the incident being cleared up there. I can tell you that uh, both drivers have been taken to the medical centre for a checkup. We'll bring you news uh, as and when we get it. That's the uh, cars being cleared away there and the track being cleared up. Thank you again to our marshalling team. We'll wait to see whether we get a restart and see in the background at Graham Hill. Ben there, one of the cars being taken away. There's Jude Cooper's car on the back of the flatbed. As we say, both drivers have been uh, taken to the medical centre for a checkup. And we'll be uh, back underway just as soon as we can. You can see just how tricky the conditions are from our camera on top of the. Uh, Hospitality Suites on the Brabham Strait. Commentary Tower just opposite, that's where Brian Jones, the uh, legendary voice of Brands Hatch, plied his trade for over 50 years. Sadly passed away a couple of uh, years back, that was at the beginning of 2021, we lost Sir Brian of Jones, one of the great characters in, uh, well, all of motorsport, not just in motorsport commentary. And he's still greatly missed by everyone. It was an honour for me to call his memorial race in Formula Ford here at the end of 2021. And the last of the wreckage being cleared away by trackside recovery. Jude Cooper's car being stretched away. As we say, the drivers have been taken to the medical centre for a checkup. And we're back underway just as uh, soon as we can. Next up, it is the Caterhams. It's the Sigma 150s from the uh, Caterham Graduates Racing Club, sponsored by Sim Motorsports. Awaiting news on what will happen with the junior saloon cars. I don't think a result can be declared unless they've reached 75% distance. There might be a restart. We'll wait and see.
Earlier on for the Caterhams, of course, we saw a fantastic uh, three-way scrap between Jamie Elwood, Harry Cook and Harry Senior, finishing in that order. We'll see them battling it out again, I'm sure, in this next 20-minute race. That'll be lined up as soon as uh, the circuit is clear. Then it's the Mini Challenge Club Sport with Airtech Motorsports. Final truck race of the day, and the track action saloons back out, and then the pickup trucks will uh, conclude the day's action. It's the pickup trucks grid for their last race, based on the aggregate of the two races we've already had, but with the top six reversed. Makes things a little bit more interesting. So while we await the uh, Sigma 150s to head out onto track shortly, we caught up with some of the drivers a little earlier on. Oh yeah, what a day we've been having today. Beautiful sunshine this morning, and now even the thunder and lightning has started to hit here at Brands Hatch. Just in time for the K2 Graduates Racing Club Sigma 150. So you may remember actually at the end of race one, we didn't get a chance to speak to the guys. We went straight through. We thought we were going to go down to the podium, but they, uh, some of them came up here. The rest went straight through. Uh, we get a chat to Harry Senior now. We, we spoke to him before race one, started in sixth, actually came through in third. Thanks for the brawly there, Harry. Uh, a good result in race one wasn't it despite the starting position you're a little bit further up you can uh, get the p1 this time uh well if there's a chance of getting a p1 it would be because of the rain not the starting position yeah uh last race had a lucky i'd say start um got quite fortunate at turn two with uh, some cars locking up on the greasy surface pushing others wide um and then was able to hold first place for 10 or so minutes i'd say uh before dropping behind uh, elwood and harry uh, and then when you're in third, it's very hard to yeah. get ahead of anyone because the front two are kind of working together. Well, look, best of luck for race two and uh, enjoy this brolly. It's a cracking brolly, actually, isn't it? Look at that. Uh, right, yeah, just a quick reminder, of course, so Jamie Elwood took the win, Harry Cook in second, uh, Harry Senior. Let's say uh, Harry Kramer here. Oh, we've got all the Harrys down here. We catch up with Jamie in a second as well. Uh, Harry, this, these conditions are terrible, aren't they? But do you actually quite like it out there? It's a bit of a, they always say great. And, bit of rain is the great leveller isn't it absolutely yeah i love it i think i think rain's good fun and we're um we're quite down on power this weekend so it's the best thing i could have hoped for really <laughs> oh so we're gonna see fireworks from you in a good way well i hope so i'll do my best <laughs> thanks very much mate thank you uh, right let's grab uh, jamie here as well your race one winner can he repeat it let's uh, have a quick chat jamie i'm really sorry we didn't get a chance to congratulate you after race one but congratulations more of the same in race two Oh, let's hope so. Totally different conditions, but uh, we're, all, we're all doing the same on the same track. So let's see if it, uh, yeah, see if we can replicate that. Do you mind the rain? You, you're right with it. I like the rain. You like yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Apart from man. getting wet. Well, well you've got a brolly, you're alright, yeah, I'm getting soaked. Alright, so there we go, time for the Sigma 150s to get underway. The weather is really taking a turn for the worst. This should be absolutely spectacular. Dave, over to you. Atrums on their way to the grid then. Let's have a look at the grid for race two for the Sigma 150s. It's uh, Harry Cook and Jamie Elwood on the front row of the grid. This grid based on the second fastest time for each car in the qualifying session yesterday. Second row, Harry Kramer and Rob Warner. Third row, Harry Senior and Thomas Horton. Matt Willoughby and Andrew Whitten on uh, row four. I believe Matt Willoughby is the chairman of the uh, Caterham Graduates Racing Club. Fifth row is Peter Hughes, number 16. Jonathan Ems in 83. Jonathan failed to finish the first race, pulled into the pits a couple of laps from home. Row six, we have Bren Maud and Charles Elliott. Barry White and Amanda Anderson on the seventh row. Then Martin Gleitch, another non-finisher earlier on. Tom Eustace on row eight. Dan Hamilton and Ollie Handley on row nine. Kim Raymond and Max Haynes on the tenth row. Paul Vokes, who's uh, competing in all four catering races this weekend and Rob Appleton completing the grid. Two green flag laps then because these cars haven't run in the wet yet this weekend. This as we saw for the junior saloons. We'll bring you uh, any news we get on uh, the drivers involved in the incidents when we have it. A 
Harvey Hollins says it are going straight. Harry's looking like a good one for this one. Yeah, three Harrys on the front three rows of the grid. Cook, Kramer and Senior. It's Harry Cook, the pole sitter in the black and gold car. Harry Kramer in red. Harry Senior, the reigning champion in the black car with the red roll cage. This is certainly going to be slip and slide. Jamie Elwood, the white and black car, the man from Leicester, looking for his second win. Rob Warner in blue and orange, easy to pick out against the others. Watch for Thomas Horton as well. A few wins in the Sigmax category last year. Up to the grid they come. It's going to be a 20-minute race. The Sim Motorsports Caterham Graduates Racing Club at Sigma 150 category, 150 brake horsepower Ford engines. And the classic Caterham 7 design. Matt Willoughby, the red and white car, alongside Andrew Whitten. That's the red car with the green cage. Peter Hughes' car, blue with uh, red wheels. And then Jonathan Ems, the uh, red car with the black roll cage. Hoping to make up for a retirement earlier on. Last couple of cars into line at the back. Green flag waves at the back of the grid. So there might be one or two cars missing. Max Haynes, I don't think, is there. But uh, all the front runners on the grid are, and we get underway. Decent start by Harry Kramer from the second row of the grid. Tom Horton trying to move up on the outside. The uh, pole sitter, Harry Cook, didn't get the best getaway, and he's down to fourth. It's Jamie Elwood who's got the lead. Rob Warner up into second place as they plunge through Paddock, through the water splash, and then up Halewood Rise into Druids. It's Elwood who leads. Warner and Horton side by side for second. Harry Senior side by side with Harry Cook. And, well, Kramer may have made a decent start, but he's down to sixth. He seems a little bit down on power today. They make their way through Druid Terpin for the first time. Tom Horton side by side almost there with uh, Harry Cook who's trying to get around the outside. Are they all going to make it around Graham Hill Bend? A bit of a slow start for uh, Matt Willoughby, the 82. He's dropped back, he's on the kerb, nearly onto the grass there. Did well to save that one, a bit of aquaplaning. Through the spray they go. Oh, the lead has gone off. Jamie Elwood's gone straight on at Surtees. Rob Warner will take the lead and Elwood will rejoin about fifth position. Now they're, they're all going wide. They've hit the water at uh, Clearways. It's not very clear ways, is it, in these conditions? Well, Rob Warner's held his lead and will complete the first lap in front. Now, who's come through into second? It's Harry Senior in second place. Cook is third. Horton fourth. And straight up the inside is Harry Senior as the sun starts to come out here at Brands Hatch, by the look of it. This country's weather is just ridiculous sometimes. One car coming into the pits by the sound of it, or was that the uh, that was one of the recovery vehicles, I think. But so the race continues on. No, we have got a car into the pits. It's uh, number 84 of Dan Hamilton has pulled in. They're sliding about all over the place. Uh, Rob Warner went wide coming out of um, Paddock. He's down from first to fourth. It's uh, Harry Senior who has now taken the lead from Cook Horton. Warner down to fourth. Then El Elwood is fifth. Uh, Jonathan Ems, I think, beyond that in sixth position. There's the 68 of Tom Eustace, the black car with the white cage. He's going well. And the yeah, it's really wet there. You can see Harry Senior nearly did the same as um, Jamie Elwood did a lap ago. So easy to get out wide and slide onto the grass there. They've all just about made it round, though, I think. It's Harry Senior from Cook out in front. There's no grip at all coming through clearways. Thomas Horton is third, then Elwood. Rob Warner's dropped down from first to fifth place, sixth is Jonathan Ems, then side by side, Andrew Whitten in the uh, red and green car, very intriguing paint job on that machine, battling with Tom Eustace, then Whitten, Kramer and uh, the 144 of Charles Elliott completing the top ten, there's Jonathan Ems, the 83, 121 Harry Kramer runs out wide, 55 there is Bren Maud, that's Kim Raymond up behind him, Caterham veteran, he's going well. They come into Graham Hill Bend once again. Harry Senior leading. 144, that's the uh, Rothmans lookalike of uh, Charles Elliott. And, uh, Harry Cook getting out of shape there. Tom Horton attacks. Cook goes out wide. Horton will go through into second place, or will he? No. Cook gets drive on the outside and the exit of Clearways. It's impossible to know where the best line is through there. Now here comes Jamie Elwood. He'll try and slipstream Thomas Horton. 
and does so up the inside into Paddock Hill Bend into P3. Alpha 7 Motorsports uh, running mates. And team orders there, clearly. Well, Harry Senior leading by two and a half seconds. He's just done a lap of 1 minute 3.28. Harry Cook out wide again. Mr. Outside Line in this race so far. It's working for him. He's up there in second. Horton, then Elwood, then a gap back to Rob Warner, who's still fifth. There he is. The battle for sixth being headed. Well, it was being headed by Jonathan Ems, but Tom Eustace trying to go through. He does so. Down Cooper straight. Jonathan Ems drops down to seventh. Then Andrew Witten is eighth. Harry Kramer and Bren Moore round out the top ten. And Tom Eustace has gone straight on at Surtees. Just about saves it. Just avoided the grass there. Jonathan Ems now goes out wide. So many different lines you can take through there. Harry Kramer's made that work on the outside. Andrew Witten's dropped back in the 1 1 2. Next is the 55, which is Bren Moore, then Kim Raymond, the number 12. Side by side, 1 1 2 and 1 2 1. Andrew Witten and Harry Kramer. Tom Horton up the inside. Druids takes second place from Harry Cook. And all the time, Harry Senior is pulling away. Last year's champion, he and uh, Harry Kramer did most of the winning last year. Got a standing water on the inside of Graham Hill been there in an open top car like this you'll get an absolute drenching if you're following too close behind a car through there Jamie Elwood just biding his time perhaps in fourth place taking the wide line again here's our leader Harry Senior you can see the gap he's pulled out spray is lessening so conditions are improving Slowly but surely. There's a black and orange flag going out for car number 16. That is Peter Hughes, who's dropped down to 17th place. I'm not sure why that is. Pick up uh, the 16 car further down if we can and try and show you why he's getting that flag. Yeah, the black and orange flag, the meatball flag, as drivers call it, black with the orange circle. That means a mechanical problem, you need to pit to sort it out. It means he might have uh, bodywork flapping or something like that. We'll try and pick that up if we can. As the race continues on. Tom Horton has now pulled away from the battle between Cook and Elwood for third place. And the fight for fifth is headed by Rob Warner ahead of Tom Eustace attacking there into Surtees. Jonathan Ems is next through. Now there is the number 16, that is Peter Hughes. Let's see if we can see what the uh, problem is. Can't see anything untoward there. I don't know whether he's dropping fluid or there's something else amiss. He hasn't been into the pits yet. He's coming in, so we'll try and uh, see what uh, the crew do. He's been given the black and orange flag. He comes in. There's no uh, wings hanging off the car or anything like that. So I'm not quite sure what the problem is here for uh, number 16 of uh, Peter Hughes, the man from Leicester. I'm looking at the back of the car. Ah, is his rear light not working? In conditions like this, you have to have a rain light on the back. It might have been. I didn't quite see there. Was his rain light not working? Have a look as he goes back out. Yes, you can see it there. I think it was the, the, the rear light wasn't working. Well, he comes back out to lap down on Thomas Horton in second place. Twelve minutes of this race to go for the uh, Caterham Sigma 150s for the Caterham Graduates Racing Club, sponsored by Sim Motorsports. Thomas Horton, in fact, has just done the fastest lap of the race, 102.863. That was a full second quicker than uh, the last lap done by race leader Harry Senior. The gap is 3.2 seconds. Harry Kramer's dropping back. It's not been his day at all. He's dropped behind Bren Moore there. That's out of the top ten now. 
Thomas Horton on average. And the leader nearly goes off into the dirt there. There's a yellow flag out somewhere at Clearways, though. I saw a green flag waving on the exit of Clearways, so maybe somebody's gone off up there. Unless that yellow flag was for the leader running wide. Have we lost somebody up there? Leaders go through. It's Peter Hughes who has been lapped after his visit to the pits. You can see now, there is our leader, Harry Senior, but he's struggling. Thomas Horton seems to be handling the conditions better as things remain slippery. But he's catching the reigning champion, Harry Senior. Bren Maud's going well in the 55. He's just moved up to P8. He's got ahead of Andrew Witten as well as Harry Kramer. There he is, the white and blue car. Witten trying to fight back. It's wide on the exit, though, and here comes Witten back again. Harry Senior leads, but the gap is now down to less than a second. Fielders go through. Oh, Brent Maud, uh, that's uh, the 55 running off course. I'd rather put the uh, commentator's curse on him there, but he's kept it together. Stays ahead of Witten and Kramer. Next target will be Jonathan Ems. So, uh, Brent Maud, you can see that almost like speedway style as he comes out of clearways. The back of the car fighting to try and come round on him. And Kim Raymond's going well. The green number 15 as well, up in 11th place. He's going for the inside on Harry. Harry Kramer is dropping back down the field like a stone. Still only just over halfway through this race. Kramer fighting back on uh, Kim Raymond, but Raymond goes through. Bren Maud slides wide again, and Cr Kim Raymond, Kim Raymond's flying through the field. He gets past Andrew Witten now. He's into the top ten. Now, where did Kim Raymond start on the grid? Let's have a look. He started back on the tenth row. Brilliant run through the field by the 15. Harry Senior has still got the lead, 0.8 of a second in it, and a spin there. That's Jonathan Ems. The 83 goes spinning off. Well, it's not been a good day for him. He dropped out of race one and now spins in race two. I mean, Harry Kramer just cannot get that 1-2-1 car to handle. Lead gap is now 0.74 of a second. Thomas Horton still with the fastest lap of the race in second place as Raymond again attacks Andrew Whitten in the 1-1-2. goes through that's P8 now because uh, Maud has moved up to P7 ahead of them so the order is senior from Horton then it's Cook one and a half seconds ahead of Jamie Elwood then Tom Eustace is up to fifth and running superbly at the moment he's got ahead of Rob Warner and Harry Kramer has had a lose coming out of uh, Druids there Gets going again just in front of Charles Elliott. So he's still in 10th place. He's had a bit of a moment there. I thought he'd spun it. Maybe he did briefly spin. The lead gap is down to half a second now. New fastest lap for Thomas Horton. 102.834. And here he is. He's caught Harry Senior. Senior sliding a bit under braking again for Druids. Here comes Thomas Horton. Former Ford Fiesta racer. The experienced motorsports car. Gaining experience all the time over the last couple of years in case from racing. A very talented young driver. And Harry Senior again goes wide. This could be Horton's opportunity. They both go out wide, almost to the kerb, coming through clearways. Trying to get into the slipstream now, Thomas Hawk. Just over seven minutes left. Try and make his attack on Harry Senior. Harry Cook still uh, rather on his own in third place. It's all about these two for the lead. Across the line they go. Harry Senior seems to have the straight line speed, but Horton stronger in the turns. Seems to be the stronger under braking. See here as they come into Druids. Watch as uh, Harry Senior's car. You, yeah, snap sideways slightly again under braking. This is where Horton's stronger, this uh, second half of the lap. Down the hill, to the left-hander. Can he get the better exits? Not quite. It's 
all your concentration to stop the car from sliding around too much. They're coming up to lap the 166 of Ollie Handley. Are they going to take the wide line again? Certainly are. Both of them run out wide and uh, Horton trying to get into the slipstream again so he can make a move down the straight. But again, Senior gets his foot down and pulls away. They lap Ollie Handley in the 166, the uh, run from Essex. Over the line they go. Half a second in it. Still Harry Cook in third. It's Elwood, Eustace, Warner, Maud, Raymond, Witten and Kramer, your top ten. Through Druids they go. Uh, the number one car looking a little bit more stable that time. Horton. Now he gets the better exit from Graham Hill Ben this time. He could be in position to make a move through Surtees, depending on which lines they decide to take. You can see Senior was defending there. He was tighter that time through. They both go out wide again, looking for the drier line, I think, through clearways, and then try and launch it down the straight. Senior does just that. He's pulled away. Well, there's a spun car there, so there would have been uh, yellow flags out at clearways, so no passing, I think that might be Jonathan Ems again, it was an orange car, I can tell you that, that had spun, just before the pit lane entrance. Oh no, it's the 64, it's Amanda Anderson, it's not been a happy weekend for her, saw her get a race win last year, but she's been well outside the top 10 today. Now Horton closes up again, this is where he's stronger. Through the turns, the sharper turns. Now to Graham Hill. Desperately trying to get the toe off Harry Senior. Still Cook third, then Elwood. It's Tom Eustace holding off Rob Warner for fifth place. Peter Hughes in the background has been lapped after he went into the pits. Here comes Warner. Be on the outside for Graham Hill, Ben. Now the leaders. Coming up to lap, the um, number nine car of Martin Glitch, the Braun GP look-alike. Leader goes to the outside. Gap still only half a second, but um, Horton loses a little bit of time there on the outside, I think. Into lap 16, less than four minutes to go. Again, sideways on the entry there to uh, the right-hander at Druids, Tom, uh, Harry Senior. Man from Ascot in Berkshire, more famous for another type of racing, of course. Martin Gleitch in behind them, the number nine from Guildford in Surrey. He failed to finish race one, went off on the first lap at Druids. We're just happy to get uh, a full race distance in, I think. He's in 15th place. There's Harry Cook on his own in third. Further back, the white car is Jamie Elwood. Here's a battle for seventh place. That's uh, Bren Maud. 1-1-2, one, one, which is Andrew Witten. Behind them, Kim Raymond. His rise up the order seems to have stabilised. Gaining ten places in weather like this is uh, pretty impressive, you have to say. couple of cars that didn't start this race, so we don't have Max Haynes. I don't think Paul Vokes took the start, possibly. Oh, let's have a look down the timing screen. No, he's not out there. There's Harry Kramer. A disappointing day for him, and we've got a spin there, and another car going off. Uh, the spinning car is Charles Elliott. Oh, Matt Willoughby. He's not going off. He's pulling into the paddock, I think. Where's he going? He's taking a shortcut. Yes, he's going into the pits there, Matt Willoughby, so he's got a problem. Two minutes of the race to go, and the lead gap has increased because uh, Harry Senior did a new fastest lap of 102.577 last time through, a second quicker than Thomas Horton. So it looks like it's fairly safe now for Harry Senior. The reigning champion will pick up uh, provisionally his first win of the season. Just a couple of laps to go. the leaders through Druids. I think it'll 
will be one lap to go this time. Thomas Eustace driving well, the number 68. Comes from Ipswich in Suffolk. And there is uh, Amanda Anderson. She's a lap down, I think, following that spin earlier on. She'll be frustrated with this weekend. And Raymond. Let's see Kim Raymond on for a top 10. New personal best for Thomas Horton, 102.8. So he's still pushing on to try and catch Harry Senior. There's Charles Elliott. Quick spin earlier on at 30s, but he's still going behind Kit, behind uh, Harry Kramer. Behind them is Jonathan Ems, who spun earlier on. And the conditions catching out uh, plenty of drivers here. It's going to be chequered flag at this time for race leader Harry Senior. There he is, coming out of the murk on Cooper Straits. There's Horton in second place. He's pushed hard, but the driving instructor just couldn't quite pass Harry Senior. Slides his way out of Clark Curve. He's already waving as he comes up to the line. Checkered flag is out and Harry Senior takes the win. Thomas Horton in second, 1.3 seconds the gap between them. Good race between those two. Further back in the order it will be Harry Cook to take third place. Just waiting for him to cross the line. The first two a long way clear. There is Cook over in third place. Jamie Elwood will be coming in to take fourth. Tom Eustace will complete the top five. But well done, Harry Senior. Taking a win on opening day at Brands Hatch for the Caterham Graduates Racing Club, just as he did last year. There's Eustace in the black and white car over the line. 58 of Rob Warner, sixth. And the rest of the field well behind. It'll be Bren Maud in seventh. Andrew Witten will take 8th place, and well done Kim Raymond, 10 places gained, P19 up to P9. 10th place it should be Harry Kramer, yes there he is, very quiet day for Harry. Charles Elliott 11th, and Jonathan Ems the last man on the lead lap. Just a couple of retirements there, Matt Willoughby and Dan Hamilton retired into the pits. That concludes the Caterham action this weekend then. And well done to the Caterham Graduates Racing Club. I'm sure that will have hugely impressed their new sponsor, Sim Motorsports. It's a win for Harry Senior, 1.3 seconds ahead of Thomas Horton. And Harry Cook completes the podium. Jamie Elwood in fourth, and Tom Eustace, Rob Warner, Bren Maud, Andrew Witten. Good ride by Kim Raymond, and Harry Kramer completes the top ten. Charles Elliott and Jonathan Ems, the last men on the lead lap. Then Barry White in 13th place, Martin Gleach was 14th. 15th went to Ollie Handley, and then Amanda Anderson, Peter Hughes, and Rob Appleton completed the finishes. We lost Matt Willoughby and Dan Hamilton. Let's head down to Ian Waterhouse. He's in Park Fermi. Yes, everybody, come on. It's absolutely hammering it down again, but uh, that doesn't bother Harry Senior. It's the first win of the season for him for the defending champion. It was, yeah. Harry, that's a bit more like it, isn't it? Yeah, I like it wet. Um, it was very wet, but yeah, much, much better. Um, yeah, Tom kept me honest the whole race. I had a bit of a moment at um, Clearways at one point, which I was thankfully able to recover from without losing too much time. Um, but yeah, he, Tom definitely kept the pressure on, which is new for me in wet racing. Normally I can't see anything behind me because of all the spray, but he was he was there the whole time. The uh, title defence is on, right? I, I mean, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Thanks, Harry, top man. Um, so let's grab uh, Thomas. I did promise I'd come talk to you, Thomas, and finish in second place. <laughs> hey, fantastic stuff. How was it? 
Oh, it was insane. I mean, I got a bit mucky after Jamie decided he wanted a trip to the dirt on lap one. But uh, besides that, I'm, I'm uh, pretty decent with it. It was a bit of a scary moment, actually, him coming back on a track, wasn't it? I was, uh, well, I was, I was completely blind for a good couple seconds with all the brown in my face, so that wasn't exactly the best idea. But um, but no, the rest of the race managing to get past um, Harry in P3 and then chasing after Harry. When Harry went off onto the gravel, I thought, oh, it's my chance. Yeah. The next five laps or so was so close. And then unfortunately, just a slight interruption with a back marker. I can't blame though, there, there's impossible to see anything out there, but just a mega drive from Harry, like to keep it together after having that off is incredible. And uh, well, hopefully this looks, this is a good prospect for our championship. Top <laughs> man, mega driving uh, from both of you actually, and also mega driving from Harry Cook, uh, a pair of podiums for him this weekend as well. Harry, it's been a pretty decent weekend. Yeah, it's been, it's been quite good, yeah. I've got a, um, a race in a couple of weeks, so I was keeping that in mind out there because it was very, very slippy, but yes. and it's the first time I've actually raced in the way on these tyres as well. Oh, OK. But um, yeah, it was really good racing. These guys did a great job, so yeah, it was good. Fantastic. Thanks, but, uh, so, thanks so much for stopping, actually, everybody as well. It is chucking it down. As you can see, the minis are out on track already, so I'm going to have to hand over to your commentator, Dave Goddard, to take you through the action of that one. Dave, over to you. Yeah, thanks Ian. Third race of the weekend for the Airtech Motorsport Mini Challenge Club Sport. Again, lining up in their three groups. The two open class cars at the front. Ross Alexander on a hat trick on pole position. Can he make it three out of three with Stephen Berry in the coupe alongside him? Then the S class runners. Freddie Hewitt, Hewitt and Charlie Newton Derby on row three. Row two left vacant to split the groups. Then we've got Jamie Ringer and Zach Blackwell, Charlie Heatley and Steve Webb. Next behind them, it's Lee Campbell and Alan Lee in number 14 and 190. Then we've got 41 Ian Trundley and 58 of Matthew Hibbard. 55 in the estate, Gary Papworth. Alongside him is 33 Lawrence Taylor, a Halford sponsored car. 29 Paul Sawyer starts alongside David Maguire, who failed to finish race two. This grid, of course, based on the results of the second race. And Emma Dawson also failed to finish the uh, second race of the weekend after some contact at Druids. Then a gap and we've got the uh, Class C cars, Andy Langley and Daniel Truman, ahead of Neil Clark and Geoffrey Surrey and David Taylor, who uh, ended up in the gravel in uh, that second race, bringing out the safety car, will start from the back of the grid if he's there. Although I wouldn't blame him personally if he'd started to make the long journey back to Scotland already. Wait to see if uh, David is there at the back. Just looking down from our vantage point. I think he is there, actually. Yes, five Class C cars, so yeah, fair play David Taylor, he is out there. This will be a 15 minute race. Now, I suspect that again we'll get uh, two green flag laps. Green flag waves, we shall see. have been very entertaining this weekend so far the minis can anyone stop Ross Alexander will the rain prove a leveler will Stephen Berry be able to beat him this time Alexander in the blue and white Sussex road and race car the mini mafia coupe Stephen Berry the man from Nottingham Of the eyes on the headlights of uh, 58 there, the uh, car of Matthew Hibbard. That's the bad boy tuning run car. There's David Taylor at the back, the blue and red car. Good to see he's got that back out after he's off earlier on. Conditions still very murky, very slippery out there. Jeffrey Surrey, our novice, one place off the back of the grid this time. It's all about learning and gaining experience for him this weekend, the man from Stoke. They do go on to a second green flag lap. 
says on the timing screen and we'll say on the gantry uh, above the start finish line rain lights on so i think that's why we saw one of the caterers get flagged in because his rear light wasn't working visibility is certainly an issue the last thing you want is your windscreen misting over i remember back in the 90s in a btcc race here ricard rydell in the volvo volvo saloon it was 95 he was leading uh, one of the races on the Indy circuit. His windscreen missed it up completely solid, and yet somehow he was still leading the race. But he couldn't really flag it in for it because he wouldn't have seen the flag because he couldn't see anything. He did eventually have to bounce the inevitable and had to make a pit stop. Langley in the uh, number 42 going for a hat trick in Class C. In fact, um, all of our class winners are on a hat trick coming into this race. Emma Dawson a bit out of position out of the back. She'll take a good position. The two S class winners, we've got S56, S53 on the second row there. Freddie Hewitt and Charlie Newton Derby. Look out for Zach Blackwell. I reckon he could be in with a chance here. The dark blue car on the outside of the third row next to Jamie Ringer's orange machine. Look out for Gary Papworth in the estate as well, the Norfolk cars run machine. Teammate of Neil Clark, the uh, two drivers from Kings Lynn. Andy Langley also from Norfolk, from Fakenham, in a Norfolk run car. Looks like everybody is just about in position there. David Taylor pulls up at the back of the grid. Waiting the all clear. Revs begin to rise. The Airtech Motorsports Mini Challenge Club Sports. Third race of the weekend. Will we see any hat tricks? We're about to find out over the next 15 minutes. We're underway. Good start by Stephen Berry in the coupe. He takes the lead off line. Great start by Freddie Hewitt as well. A decent start there. The 44 of Charlie Heatley trying to come through. It's Berry who leads. Hewitt's up into second place. Down to third goes our pole sitter. Ross Alexander was rather caught napping there. And he is in third place. Through the water splash. Alexander runs out wide over the curb. Charlie Newton Derby and Zach Blackwell behind him. Stephen Berry goes out wide. Are they all going to make it round? Druids okay there. Almost tiptoeing their way round. Andy Langley up there with the uh, S-Class runners at the moment. Zach Blackwell having a look down the inside. He's up into fourth place ahead of Charlie Newton Derby. That'll put him into the lead of Class S53. Slip and slide their way round. Stephen Berry leads from Freddie Hewitt in second place. Ross Alexander, Zach Blackwell. You notice a lot of these cars haven't even got headlights, so goodness knows how some of these drivers can see where they're going. Jamie Ringer ahead of Lee Campbell. And completing the first lap, Stephen Berry in the coupe has the lead. Visibility getting worse again out there as the rain continues to hammer down. These drivers putting the hammer down along the Sir Jack Brabham straight. Berry leads from Hewitt, Alexander. Blackwell leads the S53 class. Stephen Berry, obviously with the quickest lap of the race so far on our opening lap, and that's extraordinary little coupe. It's even got active aero, look, you can see the, uh, the rear wing rising there. There can't be many club racing cars that have that, that is something different. Lee Campbell under fire now from uh, the uh, number 58, that's Matthew Hibbard. To look down the outside. Look at the water splash on the inside of Graham Hill Bend there. Now that's getting really that's getting really tricky. Almost feeling their way along Cooper straight into Surtees and uh, McLaren. Hibbert still all over the back of Campbell. Next in the order is Ian Trundley. Stephen Berry still leads the way in the treble six. Two laps completed. Here comes Ross Alexander, recovering from his slightly slow start. Round the outside of Freddie Hewitt, up into second place. Nearly five seconds down on Berry, those just at a 104.803. There goes the coupe. Ross 
It's Alexander making open class cars one and two. And one car coming into the pits. That's the number 86 that's pulled in David Maguire out of the race by the look of things. Charlie Heatley having a good go at uh, Zach Blackwell. This is for the lead in S53, so Charlie Newton Derby's dropped back a bit. Charlie Heatley made uh, a great start to this race. The man from Brentwood in Essex, and he's going to take the lead here, is he? Oh, and uh, Freddie Hewitt's gone off. Charlie Heatley's going off as well. A bit of rally crossing there. And we said earlier there is a class uh, for BMW Minis in rally cross. Not this type, though. They're at Lydon Hill this weekend. The BMW Minis in the uh, Five Nations Rallycross Championship. The class in the BTRDA Clubman's Rallycross as well for them. And there's Charlie Newton Derby. He's about to lose out to Jamie Ringup. The Surrey based driver goes through on the inside. He's second, Jamie Ringer, in the S56 class behind Freddie Hewitt. And that's for the lead of the S53 class just ahead of them. Heatley and Blackwell. Very close between those two. Lee Campbell ahead of Matthew Hibber behind them. It's Trundley. And then the Class C cars are moving it well. Langley and Truman, they're ahead of several of the um, the Class S cars. There's Andy Langley. He's running superbly. He's got ahead of Trundley now. Andy Langley is revelling in these wet conditions. Could have the best overall result for some time for a Class C car. It's all a question of getting that power down, as we said with the trucks earlier, with Divisions 1 and 2. Stephen Berry, just another new fastest lap. He's over five seconds up now. 104.086. Matthew Hibbard made a bit, of a bit of a mistake there coming through the uh, Surtees McLaren section. Look at the rain coming down. It is absolutely hammering down now. You can hardly see the cars as they come along the Brabham Straits. And Charlie, but Charlie Heatley and Zach Blackwell, they've caught Freddie Hewitt. This is for the lead of Class S and for third overall. Well, Charlie Heatley, I think, is coping with these conditions better than anyone else. And he's gone through into third overall and into the lead of the S division. And he also leads the S53 class. Freddie Hewitt still leads Class S56. Second in that class is Jamie Ringer there. He is further back in the orange car. Charlie Heatley is absolutely flying. His last lap was um, a 106.6. A couple of seconds off the open class cars, so he won't catch them overall, but he could be on for a podium here, an S-class win. Look at the way Langley's going. He's caught Lee Campbell now, he's through. Well, I don't know how different the setup is for Andy Langley, but he's got to be one of the quickest cars on track right now, and that's from a Class C car. And he's caught all but, I think, the top four in the S-Class division. What an extraordinary performance by Andy Langley. Where's his nearest class rival? Down in 13th, that's Daniel Truman. How any of these drivers can see where they're going, though, is beyond me. It is getting really treacherous out there now as Ian Trundley makes a move on uh, the 58 of Matthew Hibbard. Lee Campbell ahead of them. Well, Stephen Berry is still leading this, the coupe, with its active aero, but Ross Alexander's just done the fastest lap, 103.992. The track is almost flooded at Graham Hill Bend. 3.2 seconds is now the lead, so Alexander is catching the race leader. Andy Langley's up to 8th overall. Another fastest lap for Alexander. Yeah, they're 12 and a half seconds clear of Charlie Heatley, who's now in P3 and leading the S-Class. S56 is still led by Freddie Hewitt, as Ian Trundley now makes a move on Lee Campbell. This has got to be the wettest conditions that the uh, Mini Challenge Club Sport Division has ever raced in, I think. Here's a replay of our leader nearly losing it. Good save, Stephen Berry. Bit of rally crossing. Back the other way. He still hasn't quite saved it. Now he has. And that's why Alexander's been able to close in.
lead gap is now down to just over a second as a result of that. Sorry, my timing screen is frozen for a second there. There's Gary Papworth. How's the estate doing? He's in P12. Behind Hibbard. So it's now Berry from Alexander. They're 16 seconds clear of Charlie Heatley in third place. Then we've got Freddie Hewitt in fourth. That's David Taylor on the move as well. He's attacking Steve Webb and he's got through. Steve Webb is really struggling in these conditions. The 231 car is uh, down almost to the tail of the field overall. And Stephen Berry under attack now from Ross Alexander. We pick up the leaders. Yep, Alexander coping better as the conditions worsen. He's caught Stephen Berry. And the little coupe under fire. Watch the wing rising as he comes into the straights. There it goes. can barely even see the cars as they come down the straight there, never mind the drivers seeing where they're going. That's Lauren Taylor just being lapped there, I think. Ross Alexander is getting ready to make a move. He wants a hat-trick of wins. Going up the outside as they come into Druids. Has to be very careful on the brakes here. Don't let the back end come round. Berry holds it. Up comes the wing as they go down the hill. That is a nice little feature, that's very different. Sploosh as they come through Graham Hill Bend. And Ross Alexander's got the inside, he got the better exit, he's through, takes the lead. Not even a face full of water from Stephen Perry's car could slow him down there. He's got the lead. Five and a half minutes of this race still to go. We're only at uh, about two thirds distance in this Airtech Motorsport Mini Challenge Club Sport race. In partnership with Ravenol, Garmin, and all their other sponsors to them for their support across the line they go to complete their ninth lap it's Alexander to the lead he's got the fastest lap of the race 1 minute 3.007 coming up to lap Alan Lee who's struggling in the 190 car he's in 15th place Daniel Truman is lapped as well and uh, well Jeffrey Surrey what a weekend to make your racing debut learning to race in the rain. He's just keeping out of harm's way, I think. Stephen Berry carves his way past the back markers. Look at the standing water. That is, that is ridiculous now. Berry a little bit out of shape again as they come through Surtees. Still Charlie Heatley, third overall, but he's over 20 seconds down on these two. He's a second ahead of Zach Blackwell, the number one. And Freddie Hewitt behind them by four seconds now, so he's dropped back into third in the S-Class. Freddie Hewitt still leading Class S56, but he's only just ahead of Jamie Ringer, so there could be a change for the lead in Class S56 in the offing. So a couple of hat-tricks could be ended here. Stephen Berry just lapping Neil Clark there in the 53. Daniel Truman up behind Alan Lee. Truman second in uh, Class C, no, third in Class C, I'm sorry, behind Neil Clark. With a trim hanging loose there, the wheel arch has come loose. Andy Langley still going well in ninth position. And yes, Jamie Ringer, I can tell you, has taken the lead of the uh, S56 class. From Freddie Hewitt. There's Ian Trundley coming under fire from Andy Langley. Langley driving brilliantly in these conditions in the less powerful Class C car. He's got Gary Papworth's estate behind him. The estate does go through, so maybe Langley, his uh, meteoric rise has come to an end. And there's Charlie Newton Darby, number 12. He's down in seventh, third in Class S53, being caught by Trundley as well. New fastest lap for Alexander, out in front, 1 minute 2.961, so into the 102s now. There he goes, splashes through Graham Hill Bend. Just a case of keeping it on the circuit now, I think, and he's got this race in the bag. It's going to be three out of three for Ross Alexander. There is Stephen Berry lapping Matthew Hibbard. Now 
now the sun starts to come out again. You wouldn't believe it, would you? What next? Snow? Trundley catching Charlie Newton Derby. He's struggled more than most in these conditions. He's lost his hat-trick of class wins, certainly. This 53 class is going to go to Charlie Heatley. Steve Webb. He's a lap down. Gary Papworth going through. Yeah, Steve Webb down in 20th place. It's going to be a very bright rainbow somewhere in a moment, I think. There's the leader. A couple of laps to go now. Maybe last lap this time through for Ross Alexander. Blue flags waving to the back markers. It's certainly Ross Alexander who's going to find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It's going to be three wins out of three. Well, somebody out uh, nearly onto the grass there. That was uh, Steve Webb, I think, uh, one of the back markers. No, it was Andy Langley, sorry, moving out of the way of Stephen Berry. That's going to be another runners-up placing for the coupe. Jamie Ringer's got ahead of Zach Blackwell. Now, could he get himself onto the overall podium here, the 959? Could he catch Charlie Heatley? I don't think so, but he'll try. They're way behind the two open-class cars. Should be check and flag this time, though, for Ross Alexander. He's in behind this lot somewhere. There he is. You go either side of Geoffrey Surrey. Charlie Newton Derby is being lapped as well. That's uh, a rare sight. We don't very often see him a lap down. And Ross Alexander, well, he had to fight against Stephen Berry in this third race of the weekend, but in atrocious conditions. Ross Alexander comes in to score the hat-trick. Three out of three for the man from Birmingham. Stephen Berry comes over in second, and they're way ahead of everybody else. It should be Charlie Heatley who wins the S-Class split in his S53 spec car. There's only going to be uh, seven cars on the lead lap. There's Heatley just ahead of uh, Jamie Ringer, who nearly caught him. Ringer wins the S56 class. It's Blackwell, Freddie Hewitts, Trundley will be seventh. Charlie Newton Derby a lap down in eighth place. We'll confirm the rest of the results in a moment. And uh, confirm the class winners. Andy Langley, well done to the number 42. Wins class C and gets a top ten overall. There's uh, Ian Trundley across the line. They're all in now, I think. Last across the line will be Emma Dawson. Making the most of dreadful conditions during that race, the uh, Airtech Motorsports Mini Challenge Club Sport Division. I'll give you the provisional results in just a moment. There's the rainbow. We said there'd be one. And the pot of gold does go to Ross Alexander. Three wins out of three. One and a half seconds clear of Stephen Berry. Way back over 30 seconds down the road, Charlie Heatley on the overall podium wins Class S53. Jamie Ringer behind him wins Class S56. Then Zach Blackwell, Freddie Hewitt dropping to sixth. Then Ian Trundley, Charlie Newton Derby a lap down. Gary Papworth ninth. And Andy Langley wins a hat trick in um, Class C and gets an overall top ten. Matthew Hibbert 11th ahead of Lee Campbell, Neil Clark. And it was Alan Lee behind them. Daniel Truman third in Class C. Then Lauren Taylor, Paul Sawyer, David Taylor. And uh, Emma Dawson with Steve Webb and uh, our novice Jeffrey Surrey completing the finishers. Just one at retirement in that race. David Maguire pulled into the pits after a couple of laps. Let's head down to Ian Waterhouse, who has hopefully kept dry enough during that race to be able to get us some interviews in Park Fermi. And uh, I can tell you the winner, just look on the left of your screen there, is being pushed into uh, Park Fermi by the marshals. Find out why that is in a moment. I wonder if he's run out of fuel. We'll find out in a moment with Ian. 
Yeah, welcome down everybody into the pit lane. Uh, no official park firm may actually for the Mini Challenge Club Sport just because they've got a the truck's about to go out. Zach's here again, they've parked right next to us. Didn't win the race, but we'll talk to him anyway. Uh, Zach, uh, how was that? That one, that was a bit tricky, yeah, wasn't it? It was very tricky, and I don't know if your camera can see, but that's the that's the little hole I could see out of. Right, I don't know if we can pull this in, but there's a hole that big and that's all Zach can see uh, just watch you back there as well uh, John because we've got a car coming up uh, well done Zach great weekend Good. thanks for talking to us mate really appreciate it uh, it's a hat trick of wins for Ross Alexander in the mini chat just have a look at the rainbow as well I don't know if we can get that on screen look at that absolutely beautiful behind where we are stood right now is blue skies as well we've had torrential rain here but we're going to have blue skies hopefully until the end of the day there's still more racing action to come though don't forget the trucks are up next for their final race of the week and then we have race two for track action we round out the action with the pickup truck championship as well that is it though for the mini challenge club so congratulations to ross alexander it's a hat trick of wins for him a perfect start to the season now though it's time for the final british truck racing championship race of the weekend i'm going to hand you back to dave who will probably lead in with our good friend pointy who knows i'll see you soon well thanks ian and uh, i'm not sure why uh Ross Alexander was being pushed in by the marshals there into the pit lane. Perhaps he'd run out of fuel, we don't know. But so uh, we mentioned about windscreen steaming up. You saw on Zach's car there, Zach Blackwell, that uh, he could hardly see where he was going. Next up it is, though, our final truck race of the day. Race number five will be on the grid fairly shortly. It is uh, the result based on the uh, race, we, the grid based on the results we had this morning. I should say. And the top eight reverse once again. And guess who's on pole? Number 22, Paul Rivette. Yep, he's going to be going for his second outright win of the weekend. He'll have uh, provisionally Tom O'Rourke alongside him. Ryan Smith has this time got to come through from seventh on the grid because uh, this morning he didn't quite uh, manage to catch Stephen Powell to take the victory. The local man of superb defensive job in race three. Three races to go, got the trucks, the track action, uh, saloon cars, and then the pickups to round out the day. I can tell you that um, Ryan Hadfield has been given a yellow card by the uh, pickup officials for uh, an incident with Michael Smith in race two. We've just had that come through on the notice board online. So more on the pickups later on. Our final truck race of the weekend coming up. Fairly shortly, the circuit is just being made ready. See the course car coming round. There's a lot of standing water out there, despite the fact that the rain has stopped again. John Bowler scheduled to start on row three, but uh, I don't think we'll see his truck out there after it uh, went off and was collected by... Um, Michael Oliver earlier on. Michael's truck able to drive away, so hopefully they've been able to repair it. It looks as though the rear axle was bent on uh, John Bowler's truck, so I would imagine he will sit this one out. Interesting to see a couple of fire engines on display there on the left of your picture. I thought we might be needing them at some point to pump the water off the uh, circuit here at Brands Hatch. That uh, happened uh, when I was in the Czech Republic for the uh, World Superbike Championship last year. We had a, an absolute deluge before one of the Supersport 300 races and the uh, fire brigade did have to be called in to uh, pump water off the home straight. The race was delayed by about an hour. But it was an absolute cracker when it went ahead. And um, hopefully this race will be as well for our truck racers. Can Ryan Smith come through for victory from seventh on the grid? Waiting to... Um, release the trucks out onto the grid again fair play to all our marshals and other officials braving the rain out there and our camera operators as well keeping themselves dry as best they can we've got one camera on top of the hospitality building on the right of your screen there as well i would not want to be up there in rain like we've had today not had um, any news yet on the two um, drivers from the junior saloon car race we had earlier on in the incidents on the oh there's our camera 
looks like our camera operator's gone for some shelter. <laughs> That's what that camera's currently getting for us. Could have gone to warm up a little. And as we say, no news yet on Kyle Wells and Jude Cooper from the Junior Saloon race. Uh, but it looks like, uh, thankfully, no serious injury. They were taken to the medical centre for a check over. Thanks again for all your kind comments. And for getting involved. All the likes on the stream. We've got over 2,000 of you watching at the moment. Our next stream coming up in a couple of uh, weekends' time from Snetterton. I believe it's going to be Adam Weller taking you uh, through that one while I'm busy with two wheel commitments. I'll be back uh, later in the season, don't you worry. I can hear truck engines, yes, here they come. Out to the grid. Paul Rivett will be on pole, Tom O'Rourke alongside him. Second row, Michael Oliver and uh, David Jenkins. Yes, Michael Oliver is out there, he's repaired. David Jenkins alongside him should be John Bowler and Stuart Oliver on row three. John Bowler is not there, as we expected with that damage from earlier on. Then Ryan Smith and Stephen Powell on row four. Yeah, there's Stephen Powell a little bit further back. Row five, Neil Yates and John Powell. And the sixth row, Simon Cole and David Smith. Yeah, looks like we are just missing John Bowler. Needs to head to um, Trucker Line in London. That was... Uh, the great George Allen's uh, business. Long time British and European truck racer. Truck align uh, crash repairs, realigning the chassis. I think his son still runs that business in London, so the name's still out there. It's George and uh, Les Allen, I believe, were the two brothers who used to compete in the big Volvo Whites alongside uh, Slim Borgen in a similar truck. One of George Allen's trucks. Who was it who took over his Volvo White? Mark Viner. Went on to race that uh, truck in the uh, late 80s. Last Volvo white we saw out was Brian Burt. It's pink and white machine, the man from Bristol. He rolled that truck at Thruxton. Of course, uh, the uh, most successful in a Volvo white, the uh, Swedish slash American collaborated truck, was the late great Slim Borgard. Apologies for the uh, nostalgia trip. You know I can't help it. And as my father worked on most of those trucks back in the day, when he worked for Lucas, fitting and calibrating the uh, speed governors, it was inevitable I'd get hooked on truck racing. Thank you, John. I hope you're watching today. So Paul Rivette will be on the pole then. We've got the GT tyres uh, pace truck out there this time. Paul Rivette, can he take a second overall win? It's the third time he's been on the front row this weekend. Made a poor start this morning and dropped back. Held on in the wet in front, the rain proving a great lever. It's not, I would say, not quite as wet out there for this one. Could we see a first win for Tom O'Rourke's new truck? Had a win at Donington a couple of years ago. grid there is David Jenkins always there or thereabouts this weekend could we see him pick up his first win of the season Michael Oliver they've done well to repair that truck team Oliver racing battered and bruised as he always seems to be at Brands as you said earlier my poor old Michael Oliver always seems to get into scrapes at this circuit our cameraman standing uh, I think in the gap where John Bowler's truck should have been and there's Ryan Smith going from seven 
finishing a lap down earlier on in uh, race four very rare in event indeed seeing Ryan Smith lapped after his off Stephen Powell alongside the winner of race three he won division one in race four as well and the race was stopped early he was ahead of Stuart Oliver on the last completed lap after they both had a few off-road excursions there is flying Ryan just getting strapped in Northside truck and van Daimler Freightliner, the man from Mansfield. Alan Hyde and Matt Suckling in the background on the PA at Brands Hatch this weekend. Sometimes see Matt doing a bit of interviewing work on our live streams. With the grid being cleared ready for our final truck race of the weekend with the conditions and with the reverse grid I've got no idea which way this one's gonna go David Smith at the back of the field in race three where he failed to start so has to start at the tail this time Ryan Smith with a bit of space in front of him with the John Bowler absent so here we go then for the final time this weekend the trucks are off and rolling Paul Rivette make it two overall wins for a Division 2 truck. I'll have to look up the exact date of um, when a Division 2 truck last beat the Division 1s overall. It's a stunning international, the bonneted truck of Tom O'Rourke, the MV Commercials boss on the outside of the front row. Discovered truck racing um, almost by chance. Started off as a sponsor, MV Commercial brought um, a stand to uh, the Convoy weekend at Donington Park. Then became a, a sponsor of a couple of drivers, ended up sponsoring the British Championship for a time, and then Tom decided to have a go at racing for himself. He's had one win in his career, if I remember rightly, that was at Donington Park a few years ago. Hopefully we'll see our other Scotsman, uh, Jock Borthwick, make a comeback later this season as well. Tom O'Rourke stepping sideways there. Don't want to spin it on the uh, rolling lap. Pace truck into. Not into pit lane this time. No, we're going to go round for a second time given the conditions. quickening a little I think one or two drivers are expecting the race to start that time must keep their formation two by two you have to keep the grid slots Ryan Smith has to keep that gap in front of him where John Bowler should have been And Paul Rivet take a second overall win in a run. He's on for a clean sweep of five out of five in Division 2. Two each in Division 1 for Ryan Smith and Stephen Powell. He's been one of the stars of the weekend, Steve Powell, on his local circuit. Certainly be celebrations at the Portobello Inn, the Powell family's pub just down the road from Brands this evening.
Here we go. Then. Ready for a start this time. Eleven trucks out there for 15 minutes of racing. The final race of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship. Can the Division 2 champion Paul Rivette hang on in front from pole position? Can Ryan Smith get back to winning ways? Will it be a third win for Stephen Powell or will we see a new name on top? Here at Brands Hatch. Keep it steady up towards the red light. The pace already quickening towards the back. Still very greasy out there, although the sun is out. Waiting for the red lights to go out. Here we go, the power comes on, we're underway. David Jenkins leaning on Michael Oliver a bit as they uh, head down towards the first corner. Oliver gives him room. Now who's going to get the lead? Looks like Tom O'Rourke is going to make the best start around the outside in the international. He's got the lead as they head out of Paddock for the first time and up Halewood Hill. Paul Rivette in second place, Jenkins is third. Ryan Smith trying to force his way up the inside into Druids, but it's O'Rourke who's got the lead. Side by side for second between Jenkins and Rivette, then Stuart Oliver, Ryan Smith, Michael Oliver. John Powell's got away well. He's running well in the wet. Stephen Powell gets hung out to dry around the outside. He won't be drying in these conditions, though. David Jenkins has come through to second. Side by side for third. Paul Rivette caught up on the curb on the inside there, so Stuart Oliver will go through into P3. Here comes Ryan Smith. He's got a good getaway there. Able to use that little bit of extra space that we uh, pointed out on the inside. David Jenkins, meanwhile, has taken the lead in the 69 truck. The man from Stafford has the advantage ahead of Tom O'Rourke. Paul Rivette dropping back, but he's not scoring uh, points in the same championship as the drivers around him. He needs to stay ahead of John Powell, though. That's the battle in Division 2. So Paul Rivette gets shuffled backwards. They complete the first lap then. David Jenkins leads from O'Rourke in second. Stuart Oliver is third. Ryan Smith in fourth position. Paul Rivette down to fifth overall, but still leads Division 2. Over the line they go. Neil Yates and David Smith towards the back. Simon Cole at the tail of the field. It's David Jenkins looking for his first win of the season. It took him some time to get that first win of the season last year as Stuart Oliver forces his way up the inside for second place at Druids past Tom O'Rourke. Paul River and Ryan Smith in trouble. Smith slowing there. Something There's something wrong with the number one. Now, was there contact or, well, there's a fair bit of steam there, whether that's steam or smoke, but there's something amiss for Ryan Smith. Very slowly down there. Uh, I thought he'd just been pushed out, pushed out wide. The windscreen looks steamed up there as well. Is he struggling to see where he's going? Well, I hope he does get out of the way because um, he can't stop there in the middle of the uh, Cooper straight. Oh, Tom O'Rourke, a bit of power slide there. He's gone. Round goes the 86 just avoids the tyre wall, he's into the gravel, that's his third spin of the weekend unfortunately. Meanwhile there is David Smith, who just got past, uh, I think that's Neil Yates in the 33. Now where is Ryan Smith, has he got the truck out of the way? Meanwhile Jenkins leads from Oliver, Rivette is now third because we've lost O'Rourke, Michael Oliver up the inside past John Powell, then we've got Stephen Powell, a quieter start to the race for him this time. Now, Tom O'Rourke, if he's beached in the gravel, we may see a full course yellow. Saw one yesterday after O'Rourke went off at Paddock. He's been exploring the limits of that truck, uh, really, over the course of this weekend. Ryan Smith, I can tell you, has got uh, into the pits. That's the end of his race. Problem for the number one. Now, has Tom O'Rourke been able to rejoin? We'll see as they come off uh, clearways and down into the uh, pit straights. He was lucky not to uh, clout the tyre barrier there. And uh, the yellow is out, so he's still there. The yellow is out. We have a uh, virtual safety truck, effectively. So the uh, full course yellow is out. There's no safety truck physically out there. It is a virtual safety period. The full course yellow is out. So uh, David Jenkins will slow the field down. And uh, they will uh, try and get Tom O'Rourke out of the gravel saw this in race two yesterday now when the race resumes the officials can add up to three minutes onto the end of the race time it's a bit like in british touring cars when they have a safety car period laps can be added on at the end of the race so we get the full racing distance 
and it's uh, in terms of time up to three minutes can be added on to the race if we have a full course yellow as we saw yesterday ah i've just looked in the background ryan smith is heading back out of the pits so the uh, team have attended to uh, the problem and he's going again here he comes I'm not sure what the problem was. Perhaps Ian or Pointy could find out there. Maybe it was his windscreen. Maybe he just couldn't see where he was going. He's going to catch up to the field. This yellow giving him the chance to catch up. And in fact, the reds are coming out. We have a red flag. Presumably because of the position of Tom O'Rourke's truck. They've had to bring the red flags out. They can't uh, recover it safely under yellow. and the truck's being brought to a stop. As you can't uh, safely get a recovery vehicle across the Brabham Straits and uh, onto the gravel trap to get Tom O'Rourke's truck out from there. So they've had to bring things to a halt. And we'll await news on a restart. Well, there's the reason. It's been a tough weekend for the Scotsman. Just put the power down a little bit too hard there, coming out of... Uh, Clark curve, the back end broke away and round he went, stopped a few inches short of the tyre wall. But, um, it's in a position where it's tricky to get a recovery vehicle on while the trucks are still in motion, so the red flag has had to come out. Here comes the Peterbilt. Stunning looking beast, isn't it, that uh, American truck? I certainly wouldn't get in his way on the M25, that's for sure. Especially with an air horn like that. Oh, we've got the uh, second uh, recovery vehicle in as well, the three-axle DAF from LJ Nationwide as well. And uh, Steve Buers in the pickup truck directing operations. OK, which one of you wants to pluck Tom O'Rourke's truck out of the gravel? At least the tyre wall didn't get damaged. Peterbilt's has driven on, so looks like they're going to use the uh, the DAF. OK, so let's take a look at the recovery operation while we have a moment. Then the, uh, the tow rope has been attached, or the towing strap. And then Jason Farnell, who's at the wheel of the, uh, the LJ Transportation DAF three-axle. 13-litre, 530-horsepower diesel engine in that machine. Lowers the crane. Two 23 ton winches on uh, that daff. Peterbilt turns it round. It'd be great if these two could have a drag race down the straight. This, as I said, that I had flashbacks of the wheelie truck here back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. We all know what we've all seen the clip of what happened then. So the towing strap is attached. A 
hope you're all enjoying the um, action so far. We're currently up to 865 likes on our YouTube stream. Let's see if we can get to 1,000 by the end of the show. Can we get to 1,000 likes, everyone? Who's commented, who's commented, let's have a tug of war between the two recovery trucks? <laughs> no, drag race is what we need. Oh, we've got, the, uh, we've got the sweeper in as well now. Okay, the uh, so the uh, strap in place then, and uh, about to uh, give Tom O'Rourke's uh, international navy star the old heave ho out of the gravel. Goodsy Hero says maybe tractor pulling with the truck as the weight. Uh, Kathleen Lewis says, what happened to Brad Smith? Um, not sure. We haven't heard any news on what uh, his plans are this year. And thank you, everyone. We have already got our 1,000 likes. That was quick. Thank you all. It was very quick indeed. Uh, those of you asking for an update on our junior saloon car drivers, our uh, pit reporter Ian is uh, going to go and ask for any information from the medics and we'll bring you any info when we get it. So the, uh, the 86 truck has been dragged uh, slowly forwards. Last thing we want is it digging deeper down into the gravel. Strap on the back of the big daff there. And when we get once he's out, we should he should be able to drive it away. No damage to uh, the 86. Well, I've just heard from our pit reporter Ian Waterhouse that uh, Jude Cooper and uh, Kyle Wells have been released from the medical centre and uh, appear to be OK, which is great news after that accident earlier on in their second race. So Kyle Wells and uh, Jude Cooper. Thankfully, uh, no injuries there after what was quite a, a nasty accident earlier on. Thank you again to everybody for your likes on the stream. It does help us to spread our content. We've got over 1,100 likes now. Steve B says, can I have a shout out? Enjoying the truck racing while suffering from flu. Get well soon, Steve. And uh, the... Um Time has gone to 10 minutes, so we will have a 10-minute restart once the uh, track is clear. That's confirmed by the timekeepers. Okay, so we are in position now to get the truck out of the gravel. I think what they want is to get the sweeper as close as possible so that um, as little gravel as possible is uh, swept onto the track when uh, Tom O'Rourke's uh, truck is pulled away. Uh, Lee Curry has commented, says, uh, shout out to the track attack boys, should be on the grid myself, but uh, couldn't make it. I'll hopefully see you out later in the season, Lee. 
Kevin asked, why aren't Taylor's transport here this year? That's uh, Mark Taylor. I believe Mark is contesting the European Truck Racing Championship this year. We might see him back for uh, Donington in August. And uh, Jack says, credit to everyone today keeping things running despite the stoppages. Yes, well said indeed. It's been uh, a very well-drilled team. Seems to be... Uh, bit of a struggle getting Tom O'Rourke's truck recovered there. <laughs> right to Michael Timberlake watching from Portugal. Hello to Scott Buckner as well. Should have been racing yesterday. Had some problems in uh, qualifying with his MGZR. Didn't make it out. See you back out soon, Scott. Hello to Ian McCall, Sally Buckhurst, Phil Green, all our other commenters. And thank you for all your likes as well. I think we can hand down to Pointy down in pit lane. See what he's got for us. And I, and I says to him, I don't no matter how much you push it, it's not going to fit. You know, you ever been in that situation? No comment. <laughs> with, with, <laughs> with lubricant or without? Well, I mean, it depends. Some people put their pistons in different ways, don't they? They do, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, here we are down on the pit lane with Andrew Fulcher, team manager of the very successful uh, Team Napa race, and Paul Rivette being the driver, of course, again. And it's been uh, it's been four out of four for Paul this weekend, hasn't it? Yeah, I'm not tempting fate on this one. Four out of four, though. Uh, again, do you know, last year, wouldn't it? Twice, I think, every time we spoke, it was always about brands at the beginning of the season, <laughs> and what a bad start we had, whatever. I mean, I'm liking this one. Can we talk about brands every time we meet yes now, yes let's we? do that yeah we're going to talk about what a fantastic start he's had i mean let's let's look at the competition i mean he's, he's there's only obviously two other drivers in that division um, but of course that kind of means that any mistakes are going to be pretty much instant aren't they i mean obviously small incident with john earlier on in the weekend he's going to be out for blood the rest of the season now by, by all rights most likely i mean that's racing isn't it? it wouldn't matter which two drivers are on that track when something like that comes together it's it's, it's that's it you know cards marked <laughs> it's look there's strong competition there might only be the three of it. it's, it's real strong competition with john and simon and we're all going to be vying for it whatever and and you can guarantee that we're you know we're going to have a good weekend somebody's going to have a bad weekend etc that, that's going to happen throughout the but season that's racing isn't it that's racing and again it's just it's just as we said probably again i always repeat myself i think but it's what we said last year just look at what all we can do is <laughs> do always what last year. yeah always last year did i yeah, you brands said this last, last year, year. Yeah. Brands last year. <laughs> but, but you can you, you know the thing is just to concentrate on what you're doing etc again where you know it, uh, that's just that's just what we what, what we want to do and keep it and, keep what, it and what you're doing obviously is doing very well and that's what it's all about i mean you've you know without wanting to, to tempt fate obviously yeah let's talk about brands last year we've got fantastic improvements in in reliability you've had you know you've, you haven't had major issues there's always time there's always time for any truck in the paddock to have major issues but of course you know i, I feel like you were a lot more comfortable than you were for most of last year really i think I think almost you were expecting it or waiting for it to happen again, weren't you? In a way, I, don't, I mean, last year again, starting on that back foot, it was just you know, it was just a, it was just a different thing all the way through the season. It was just about trying to trying to claw it back, claw it back, and just whatever. This year, will it be different? I, I, we've just got to keep the same mentality or whatever, and just 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 do what we do and make sure we just keep going and whatever, and just try and have the best weekend we can for for Napa Racing UK, Taco Sis, all of the sponsors of Valvoline. We, we just need to give them uh, the best weekend we can every time we go out. Well, that's fantastic. Keep doing a good job. We've got uh, Truck 86 now. Thanks, Andrew. I'll speak to you very soon. Truck 86 coming in now. Let's go and have a little close-up if we can. Tom O'Rourke, we won't get too involved, but you can see here quite a bit of mud from that gravel. Very deep in, but no major damage from what we can see. Scrutineers and team members obviously having a look over the truck now. A little bit of damage to this side panel here, possibly where the impact of the gravel dug in quite deep 
Fantastic job from the recovery team, of course, Trackside Recovery, here with us this weekend at Brands Hatch. Getting things underway quite quickly. And we are eating away at the track time now. A quick removal of some... The engine certainly seems to still be working, as you can probably hear in the background. All seems to be working quite well. But a slight collection from some more gravel. I hope they don't weigh the truck after the race. Might be an extra couple of kilos knocking about here and there. But we have the lovely blue tractor there on the gravel now, flattening off the uh, the gravel bank onto the track there. The road sweep has been across to make sure the tarmac's okay. The fingers crossed we should be underway pretty soon. Of course, we look out onto the grid straight. We've got the pace truck back out now, waiting for a regrid, I would assume, uh, with the marshals in position, ready to get them lined up. Will it be a regrid of the initial start or will it be a regrid of how it ended before that red flag? Only time will tell, but yes, we do have the trucks coming round now. Uh, so we'll find out where things are going to land and whether or not we're allowed to get past the fence onto the tarmac. The old reliable Ford tractor there racing away, escaping from the onslaught of British racing trucks crawling up behind it. It makes it past the pace truck just in time. The Ford tractor is safe, ladies and gentlemen, it's okay. Right then, what are we looking at now then? Pulling up Dave Jenkins in the first place. Next to him, we've obviously got Stuart Oliver, son Michael behind him next to that. The number 22, Paul Rivette. So it looks like we're going as they called the red flag. So uh, have we got access? Let's go. The gates are open. Bear in mind, not much at all is, is uh, allowed to be done to the trucks whilst they're under race conditions. But all of the mechanics like to have a little wonder around them anyway, you know, just fiddle a few screws, just just do the whole, you know, oh, like are the, oh, the tyres okay, yeah, the bumper's still on, yeah, look, that's all, oh, that's yellow, that bit, yeah, yeah, wonderful. Oh, yeah, see, look at them, look at them. Yes, that one's still a race truck as well. Let's have a look at that race truck. We all okay? Is it still a race truck, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's still a race truck. Brilliant. We've checked, it's still a race truck, look. And just like that, they're off again. Tightening a bolt by the looks of it. The leakage is on the back, of course for the uh, stiffness of suspension, which is uh, pretty much the only thing you can do with the trucks, as I was talking about earlier on, uh, with someone in the media centre, of uh, getting them ready for a bit of wet, which the track obviously still is. Simon Cole, how are we? We've not had a chance to speak to you much this week. I'm so sorry, but how's the girl feeling? Yeah, getting there, mate. Big day on power, but next round we'll be all right. We'll be all right. Fantastic, Robert. There's no major issues. That's the main thing. We've got a full weekend out here, and that's what counts. Yeah, it's only the driver, but the truck's all right. All good. <laughs> Simon Cole, perfect little chat there. And as you hear the whistles going, we're back through the gate. That's all we've got time for. Back up to Dave in the studio. Dave, are you ready? I'm always ready, Pointy. Don't you worry about that. Good to hear from Andrew Fulcher there as well, the team manager for the uh, number 22 team. His daughter Hannah's been uh, talking in our comments thread uh, today. Andrew, uh, a former truck racer himself, used to compete in Division 2 in the uh, Lenham storage truck a few years ago and also competed in car racing with uh, an Alfa Romeo for a time as well. I remember seeing that car at the Autosport show a few years back. Well, the trucks have been assembled into the order that they were in when the race was stopped and it will be a 10 minute restart. Thank you for your patience there while the recovery took place and the grid was reformed. It's David Jenkins on pole with Stuart Oliver alongside and Ryan Smith after that pit stop starts right at the back. This is gonna be interesting to say the least. 
he is. Now, Ryan Smith, after a mishap, he's usually fired up and angry. Yeah, you can see him throwing the truck around there as he gets underway. He's going to be on it right from the off. Jenkins and Oliver lead them round. Paul Rivette on the second row, along with um, Michael Oliver. John Powell's well up on the third row with um, Stephen Powell alongside. Then it's David Smith. Simon Cole. Neil Yates and Ryan Smith at the back. No, Tom O'Rourke, of course. Uh, that truck pointy said had a bit of mud, a bit of mud on it. It looked like it had been competing in the Dakar Rally. Get the pressure washers out. So we're down to ten trucks for ten minutes of racing. Can Ryan Smith make it through from P10 on the grid? We see a first win of the season for David Jenkins or for Stuart Oliver. Can Paul Rivette do it again and put one over the Division Two, the Division One boys again? There's flying Ryan. He and Stephen Powell on two each in Division 1. Two wins apiece. Paul Rivette going for five out of five in Division 2. Pace truck pulls into pit lane. Final race of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship here on season opening weekend at Brands Hatch. David Jenkins and Stuart Oliver lead them off. Towards the red lights. Lights go out now and they power away up towards Paddock Hill then for the first time. Great start by Stuart Oliver from the outside of the front row. The number seven takes up the lead. Ryan Smith already through the middle. He's passed three of them by the time they get to uh, Paddock Hill then. He's passed Yates, David Smith and Simon Cole. David Jenkins sideways. I thought he was going to spin it there coming off Paddock Hill then. He got a wheel onto the curb. He's still second. Michael Oliver into third ahead of Stephen Powell. Paul Rivette is down to fifth. And Ryan Smith alongside John Powell in the number six so he's already made his way up into sixth position ah tom o'rourke has joined in from the pit lane just caught a glimpse of him there at druids in the background so stuart oliver from david jenkins michael oliver and a spin there that's simon cole has lost it luckily nobody has hit him he's onto the grass on the inside of graham hill bend he'll uh, try and rejoin he doesn't want to get bogged down in the grass though hopefully the pink panther can uh, get going again ryan smith a little bit out of shape there as they came through sir he's ahead of paul rivette now so he's up into fifth position Goes out wide, looking for grip through clearway. Stuart Oliver and David Jenkins together at the front of the field. Now Ryan Smith moving towards the inside. They're almost side by side for third place. <laughs> As they go into... Um, and off goes Stephen Powell into the barriers at uh, Paddock Hill Bend. Well, with it so slippery out there. It was inevitable that uh, there would be further incidents and um, that will probably be another red flag. I don't think we'll uh, see that with um, a full course yellow. Similar place to where he went off 12 months ago. Wait to see what the decision is. Stephen Powell is going, going out wide through uh, Paddock Hill Bend there, it's straight on, and the red flag does come out. So what's going to happen this time then? Just too slippery out there for them at the moment. So Stuart Sir Oliver leads from David Jenkins, Michael Oliver, Ryan Smith up to P4. The outside line through Paddock Hill Bend did not work. And Stephen Powell sliding out wide into the tyre wall. Red flag out again. And we'll wait to see what the decision is this time. Looks like there hasn't been too much damage done to the um, tyre wall. 
That's a great shame for Stephen Powell. He's had such a good weekend with two Division One victories. He's out of the truck. He's OK. It's a big round of applause from the crowd. Thought he was going to climb onto the roof of his cab then for a moment. Stephen Powell just uh, relaxing and waiting for recovery. Here it comes. Okay, and we'll be... Uh waiting uh, decisions on what will happen here. So under the red flags at um, Brands Hatch in our final truck race of the day. And Stephen Powell having slid off into the gravel and into the tyre wall at uh, Paddock Hill Bend. Let's have a look back at... Um, some highlights of uh, this race so far. Stuart Oliver fighting his way up the inside of Tom O'Rourke for second on the initial start as David Jenkins took the early lead but then the Reds came out as O'Rourke went into a spin into the gravel on the outside of the Brabham Straits. And then on the restart Side by side into Paddock Hill Bend. Didn't work in the damp conditions. Stephen Powell just going straight on, locked up through the gravel and walloped straight into the tyre wall. Thankfully, not a huge amount of damage done. And we'll wait to see if there will be a restart. We are going to get a restart, apparently. It will be another 10 minute restart, just been told via the timing screen. the uh, Peterbilt being brought in this time to recover Stephen Powell's truck.
Well, out under the uh, red flag once again here at uh, Brands Hatch. Stephen Powell's uh, truck being extracted from the gravel. We'll shortly uh, be able to head down to uh, Pointy in the Pits for a further update. Dear Pointy, come on. <laughs> God, play it, play it. Let me have this for a well, second you, because you can hold it. are you, you cursed curse. or something? Are you cursed? Oh, oh, I mean, I think that's a stretch. I wouldn't go as far as curse, but yes, I did speak to Simon Cole just before he crashed. Um, but yeah, I mean, what can you say? These things happen. But you know, who should we curse on this one? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't, don't pick anything. No, it has, no, I mean, we were no. talking. We had a great day yesterday. We, had, we have had one particularly good race today. It is motorsport. It does happen. And of course, we've got a wet track. The conditions have completely thrown things out, haven't they? They have completely thrown things out. I mean, we started the day really well. I mean, they are getting back to somewhere useful now. I think for the last two races of the day, uh, which you'll be covering, you know, the track will be lovely by then. It's going to um, be great. It's, I think it, the track action lot in assembly right now are delighted with this actually because it just gives the track an even better chance to dry off. I think secretly what happened was they knew there was going to be a driver sign in a grid walk and they, they knew that if they did anything wrong there wouldn't be a grid walk so they thought okay let's get together let's behave ourselves for three races no delays no time penalties have the grid walk and then we can use all those red flags we've saved up all weekend in one go well look, let's talk about the british truck racing championship in 2024 of course round one here at brands hatch where else are we going this year anybody watching this who's not in the south of england yeah. hasn't been able to get to brands hatch where can they maybe get trackside to to watch it well there's some slight differences this year we've got pembury after this of course we've got thruxton as always snetterton big one at donnington again however special one this year le mans we are, no. going, we are going to Le Mans, donning the ferries, getting over there. It's the Camion 24, which will be absolutely fantastic. They literally race, I mean, it's not 24 hours for obvious reasons. Yeah. They, they've got to have the taco break at some point, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, they are going to be racing in the dark, lights on. I've never been, I've heard so many things about it. It will be an experience for all the guys in the British to be over there in France. Do you need somebody to come along and make a tea? Because I'm making me a cup of tea. Yeah, I might, I might be able to find a space, uh, you know, somewhere in the cargo hold. Why not? Why not? Now, let's just talk uh, Ryan Smith, of course, because uh, he had a cracking day yesterday, did he? Today hasn't quite gone to plan for him, though, has it? No, I mean, a few technical difficulties, really. I mean, we saw him struggle earlier on in this race and the last race as well. He had an off, let's be honest. We were thinking, is he going to get back on there? He was bedded down in that grass. Luckily, managed to get going again for at least a finish, but not what he wanted to see. I mean, it has kind of gone a little bit downhill for Ryan Smith this weekend. Not the positions he's used to finishing in, that's for sure. But if I know Ryan, I'm sure he'll be back with a vengeance pretty soon. I'll let you uh, interview him and talk to him a little bit later then in the paddock. But not before the race. I don't want to be responsible for that. I'm not no, responsible. No, no. <laughs> I mean, there's beautiful sunshine down here now. Uh, there is going to be a restart. It is going to be 10 minutes as well, so we are going to get the full 10 minutes again. We're going to get the full racing. We're going to get the result. It's what we want to see. Let's talk about Paul Rivette as well, Division oh, 2 winner overall yeah. as well, Incredible. beating the Div, Div 1s. I saw your interview after. He was delighted. I think you're even more excited. <laughs> I think that's one thing I've, uh, I've, I've certainly been labelled with now. I get as excited about a result as the driver. I think when you're around the guys like I am all year, you do really get invested in every team. I mean, I've I've got no favourites. I want all of them to go home with trophies because I want happiness for all of them, you know, and to see the driver's face as he comes from behind that crash curtain, smiling from ear to ear, and he's like, I did it, pointy, I did it, and I'm like, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a great experience. It's, it's an honour to be a part of it, it really is. But it really is. Yeah, great result, great result. Well, the good off. news no, is no, we've no, been told no, to get no, off, no, so it uh, no. looks like we're about to go back racing again. Now, Pointy, hi, I'm going to give this to you. Thanks for letting me come on and have a chat with you. Oh, thanks, it's been fantastic to chat to you too. We should do this again oh. sometime. Oh. Cheers, bud. Oh, no. we can play some romantic music over that. Right, should we go back to Dave in the studio? Let's do it. Back to Dave in the studio. Okay, thanks to uh, Pointy and Ian down there. And we will be back underway as soon as the track, I think the track just about is clear up there. Great job by the uh, marshals and the recovery crews. Trucks are back on the grid. Well, 
nine of them are anyway. Pace truck leads them away. David Jenkins, Stuart Oliver, Paul Rivets, Michael Oliver, no Stephen Powell. Ross Simon Cole as well, haven't we, after that spin down at uh, Graham Hill Bend. Tom O'Rourke has been able to rejoin at the back. So what's going to happen this time then? Ryan Smith make his way through this time. They're a slightly uh, reduced grid. It'll be a 10 minute restart once again. So they avoid the gravel this time. Great shame for Stephen Powell. He does. Such a brilliant weekend. David Jenkins pick up his first win of the season. Can Stuart Oliver pick up his first win? anyone that's not flying wrong. Lining up alongside his namesake, David Smith. Keeping it steady up towards the line, waiting for the red lights to go out. Very steady at the moment. Nine trucks out there for ten minutes of racing. Off they go. Power comes on. Side by side, Jenkins and Oliver. Oliver got the overlap at the uh, previous start. He's just about got it this time, I think, but Jenkins is there on the inside. He hasn't quite got in front of him. Michael Oliver in third place. And Stuart Oliver almost leans on Jenkins as they go up towards Druids. Jenkins will have the inside line for the right-hander, and he's got the lead. It's the MAN ahead of the Volvo. Michael Oliver third. Side by side for fourth, Ryan Smith moving up on the outside, but Paul Rivet and John Powell trying to hold him off. Next behind them, David Smith side by side with Tom O'Rourke. Looks like Simon Cole has joined in from the pit lane, so we're back up to ten trucks. As they head through Graham Hill Bend, you can see how much things have dried out, but it is still very slippery out there on the Brands Hatch Indy circuit. David Jenkins from Oliver. Third place, Michael Oliver, but he runs a little bit wide through there. Ryan Smith's got through past the Division 2 trucks, up into fourth place. John Powell dancing his way through Surtees there. O'Rourke is seventh. First half dozen breaking away now. The first two have broken away very slightly. Jenkins from Stuart Oliver. And a spin in the background. Who's that that's gone around? Nearly collected there as they uh, come off the turn. Tom O'Rourke got caught up with somebody. I think it might be David Smith that's spun out there, the number 11. Yes, it is. He's getting going again. And uh, Tom O'Rourke has... Oh, he's slowing up again. He's just not having much luck this weekend, is the Scotsman. Side by side for third. Ryan Smith trying to go around the outside of Michael Oliver at uh, Druid's Hill Bend. Michael Oliver, you see, moving to cover there as they come down the hill. So he'll get the inside line away, but uh, it matters not because Ryan Smith's already got past him as they reach the left-hander. He's up to third. That setting sun might cause a few visibility problems here, I think, coming down the Cooper Straits. David Jenkins is sideways on the entry to Surtees there. It's trying to stay ahead of the Volvo Stewart Oliver. Michael Oliver off onto the grass. Trying to keep Paul Rivette, the Division 2 leader, behind him. But Paul Rivette possibly not having things all his own way here because look at the way John Powell is going up behind him in the number six. Are we going to see a bit of a contest here in Division 2 for the first time, really, this weekend? 
has Tom O'Rourke got back up to speed? He was very slow coming down the pit straight. No, he's parked up. There he is on the inside, out of the way. That's uh, good driving by Tom O'Rourke to get the machine out of the way there and not cause another stoppage. Jenkins from Oliver, one second in it as they cross the line. But Ryan Smith is lurking behind them. The three big hitters of Division 1 together at the front of the field. Fourth is Michael Oliver. He's got the two Division 2 trucks on his tail. Paul Rivets. It's got to be mindful that John Powell is there. John will want a victory. But now Paul Rivette pulls away. You can see how much quicker in the uh, straight line the MAN is. As uh, Ryan Smith all over the back of Stuart Oliver. There's, uh, I think that's one of his windscreen wipers has come adrift there. Look, flapping away at the side of the truck. That was not going to clean much. It's on the tail of Stuart Oliver. Sliding back over to the inside. That's a great change of line by Ryan Smith, but Stewart is uh, wise to it. Vastly experienced Northumbrian. He stays ahead of Flying Ryan. This is allowing David Jenkins to get away in front in the MAN. They're well clear of Michael Oliver now in fourth place. He's about four seconds back. Ryan Smith getting a bit sideways there. Still very slippery up Halewood Hill. Rivette's still ahead of Powell, but only by half a second. And in seventh place is Simon Cole. He's running well ahead of Neil Yates. David Smith has rejoined after his spin. And Tom O'Rourke, of course, out of the race. Almost up alongside there, uh, Ryan Smith, as they came down Cooper Strait. Stuart Oliver driving a good defensive race here. His final race of the weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship on opening weekend. That's Brands Hatch. Oh, David Smith's gone off again. This time he's in the gravel. That's up at Druids. Now, can he get out of there? Meanwhile, Ryan Smith is going for second place on the inside again. Stuart Oliver moving to cover. Nearly three seconds behind David Jenkins now. There'll be yellow flags out on the run up towards uh, Druids. So the drivers can see that hazard. No overtaking through there, and I think the red flag's going to come out again. Now we were on five minutes and two seconds left to go. So what's going to happen this time? So what we're going to have, we're going to have uh, happen this time. Then let's wait and see. Four laps had been completed. There's Tom O'Rourke. That's where he pulled over earlier on, and the timing screen saying that the session will not be restarted. But we'll await uh, official confirmation on that from the officials. So that may be result declared, in which case it will be a win for David Jenkins. His first win of the season. And Paul Rivette will uh, score a maximum this weekend in Division 2. So we believe the session will not be restarted. David Smith in the gravel at Druids. So provisionally the result is a win for David Jenkins by... Uh, Two and three quarters seconds ahead of Stuart Oliver. Ryan Smith has to settle for third. Then Michael Oliver fourth. Paul Rivette fifth overall and takes a maximum in Division 2. John Powell in uh, second and Simon Cole third. Then Neil Yates in uh, eighth position. David Smith in the gravel. Tom O'Rourke out of the race. And Stephen Powell, of course, didn't take the restart. We'll hand down to Pointy in the pits in a moment who can confirm what's going to happen next. Two races to go here today at Brands Hatch. Right then, here we are. Eventually got a result, but what a result it was. Where is he? Is he still in? For Dave Jenkins, 
Can we get anywhere near him? It looks like the marshals are uh, giving him some directions at the moment. I don't really know what's going on there. Oh dear. Oh dear. We've got a little bit of frayed tension here. Very uh, awkward moment. Ryan Smith on the warpath here having some gentlemanly words with Dave Jenkins by the looks of it. Let's just not get that on film, shall we? Shall we not get that on film? <laughs> so, a little bit of damage to the side of Dave Jenkins here. Oh, well, I mean, let's be honest. You've had three restarts. <laughs> oh, we're all right now. We can get in there. You can have, you can have Dave. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> right, so I still think it's probably best if we leave that for a minute. You can tell the tensions are high. A lot of testosterone in the air. A couple of restarts has obviously got people uh, a little bit G'd up, to say the least. Uh, we had, of course, Stuart Oliver in second place. Ryan Smith in third as they crossed the line. Same result for three laps, which means even going back a lap with the red flag means it stays how it was effectively. So nothing too much to report there. Well done, Daisy, for being the diplomat there. Good job. Marshall's always on hand, not just for safety, but uh, to, to cool some heads and uh, keep things rolling. Has Stuart set off back? I believe he has. We'll wait for Alan to finish with Dave Jenkins and then we can have a chat to him. Uh, because I think, I, I mean, what do you do in those situations, ladies and gentlemen? I didn't want to get involved in that. Hold on, hold on. It's going in for round two. Let's just call this a day, I think. It's been an, it's been an exciting afternoon. Um, interesting finish. And uh, I'm sure everything will come out in the wash. So thanks all for joining me down here in the pit lane. I'm going to head back and hand out some trophies. Whether they're happy with which ones they get or not, nobody knows. But we're going to do it anyway. Back to Dave in the studio. Probably, unless you want to. Well, the Peterbilt's out on track again. Trackside Recovery and uh, Mick Gould Commercials and their helpers have uh, had a very busy weekend. I think they've uh, earned a beer at the end of today. Lesser driving at home, of course. No drinking and driving, please. So once uh, David Smith is clear, we'll uh, be on to our final two car races of the day. We've got the track action saloons out next, and then we finish off with the pickups. So the big uh, Peterbilts with uh, Richard Tier at the wheel, and it's going to tow David Smith back to the paddock. And uh, while um, the recovery operation is completed, we caught up with some of the track action saloon racers a little earlier on. Uh, right, race one done for the uh, track action. Of course, second race about to come up. I, I just want to very quickly touch on that first race because you and Charlotte are having a magnificent battle. You just had the grunt in the end to get over the line. Just, <laughs> just. She was coming. She was coming. I was beading with sweat the last couple of laps. My tyres were opening up. I got old tyres and a bit of a weight disadvantage. <laughs> but um, yeah, managed to hold on the last few laps. So really good run. Thankfully, the weather's been kind as well. And uh, yeah, brilliant race, brilliant race. Of course, we've still got to do it all again uh, this afternoon as well. Uh, what are we expecting now? Now you sort of got to grips with the car. Yeah, I'm hoping for more of the same. I mean, I'm starting fifth on the grid for the second race. I was ninth on the grid for the first race. So I'm really pleased with ninth to third. Um, but yeah, just hoping to stay up there and hold on. Top man, thank you so much. Uh, congratulations. Uh, Mr. Beecroft, don't disappear, please. Uh, we're going to have a quick chat with you. Uh, first race was an absolute thriller, certainly between this man and, and Charlotte and right at the sharp end. How was it for you? Uh, well, I didn't have any brakes, which... Right. Well, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you oh, made yeah, it back. Yeah, we made it back, yeah. But I was keeping all the two or sixes behind me so I could just bunch them up to make it look like a good race. <laughs> that was my mission. But no, the whole thing uh, got us home, so yeah, it was good. Now, tell us a little bit more about track action this year. OK, well, track action, the name is now. 
it's a little bit of a catch-all, but it, it's club racing. It's for guys who come out of a weekend sport. If you've got a French car, you go in the French section. If you've got a German car, you go in the German section, etc., etc. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just for people to come and have a good laugh and enjoy the weekend. But also what it has, because we've got the Junior Saloon Car Championship, every year we lose 10 juniors into various other categories. Yeah. And mums and dads always say, oh, what should go, what should we do? So we've taken this over. So I think we've got six of our youngsters from last year racing. So it's a natural progression, junior saloons into track action. Yeah, and you know, if they've only got a small budget, they go into the 206s because these cars are relatively cheap as chips. If they've got a bit more funding, put them into a shock or a Clio or something like that. And yeah, they don't all want to go on to, into one make Clio racing or be touring car drivers. They want to go and have a weekend sport. Yeah. Dave, thank you so much. Best of luck for race thank two you. as well. Uh, yeah, it's all I've heard all day. So I'm here, Ian. I'm here. Uh, right, race two coming up for track action. Dave, over to you. Thanks, Ian. That's the circuit's almost clear then. The uh, race trucks will be uh, heading back to get ready for Pembrey. We can see uh, Tom O'Rourke's truck being cleared in the background there as well up at uh, the end of the Brabham Strait. Uh, thanks to Melissa, who lets us know that uh, Bradley Smith, number 46, who uh, someone asked about earlier, he's going to be uh, switching to car racing later this season. So best of luck to Bradley with that. The race truck's about to head off circuit. There goes David Smith, just driving past in the background there. The uh, Peterbilt's giving chase to him. We've just got to get Tom O'Rourke going in. Now a trying debut for his new truck sure he'll improve come Pembrey in a few weeks time the second round of the British Truck Racing Championship their first of two visits to South Wales so the track action saloons up next and then we close out today with uh, the final, the final effectively for the pickups. Call it a final because the uh, results of the first two races set the grid for it. So it's a clean sweep for Paul Rivette in our truck races in Division 2 today, including an overall win. Two wins for Ryan Smith, two for Stephen Powell, one for David Jenkins in Division 1. Tom O'Rourke's truck is clear. We'll be underway with um, our penultimate, well, our final car race, because our last race is the uh, the pickups. On the uh, grid for our track action race. We were set by the uh, second fastest qualifying time earlier on for each car that took place this morning. We can have a look back, meanwhile, at um, some uh, highlights from our rather chaotic final truck race of the day. Plenty of incident in these slippery conditions, as expected. David Jenkins it was who uh, led off initially. Stuart Oliver diving past Tom O'Rourke into second place at Druids. But then Tom O'Rourke got sideways and went spinning coming out of Clark Curve into the gravel. And the red flag had to come out to recover him. And on the restart, Stuart Oliver took the lead. David Jenkins getting sideways in second place. Stephen Powell went side by side with Michael Oliver up towards Brant Hatch. But the outside line at Paddock Hill Bend doesn't work in wet conditions. Off went the MAN into the tyre wall. End of play for Stephen Powell after a cracking weekend. Then we had another restart. David Jenkins took the lead. With Ryan Smith trying to chase his way through to catch the leaders as Stuart Oliver gave chase to the race leader. Michael Oliver indulged a little bit of corner cutting. John Powell power sliding his daff. As Ryan Smith got up alongside Stuart Oliver. There was a bit of push and shove for second place as David Jenkins started to extend his lead. But then David Smith locked up at Druids into the gravel. And that brought about an early end to our truck racing today. Okay, I 
think um, things are just about clear now. Here comes the Peterbilts, lights flashing. Even sounds aggressive as it goes past uh, the camera there. We'll shortly give you the grid for our track attack, uh, track action saloon series. It is a series, not a championship. There's no points scored in these races. It's all about uh, trying to win your class. I think we can hand down to our pit reporter Ian Waterhouse, who's down in uh, the assembly area, to catch up with a few more of the drivers. Yeah, here we are uh, live now in the assembly area for track action. Uh, I feel a bit sorry for these guys. They've waited here absolutely ages. We've got Noah here. Let's just have a quick chat with uh, him in the 206 GTR. I'm sure we don't mind if we just open the door there. Noah, you've been here for absolutely ages, haven't you? You just, but well, you can't wait to get out there, can you? Yeah, changing conditions, looking to see what it feels like, yeah. Has it actually done you a favour, having more time for the track to dry? Well, certainly with the sun on it now as well. Yeah, but we're running wet, so it'll, it should hopefully dry out the track a bit more, make a dry line. But yeah, I think to dry out the faster, so yeah, see how we do. What's it like being part of track action? Yeah, my first round this round, and yeah, I think I'm in the 206 cup uh, version. Yep. So yeah, I, I've enjoyed it, because I was in Junior Saloons last year, and yep. I've moved, made the move up from there to this, and yeah, I've been enjoying it. So we heard from Dave Beecroft a little bit earlier, it's a natural, in fact, I'm going to have to let you go, it's a natural progression, so best of luck, Noah, Thank thanks you. for talking to us, I really do appreciate it, uh, and just like it's typical, isn't it, as soon as we come live, the gates open. It is now time for the second race of the weekend for track action. Uh, Dave, over to you. Okay, thanks very much, Ian. Just catching up with Noah Checkley there in the 206 GTI category. The grid for this race, as we say, is set by the second fastest time by each driver in the qualifying session. That was first thing this morning at 9am. Similarly, slippery conditions back then. So I'll bring you the grid in uh, just a moment. I can tell you it's David Clark who is in pole position this time in the Renault 5 Turbo. Now, he uh, finished last in the opening race, had to make a pit stop with a problem, and he also got a penalty for jumping the start from the outside of the front row but the Renault 5 has got uh, pole position this time alongside him is number 46 Gareth Porter with the Peugeot 205 the second row Paul Roddison in the VW Scirocco and alongside him should be Charlotte Birch in the Honda Civic but just looking down at the grid there I can't see the 27 car Third row, number 69, Tom Franklin with the Renault 5, the second of the Renault 5 GT turbos. And alongside him should be Marshall Groves in the Vauxhall Vectra. It looks like that's not there either, so we're missing a couple of cars from the front of the grid. Uh, row 4, 128 Lee Bull with his Renault Clio. Yes, that's there. And Charlie Constable Scirocco. Row 5, Rob Buckland's Clio. Failed to finish the first race, but he's back out for this one. And Adam Parker in his uh, Honda Civic. The sixth row, 36 Joel Daniels in his Clio alongside CJ Morgan, the first of the Peugeot 206 GTI class. Then number 28, David Thomas. Yes, the MR2 is there, alongside Lee Rickard Civic. Behind them, uh, number three, Dave Beecroft is not there with the Saxo, and 95, Andrew Mitchell with his Peugeot. Row nine, Noah Checkley and Paul Rice in their Peugeot 206s. Yes, they're both there. Row 10, two more Peugeot 206s, Jacob Baldry and David Scotting. The 11th row, Matt Anderson and Harley Connolly. 12th row is uh, Jake Richardson and Steve Fuller. And Alexandre Quacheté. Not 100% sure how to pronounce that name. We'll go with Alex Q, I think, the Frenchman. Starting from the back in the Mazda MX-5. So a couple of gaps on the grid. Dave Beecroft Saxo is not there. Charlotte Birch in the Civic not there and Marshall Groves as well. So here we go then. Lovely 80 shape of the Mark 1 MR2 of uh, David Thomas in there. Gareth Porter, the uh, Peugeot 
looking and sounding beautiful in race one. It's a battle with Paul Roddison. Could be the favourites here. CJ Morgan going for a double in the Peugeot 206s, the White Cup. Andrew Mitchell's car. It is a Peugeot 206 GTI, but uh, running in a different class. Adam B in the, our comment section says, since when is lorry racing a thing? This is awesome. Uh, since November 1984, that was the first British truck races at Donington. And it's been a thing, a very big thing ever since. Adam Parker with the Civic. See the uh, French cars have the trickle or on their windscreen strip. German cars, the German flag, and uh, the Japanese flag there. You can see on uh, Alex Q's Mazda. It's David Clark in the yellow Renault 5 Turbo on pole. Seems to be racing this car somewhere every weekend. And if you had a Renault 5 GT Turbo, why wouldn't you race it every weekend? Great little hot hatch. Gareth Porter alongside in the 205. Then Paul Roddison. Gap where Charlotte Birch should have been, a gap where Marshall Grove should have been, the Vectra not out, sadly. Thomas Franklin's there with his Renault. And Lee Bull and uh, Charlie Constable, first of the junior saloon car graduates from last year, as Dave Beecroft was explaining earlier. That's what uh, this series is intended for, a training ground once you leave junior racing for saloon car stars of tomorrow. Peugeot 206 GTI Cup particularly suitable for that. It'll be a 15-minute race. There's a variety of saloons, plus the MX-5 at the back. Revs begin to rise, a bit of smoke from a couple of cars, and away we go. In the front row, not the best of stuff. There's no way through for Paul Roddison. Car out on the grass there, further back, Lee Bull in the Clio. Very slow away, the silver car. And he's almost in last place as they head up towards uh, Paddock for the first time. It's David Clark who has got the lead ahead of Porter. Third place is Paul Roddison, his first time out with the new Scirocco. Tom Franklin up there in fourth position, it's three wide behind them. Roddison has a look on the inside, gets onto the kerb. The 59 of CJ Morgan got a cracking getaway on the outside. And the 206, oh, he gets forced out wide by Charlie Constable. All rivalries, I think, from the junior saloons there resurfacing. Loses that to Joel Daniels as well in the Renault Clio. They've all got round OK. Lee Bull trying to recover from that very slow start. Clark leads from Porter, Franklin in third, Roddison down to fourth, and it's Constable completing the top five. Behind him is Joel Daniels having a go up the inside in the clear. Adam Parker is next in the Civic, then CJ Morgan in the first of the 206s ahead of Rob Buckland, who uh, went out in that tangle with Charlie Constable at the end of lap one in race one. Roddison at the outside now on Thomas Franklin. The first two have got away. Here comes Charlie Constable as well. Those Scirocco's very quick in a straight line. Up to third goes Roddison. A bit of smoke there from Thomas Franklin's uh, Renault 5. I hope that's not going to prove terminal. Constable and Daniels next through. Well, one and a half seconds is the lead for David Clark over Gareth Porter in that Peugeot 205, the race one winner. Second race for the track action saloons. Charlie Constable trying to go around the outside of Thomas Franklin now. The Renault pilot holds him off. Here's some busy battling from the 206s. And uh, Lee Ball's Clio in amongst them there as well. Pick up who's leading the uh, 206 category in a moment. The uh, number 88 of uh, uh, David Scotting coming through on the inside there. Lee Ball side by side with Paul Rice in the 42. CJ Morgan will be leading the 206 class. He's way up on everybody else. Challenging the number 26, that's Matt Anderson. Uh, Lee Rickard, sorry, in the uh, yellow Honda Civic. Civic pulls away in a straight line. Matt Anderson in a 206, a little bit further back. Number 25, not 26. And David Clark from Gareth Porter by just over a second. Fastest lap of the race, though, to Paul Roddison, 103.85. Here comes Porter having a look as they go up the hill towards Druids. 
Daniels in the bewinged Clio has got ahead of uh, the Renault 5 of Franklin. It's another Renault 5 leading the way. How much longer though? Because Porter and Roddison are protagonists for the lead in race one. They're closing up. They're all leading their classes, these three. 206 classes led by CJ Morgan ahead of uh, Matt Anderson, the number 25, further back. That's Porter, the Peugeot 205. Tight a line through clearways. Be great just reward for David Clark if he can hang on for a win here. The amount of effort he puts into his racing, often for very little reward in the Renault. Gareth Porter, look at the speed of that Peugeot in a straight line, staying ahead of Paul Roddison. Can they get past Clarkey in the Renault 5 Turbo? Through the Big Dipper section almost, up towards Druids. He's only in fourth behind them, that's uh, the uh, second Scirocco of Charlie Constable. He's got ahead of Joel Daniels now in the Clio. Thomas Franklin is down to sixth, it's uh, Rob Buckland seventh in the Clio. Then it's Ricard Parker and CJ Morgan rounds out the top ten. Here's the, a battle in the 206s. 95 Andrew Mitchell on the outside of 88 of Scotting. Paul Rice there on the inside in the 42, chased by 33, which is Jacob Baldry, another of our junior graduates. Change for second place there. Roddison's got ahead of Porter and now having a go at David Clark. Based in the south of Yorkshire, Paul Roddison near Sheffield. He's having a go at the at number 86, the Renault. Local man from Brands Hatch from Seven Oaks, David Clark. Gareth Porter. Comes from Ockham in Surrey. Challenging for third. Now they're being reeled in by Joel Daniels, who's back into fourth place in his Clio. Roddison up the outside, trying to get the Sirocco ahead. But the Renault holds on. This is impressive from... David Clark, now the Scirocco right on his bumper as they come through Graham Hill Bend. It's the Renault 5 Turbos, a one-make series for many years before they were replaced by the Clio. It was a one-make series for Scirocco's in uh, Germany and the VW Racing Cup in the UK had uh, many of them along with Golfs. A whole variety of other models as well. Where's Jill Daniels going? Well, he was going into the gravel there, runs very wide through the last corner at Clearways, but never mind that because look at the way Paul Roddison is going up on the inside of David Clark now. Who's going to be late on the brakes? And the Renault, is he going to hold it? Roddison up the inside, it's going to be the Scirocco late on the brakes and he takes the lead. Paul Roddison goes through into lap six, but the quickest lap of the race recorded by Joel Daniels, 101.657, the Clio there in fourth and he's catching these three. Porter up the inside into Druids, he goes through for second. David Clark goes down to third. Daniel second behind Gareth Porter in his class. So if he can get the Clio ahead of the 205, he could pick up a class win here. Young Joel Daniels in the number 36 car comes from Bury near Manchester. 206 is fighting it out. Twins there in the similar colours. Harley Connolly, number 43, gets ahead of Paul Rice. Bit of oversteer there. And uh, there is the Toyota MR2 of David Thomas. Under pressure from uh, Matt Anderson's Peugeot 206, who gets through on the inside. I've seen a one-make series for those as well. I remember John Winter, who founded the Hyundai Coupe Cup, used to race in uh, MR2s. And I think David Thomas has got a problem there. He's dropping back. He's got the indicator on. I suspect he's heading for the pits. 206 is everywhere. I expect the MR2 is going to pull in, David Thomas. Yes, he does. That's his race over, sadly. It's a whole pack of Peugeot 206s. If they get any more, they might have space for their own separate grid. 206 GTI Cup. Here's a, a couple of Hondas. This is uh, Lee Rickard from Derby. In his yellow type R. Just ahead of Adam Parker. He comes from uh, Haywood up in Lancashire. I'd hope to see Charlotte Birch out again as well, but a non-star. So new fastest lap for the race leader, Paul Roddison, meanwhile. One minute, 0.964. So he's gone under the 101 barrier now. One minute, 196, correction, he's gone quicker. He 
seconds, uh, less than a second ahead of Gareth Porter, who just did a new personal best as well, a 1 minute 2.93. So things are definitely drying out out there as uh, Jacob Baldry makes a move on, uh, I think that was on David Scotting. There's Robert Buckland going through. He's in uh, sixth position with the Clio. Head of Thomas Franklin now is down to seventh with his Renault 5. There's Baldry, David Scotting behind in the white car with the green stripe. He said earlier, the 206, uh, more famous as a rally car. It was in the early 2000s, Marcus Grunholm and Richard Burns won world rallies. Grunholm was uh, world champion for Peugeot. The Peugeot 205 back in the 80s, the T16 was the famous Group B rally car. Peugeot had the 306 Maxi as well, Gilles Panizzi and uh, Francois Delacour. There's a couple of those competing in uh, club rallying in the UK. Peugeot specialist Carl Chambers owns one. He's done some hill climbs in that car over the last couple of years. Here's our leader, though, Paul Roddison. Raced for many years in Mazda MX-5s, was a pioneer of the Max 5 series in the Mark III and uh, then the Mark IV MX-5. I think he was the first driver in the UK to race a Mark IV. David Clark, meanwhile, has dropped back now in third place and is being caught by Joel Daniels in the clear. Joel Daniels wants to catch Gareth, Gareth Porter to try and win his class, then. There's Porter. He's up behind Alex Q in the... Uh, Mazda MX-5. And the MX-5 has spun it backwards into the gravel. Oh dear. Alex Q, the Frenchman, is off. Now that uh, might mean a safety car because he's stuck on the outside of Clark Curve there. Alexandre T. Time for a cup of tea now, hasn't it? Well, he's stuck there in the gravel. Have a look again. Yep, just been lapped by Gareth Porter, just lost the back end on the slippery surface. And off he goes into the gravel. Rear-wheel drive MX-5, very easy to swap ends in wet conditions. Meantime, you see they're going through in the foreground. Joel Daniels has caught David Clark and was thinking about a move there. Less than five minutes of this race to go, and Roddison is now lapping under one minute. He's just done a 59.608. He's pulled away from Gareth Porter. He's over four seconds clear. And while that was going on, Joel Daniels has taken third place in the uh, Clio. Through the yellow flag zone there at uh, Clearways. But David Clark is fighting back. He uh, unleashes the turbo power of the Renault 5 and back into third place. But on the brakes, Joel Daniels back up the inside. Oh, that's tight. Through on the inside. That's a power versus uh, handling and braking battle, isn't it? David Clark takes the place on the straights and Joel Daniels zaps him back into the turns. There's Paul Roddison, our race leader. Is he going to even the score on Gareth Porter here? But Porter's closed back up again. Roddison's last lap was a little bit slower in a 101.98. Porter lapping consistently in the low one-minute bracket. We've got a yellow flag out. There's a 206 off at uh, Graham Hill Bend. It's gone off straight on there. Now, who's that? It's Noah Checkley, I think, the 520. 206 of Steve Fuller, number 34, about to be lapped by our third place battle, but they can't get through there. The yellows are out. It's uh, the second point on the circuit as well, with the MX-5 in the gravel. And in fact, I think we're going red. Yes, the red flag is coming out. Race stopped with three and a half minutes to go, so that will be result declared, I think. With two cars off the circuit interest of safety the race being halted so that will be provisionally a win for Paul Roddison first win for his new VW Scirocco ahead of Gareth Porter and David Clark a podium for the Renault 5 Turbo there's Noah Checkley's car now has he just parked up there or did he slide off like uh, John Bowler earlier on we'll try and see we know this man slid off Alex Q in his MX-5 
Just await to confirm if the session will be restarted. No, it will not. So that's result declared. It'll be a win for Paul Rodison. Rodison, the winner, he wins his class as well. He wins class DH from the German cars. Top French car home, Gareth Porter in second place. He wins class TA. Class TG goes to David Clark in third. Joel Daniels fourth. Good fight, good fight with David Clark there. Charlie Constable fifth in his Sirocco. Then Rob Buckland's Clio. Tom Franklin in the second of the Renault Fives. Lee Ricard wins the uh, Nippon Challenge section, the Japanese cars, ahead of uh, fellow Honda Civic pilot Adam Parker. The 206 GTI Cup, a double for CJ Morgan. Lee Bull. Thought back to 11th after a slow start in the Clio. Then Matt Anderson, second of the Peugeots. Jacob Baldry and David Scotting. Behind them, Paul Rice, Harley Connolly. The 303 of Jake Richardson. Andrew Mitchell and the final finisher, Steve Fuller. We lost Noah Checkley, Alex Q and David Thomas. Let's head down to Ian in Park Fermi. Here for some of the drivers. Yeah, welcome to the pit lane, everybody. They've sent everybody straight off, but I did manage to flag Paul down. So, Paul, thanks for stopping before uh, running me over there. But uh, uh, you, you got in front, and it looked like you controlled the race, so you got the better of Gareth this time. Yeah, I think a bit of, you know, the old man experience there, because um, I knew Brands is very, very, very slippy as it, as it ended, you know. Yeah. You think it's getting better, but it's not. It's getting worse, and that's why they were firing it off. Um, so the old man's experience came and I little thing there and once I got past him it, it, it was easy work really. What is the track conditions like at the minute? Very very greasy, very greasy. It's gone past that, you've lost the grip from the wet but now it's just gone very slippy before it dries out yeah. um, and it's just that intermediate bit and that's where you've got to have a lot of patience especially in clearways it's just wait 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 before you can get on the power otherwise you fire it off. It's a shame to end it under a red flag, but it does look like you, you might have had it uh, in the bag anyway. But a, a great way to start the season for you. Yeah, first time out in this car. Um, so, yeah, a second and a first, that'll do me. Um, yeah, great. It, 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 you don't want to ever end under a red, but I think I could control that if, if I'd got... I'd, I'd had a look the lap before, I got seven minutes to go, so I thought, seven laps, we can we can do this. Are you here for the full season? Uh, yeah, should be. Yep, That's hopefully. Fine. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Congratulations. Uh, right, the rest of the cars have already gone, I'm afraid, but uh, fortunately we did manage to flag down. I did run into the middle of the track to get Paul to stop, and he did, so uh, happy days there. Uh, that is it, though, for track action. There's still one more race to come, though. It looks like it's going to be, uh, hopefully, as dry as it can possibly be. Uh, the pickup truck race, the final race of the weekend. In fact, the final race of our bumper Easter Festival of Motorsport on the BARC. Uh, please, if you are watching on YouTube channel, do hit that little subscribe button as well it makes a big difference of course all of our coverage has been completely free to watch so it really helps us out if you just hit that subscribe uh, thank you so much i'm gonna hand back to dave before the final race of the weekend thanks so much ian yes one race to go just recovering uh, noah checkley and uh, alex q's car there after uh, a couple of incidents brought our race to an early end One race to go then, it's the uh, final for the pickups. This will be an 18 lap race. We caught up with some of the drivers a little earlier. Well, here we are for the final time in assembly area, not just today, but of course for the entire weekend. Four days of Easter Motorsport Festival across the BARC, and it has been an absolute corker, isn't it? So one final race to go. Uh, I just want to catch up with Michael. Sorry, guys, it was all right if I jump in. Uh, Michael, last race didn't quite go to plan. Uh, are we hoping for better things this time? Yeah, can only go forward in this one now. <laughs> um, we're the pretty much at the back, so hopefully we'll see if we can move forward a little bit and get a better result changeable conditions we know uh, we've seen rain we've now got beautiful sunshine which way are you going slicks or are you going to go for the wet we're on wet at the minute um i am looking and wondering so uh, i think we'll just leave it to the death and see if, see if we do have time to change if we think we need to or if we just go every beverage in the same boat we're all got the same yeah. on average in the same boat then on the top man uh, thanks for talking to us mate. best of luck for the race yeah uh, let's go over here actually and talk, talk to Mike Willis came through uh, in yesterday's race and uh, lines up in fourth for this one let's have a quick chat hello Mark how you doing mate you're right 
Right, I'm expecting big things from you in this one. Well, do you know what? It's been a bit of a mixed weekend, isn't it? With a bit of damage and a few people getting run off and that. Um, yeah, I think I think there's a lot of drivers out there that are, that are trying to expect a little bit too much at round one. And uh, you just got to calm it all down a little bit and try and bring it home. We've had a good weekend, really, considering we didn't qualify very well. Yeah. So I can't complain about a second and a fourth. Um, we're up there now on the front of the grid, sort of, for the final. And we've all got these new wet tyres on, so yeah. it's the same so for everybody. Wet, then. You've gone for wet, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we've, we've, we've stuck out for the wet tyres. Um, I've got my 18-month-old granddaughter cheering me on at the at home, so... Oh, oh cool, give her a shout then. Yeah, so, what's her name? So, yeah, Ava. So she's, uh, she's at home cheering us on, so see what we can do for her for this one. Ah, oh, there you go, Ava. This is for you. Uh, we want at least the podium. <laughs> I want to be Thanks. talking to you down there after Thanks, the race. Thank All right. Uh, Matt Moore here as well. We caught up with him a little bit earlier. It's been a fantastic week. And uh, Matt Simpson, what a weekend he has had. Had to start from the back of the grid. One race one, one race two. Can he make it a hat trick of wins? We're about to find out. The pickup truck, the final race of our Easter Festival of Motorsport is about to get underway. Dave, over to you. Yep, uh, thanks very much Ian. Good to hear from a couple of the drivers down there. And uh, we'll bring you the grid in just a second then. The uh, truck's just leaving the assembly area. This will be an 18 lap race on a damp but drying track after the earlier rainstorm. This will be uh, the grid based on the results of the uh, previous two races, the aggregate of the two results, with the top six reversed. That means Matt Simpson, the uh, double winner, will start sixth. Pole position, it's number eight of David O'Regan, the Irishman. He'll line up alongside Dan Fisher in the number five. Second row is Dean Tompkins, number 21. He's had the pace, but not the luck this weekend. And Mark Willis, aka Grandad, will uh, go alongside him in the number 65. Third row will be uh, Matt Simpson and... Uh, Matthew Moore, the number 84. Now, I had uh, Dale Gents on my grid sheet as lining up on the second row. He may have got a penalty. We'll uh, check that in a moment when we get a closer look at the grid. Fourth row, Alan Cooper and Chris Brockhurst. Then Dale Gent back on row five alongside Eric Bolton. Sixth row of the grid will be Paul Tompkins and Michael Smith. And then Ryan and Jonathan Hadfield, the brothers, will round out the field. I'm just going to double check the online notice board. Yes, Dale Gent's got a grid penalty for a uh, collision earlier on with Dean Tompkins. So that's the reason for my grid sheet not agreeing with uh, the graphics. So Dale, Jenkin Dale Gent's rather with a grid penalty. He'll have to uh, work a little bit harder to fight his way through. Matt Simpson then going for the hat-trick and a clear championship lead at the end of our weekend here at Brands Hatch. So just one race to go then, this extremely busy weekend, 21 races across the course of the weekend. There's our Ian down in pit lane, enjoying the sunshine. Now he was keeping dry under there earlier on. <laughs> Thanks very much indeed to Ian and to Pointy for... Uh, Getting all our interviews and uh, background info this weekend down on the ground while I'm up in my commentary box. Full credit to our camera operators as well, braving the weather. That's our head of motorsports, uh, Dan, up there on the uh, roof of the hospitality unit. So thank you very much to Dan for his uh, pictures this weekend. I think we're almost ready to roll. Thanks to everybody here this weekend at Brands Hatch to have put on a wonderful show. And we're ready to end it with what will be an absolute belter, I'm sure, from the pickups. David O'Regan, the Irishman on pole. Dan Fisher started his career racing here at Brands Hatch in a Honda Civic a few years ago alongside. Looks like everybody is present and correct. A couple of drivers with yellow cards, the uh, pickup penalty system earlier on. Ryan Hadfield is one of them for his incident with Michael Smith, and um, we mentioned Dale Gent had that uh, grid penalty as well, so I think he's got a yellow card as well. Dan Fisher got one for contact too. Pickups being tough on driving standards this year.
fact, I don't think Dale Gent is there. I only counted 13 trucks. I think the 83 is the one that's missing. No, nope, Dale Gent is not there. That's a great shame, because he'd have been uh, a contender, I'm sure. We go then 18 laps the distance now they're not formed up two by two so I imagine we're going to do another lap because of these slippery conditions indeed we are now I can see some um, golf buggies with tires racks in the pit lane there I'm wondering if those are teams possibly waiting to change tires if the uh, track dries out we might see some pit stops we did used to see pit stop races in the days of Rockingham there was even a competition in one race that I covered there for the fastest pit stop I think Dean Tompkins team won that so will we see pit stops and tyre changes as an extra factor to this race you can see the track is drying out it's still slippery at the moment nobody really knew what tyres to go for in the run up to this effectively the final for the pickups. There is a dry line there at Graham Hill Bend. Now that corner was almost underwater completely earlier on. British weather. Enough said. Marshals waving the green flags. A big thanks once again to all our volunteer marshals. I get all the thank yous out of the way now because after this race I will probably have run out of voice. This is going to be an absolute cracker. Final for the pickups, 18 laps, 13 trucks out there. Championship winning truck from the last two years, driven by Reese Jones then, now by Jonathan Hadfield at the back of the grid. It's David O'Regan and Dan Fisher on the front row. Can Matt Simpson score a hat-trick? He's on the inside of row three, up towards the lights. And let's go racing, boys. As a certain commentator in NASCAR would have said. Into that first corner we go at Paddock Hill then. Good start by David O'Regan. Decent start by Dean Tompkins up there on the inside in the 21. Trying to get around the outside further back is Michael Smith. A bit of rubbing there with Jonathan Hadfield. But it is David O'Regan who leads them into Druids. Hanging on around the outside is Mark Willis and Dan Fisher. They dive down the hill for the first time. Dean Tompkins are into second place. Dan Fisher kicked the tail out and off goes Simpson. Simpson spins out. He's going to go into the tyre wall. Oh, disaster for Matt Simpson. Well, he started both the uh, earlier races from the back, came through and won them both, so you know what to do, Matt. Off you go, catch them up again. Let's hope he hasn't suffered any damage there. He took down one of the polystyrene marker boards there. So, your leader by uh, a few lengths now is David O'Regan from Dean Tompkins. A bit of slip and slide there for Paul Tompkins and Alan Cooper. Well, Alan Cooper, to be fair to him, has spent most of today sideways. Side by side for third, Mark Willis and Dan Fisher. Cooper is fifth. Now, has Matt Simpson got going again? Can he catch this field up? He's got two extra laps to do so this time. Mark Willis goes through into third place. Alan Cooper, a better run from him this time. He's up to fourth. Fifth is Fisher, sixth Paul Tompkins. Eric Bolton going well in seventh. Then we've got Chris Brockhurst. A weekend that started so well in qualifying, but has been a bit of a struggle in the races. A couple of offs uh, proving his undoing. Down the hill they go, through Graham Hill Bend. Now Simpson has come through, he was seven seconds off. Michael Smith at the back of the field as Paul Tompkins goes wide. Dan Fisher goes through. Now let's see if Simpson can catch the field up. Are we going to see, as they say in America, a burn from the stir? He's done it twice in the heats from the back row of the grid. Well, the first two races are not really officially termed as heats, but it is effectively two heats and a final because of the way the grid look at the tails kicking out there through Clark Kerr Paul Tompkins and Chris Brocker is getting sideways so spectacular to watch these pickups they really are getting close to a road course race for uh, the Craftsman trucks from America O'Regan still leads Tompkins David O'Regan's had a lot of bad luck in recent years with uh, continually blowing engines up unfortunately Saw that white shape in the background there. That's Matt Simpson. O'Regan 
Dean Tompkins, Cooper in third, ahead of Willis, Fisher, Bolton, Paul Tompkins, Brockhurst, then the Hadfield brothers. That's Danny Hun's old truck, the 44, used to be yellow and red. Michael Smith at the tail of the field, the 93, been a quiet uh, weekend for the man from Hartlepool, tangled with Ryan Hadfield earlier on. Mark Willis closing up on Cooper. This is the battle for third position. Paul Tompkins has uh, dropped back behind Eric Bolton now, I think. Yes, the purple truck in there in P6. Squealing their way through Druids. Lap four of 18. Dan Fisher a bit sideways there. Eric Bolton could move up to challenge. You can see the battle scars from earlier on when he spun into the pit wall. Regan leads by one and a half seconds now. Sometimes it's have seen the Irishman take a victory. Chris Brockhurst on the tail of Paul Tompkins, then it's the Hadfields now. Simpson at the back of the field has done the fastest lap, 57.077. That's eight tenths of a second quicker than anyone else on that last lap. That second fastest lap was by our leader. 76.29 miles per hour. And that's Simpson. Did Simpson make contact there with somebody towards the back? He was going round the outside of, um, I think that was Ryan Hadfield. I thought there was contact there between the two of them as they came out of clearways. They certainly jinked around. Simpson's made up one place. That was ahead of Matthew Moore, sorry, not uh, Ryan Hadfield, the other yellow truck. Apologies there. So Matthew Moore at the back of the field. I think he's got the wrong tyres on. I think he's on wet. So Simpson, purple sectors again on this lap he is on the charge from the back of the field there he is we just caught a glimpse of him behind Jonathan Hadfield's pink machine Dean Tompkins meanwhile is having a go at the race leader sliding there out of clear ways There's still hardly any grip there coming up towards Paddock Hill Bend once again see them through the trees as they drop down Alan Cooper's catching up with the two leaders now. Here comes Mark Willis as well. They're stacking up behind O'Regan. Dean Tompkins could go for the inside here. O'Regan's gone a little bit wide, but he'll have the inside line for Graham Hill Bend if he stays out on the left. It's a five-truck train now. Because, uh, well, it could be six shortly because um, Fisher and Bolton are catching up as well. Now Cooper starting to push Dean Tompkins for second place. Simpson still 12th, he's done another fastest lap, 55.999 seconds. Next fastest on that last lap was Cooper with a 56.2, and he's going for the inside here at Clearways. Alan Cooper is doing much better in these slippery conditions, he throws the tail sideways again. He's loving this, he's trying to go for second place, but Mark Bellis is uh, fighting back on the outside. Now towards Paddock, Willis around the outside tries to take third place, they're side by side. See the comparison on lap times there for Tompkins and Cooper, second and third, but now Willis into the mix as well. Eric Bolton's up to fifth. That's the best we've seen him run so far. Still your leader. Somehow he is uh, David O'Regan holding off the attacks of Dean Tompkins. They're getting clear as the uh, third-place battle intensifies. They're losing time to the uh, two leaders. Next behind them is Paul Tompkins, Tompkins Sr., then Chris Brockhurst, then Ryan Hadfield going better in this one. Simpson's up to tenth. He's got ahead of Michael Smith and Jonathan Hadfield now, and Simpson, another purple sector one, last time through. Is he going to have time to catch our leaders? Oh, Mark Willis out of shape there, he got wide coming through clearways, he's dropped back. So Willis drops behind Dan Fisher, Bolton had already gone through. Chris Brockhurst up on the outside there trying to take Paul Tompkins, the ex-banger man. Dean Tompkins still races bangers occasionally as well, mostly down at Arlington Stadium in Sussex. Chris Brockhurst lines up Paul Tompkins for a move into Druids. He's up the inside, this is for seventh place. Dave Longhurst prepared truck, Ryan Hadfield just behind them. Tompkins will have the inside line for the left-hander though. Ryan Hadfield's going to take advantage, Brockhurst caught on the outside, Ryan Hadfield says thanks very much, I'll take eighth. On lap eight now, coming up towards half distance. 
There is Matt Simpson, the white truck. He's got a lot of work to do. He's going to make his way through. And <laughs> Chris Brocker is calling like he's on ice there. He went straight across clearways. This isn't ice racing, that's uh, ice speedway. Next weekend in the Netherlands, I'll be uh, at Herenveen 4. They have spikes on the tyres, then. Eric Bolton going brilliantly up there in fourth place. Could we see him on the podium? Through the bottom corner at Graham Hill Bend, Bolton a little bit sideways, Dan Fisher on his tail. Paul Tomkin, Dean Tompkins rather under pressure now from Alan Cooper who's getting a, a second wind if you like up the inside again at Clearways. He's going to go through. Into P2 goes Alan Cooper. Now he won uh, plenty of uh, honours on the shale in Brisker Formula 2 on shale ovals like Milton Hall and Kings Lynn so he's used to driving on slippery surfaces so no surprise to see him strong in these conditions. He's just done his personal best lap, 55.261. The leader did a 55.474. Simpson did a 55.022. He's still down in P10. We'll wait to see if he can catch Chris Brockhurst, who's now down to ninth behind Ryan Hadfield. Have a look in the background here as they come through. As Simpson caught the tail of the midfield pack yet. There's Mark Willis who's dropped back a little. He's down to six now. He's fighting for a podium early on. Paul Tompkins has gone wide onto the grass there. Simpson behind him. He could make up another place there. They come through Surtees. Eric Bolton now challenging Dean Tompkins. Eric Bolton is driving superbly in the 68. Still your leader though is David O'Regan. He's led all the way from pole. There is Simpson. He's got past Paul Tompkins. Now he's up on Brockhurst. They wag their tails again through Clark Coe. I think it's because that bit of the circuit's in shadow because of the buildings. It's a little more slippery there because it hasn't dried out as much. Simpson. The red mist will be down for the former British touring car man. Up the inside through a still slippy paddock hill bend. He goes past Chris Brockhurst. That's eighth place. Next target, Ryan Hadfield. Seventh. He's got seven laps to do it. Including the one there on. Can he catch our leaders? This, is amazing. this would be amazing if Matt Simpson could do it, but he was fourth going into the last lap of race one yesterday, and he won it. Alan Cooper keeping pace. He's just done the best first sector of all. 31.957 for Alan Cooper. Chasing David O'Regan. This is the fight for third now. They're closing down Dean Tompkins in the 21. Mark Willis is fighting back as well. He's back at the inside of... Dan Fisher, fastest lap of the race for Alan Cooper, 54, 498, it is getting drier out there. Into lap 12 of 18 for the pickup truck racing championship here at Brands Hatch. Alan Cooper is now right with our race leader, David O'Regan. Still yet to be fully sign written, the number eight truck. He's hanging on in the lead, he's led all the way so far. Where's Simpson? He's up to eighth now. Does Chris Brockhurst drop to a couple of spots? I want to spin there. Oh, that's Eric Bolton. Oh, what a shame. He was going so well up there in fourth place. And Alan Cooper's going to attack for the lead. Meanwhile, into clearways. He's got the inside. He's through. We have a new leader. It's Alan Cooper in the 72. So now David O'Regan will have to fight back. Cooper, who's won in the past on the Mallory Mile Oval at Mallory Park in Leicestershire. I don't think he's taken a win at Brands Hatch before, so this could be a first for the 72. He's pulled fairly rocketing away from David O'Regan there. He's revelling in these damp conditions, the number 72. The man from Huntingdon. Dean Tompkins in third. Now Simpson's up to seventh as a result of that spin for Eric Bolton, who is still going. He's down to 11th. See the dry line emerging. There's Simpson, meanwhile, on the back of Ryan Hadfield. Can he make any further progress up the order after that first lap spin? He's attacking Hadfield. Ryan Hadfield, the former Ginetta racer. Former stock car racer as well. Notoriously difficult to pass. Dan Fisher ahead. He's chasing down Mark Willis. They're battling over fourth place. Paul Tompkins and Chris Brockhurst trying to close back up. Simpson to the inside as they go into Paddock. 
He's up another place. He's up into P6. I don't think he'll catch the podium runners now. Fastest lap of the race for Dan Fisher, 54-336, as he attacks Mark Willis. Simpson still there with uh, the Simpson race exhaust truck chasing Dan Fisher's number five. Fisher right on the tail of Mark Willis. It's been a good, consistent performance from Dan Fisher, apart from a spin at the uh, start of the second race. Now Simpson putting Willis and Fisher under pressure. Cooper still leads. He's a quarter of a second up on David O'Regan. Third is Dean Tompkins. There's the blue and yellow truck. Fisher to the inside of Willis. 65. Is he going to hang on? No, Fisher up the inside. He knows Brands Hatch like the back of his hand, Dan Fisher. And he's through. And up into fourth position. Now Simpson will have a go at Willis as they go up the hill towards Druitt. Ryan Hadfield's not far away either. Simpson to the inside. Side by side with the uh, somewhat veteran campaigner Mark Willis who raced against uh, Matt Simpson's dad Jeff in hot rods for many years. And through goes Simpson, makes up another place. That's P5. Mark Willis has lost two spots. Still Cooper who leads from O'Regan. 0.85 was the margin last time through. And they're coming round to uh, complete their 15th lap. It'll be three to go. goes O'Regan, there's Tompkins, Fisher in fourth place. Looking for dry spots on the track now. Alan Cooper, the black and green streak there, down from Paddock Hill then, still leads. He's uh, increased his lead to 1.3 seconds now, so he's pulling away at the rate of just under half a second a lap, I would say, from David O'Regan. It looks like Alan Cooper is in control. He's got the setup right for these tricky conditions. Simpson not able to get away from Mark Willis. Try and catch fourth place Dan Fisher. Still a fine recovery though up into the top five. Oh, Eric Bolton in trouble again. He's slowed down. He doesn't want to stop there. They might bring the safety car out. Or stop the race. That's not what we want. Hopefully he can move that truck to a safer position, Eric Bolton. He's up at Druids, and that's where the leaders are approaching now. There's Alan Cooper. There'll be yellow flags out on the run into Druids. So Dan Fisher had a run on J Dean Tompkins there. He had to abort that move because the yellow flags were out. I think it's at uh, Druids anyway, just out on the outside there. Dan Fisher had just done the fastest lap as well, 53.709. The lap times are tumbling. We're on the penultimate lap now, and hopefully they can guard that uh, stranded car with yellow flags for the rest of the race. And it's the K Cooper Motors and Holborn Photography sponsored uh, truck of number 72, Alan Cooper, among other sponsors on that black and green machine. It looks to be heading for victories. One and a half seconds up on David O'Regan. 1.8 now as they come over the line, so he's pulled out another three tenths. Looks like Dean Tompkins could come under threat for third place, though, from Dan Fisher. We are on the last lap of the weekend now. What an incredible weekend it has been. Here he comes, Alan Cooper. Just needs to hold it together around this final half a lap. Ratcliffe Heavy Recovery, his other main sponsor. He's not going to need recovery after this one, apart from an energy drink or two, perhaps. Simpson has almost caught Fisher. They're not going to catch Alan Cooper. Here he comes, up to clear ways for the final time. David O'Regan led the first half of the race, but he couldn't stop. Super Cooper, the number 72, comes out of the final corner for the last win of the weekend at Brands Hatch here on Easter Monday. Cooper wins it. O'Regan second. Dean Tompkins holds off Dan Fisher for, fourth, for third and fourth. Matt Simpson, after a spin on the first lap, comes through for fifth. It's a great sixth place for Ryan Hadfield. He'll be pleased with that. Paul Tompkins, seventh. Mark Willis dropped to eighth in the end. I think he got the tyre choice wrong. Chris Brockhurst, a weekend that promised much after qualifying but delivers little. He ends up ninth. Jonathan Hadfield, tenth. Matt Moore, a quiet last race for him. He finished the eleventh. Michael Smith at the back. Uh, we lost Eric Bolton, unfortunately, with a few problems three laps from home. And uh, Dale Gent didn't take the start. 
I am out of voice. What an incredible weekend of motor racing here at Brands Hatch. Alan Cooper, the winner by two seconds in the end, ahead of David O'Regan, who led the first part of the race from pole position. Dean Tompkins taking third, and Dan Fisher, a fine uh, drive. Good, consistent weekend for him taking fourth. Matt Simpson, well, spun to the back in the early stages. What might have been for Matt? It could have been a hat-trick. He has to settle for fifth after a drive through the field. Ryan Hadfield, great result for him in sixth in uh, the ex-Danny Hun truck. Seventh for Paul Tompkins. Mark Willis dropped back in the closing stages for eighth. Chris Brockhurst down in ninth. Jonathan Hadfield, tenth. And then Matthew Moore and Michael Smith completed the finishers. Eric Bolton was a retirement. Let's head down for one last time to Ian Waterhouse in Park Ferme. Uh, welcome down to a very, very happy Brands Hatch pillow. Look at Alan Cooper, he is absolutely thrilled, and his team as well. Yeah, go ahead, go round, go round. We're going to grab a word of him very shortly. Indeed, it was a good drive as well, wasn't it, by David O'Regan in second place, and Dean Tompkins, another podium this weekend. Let's get him out, let's have a chat with him. I'm sure he's he's got a mate. You can't see it. he's got a huge smile on his face, and rightly so as well. What, Alan, congratulations. Uh, tell us how you're feeling right now. <laughs> There's no words how I'm feeling right now. We've had a bad two weeks. Um, I've had a great team behind me all this way. You know, I've, I was willing to give up to everything. Um, so, we've, yeah, we have nothing but engines, back axles, nothing but trouble. Uh, everyone's behind me, supporting me, pushing me on, and, yeah, it's definitely made worthwhile. I was going to say, it certainly has, hasn't it? Of course, you chased down David, got past him, and, and then took it home. It's never comfortable, is it? But you managed to get a bit of a gap and hold it. Yeah, like, as the track was drying out, it was more and more dry lines coming. But where the trees were, it was so wet and slippy, like it was on that one. So you just had to be real careful. And Dale's, Dave's car was going off, mine was coming on, and, yeah, it was fantastic. Go on, go celebrate it, mate. Congratulations. <laughs> Let's grab. Uh, David here as well, uh, fantastic performance idea. You led for a large part of the race as well? <laughs> yeah, well, credit to Alan though, he came from quite a bit back, so... Um yeah, that was a bit of a. It was just nice to get a bit of a gap as well, you know, from the rest of the pack. I see I pulled a bit away, and Alan just seemed to come from nowhere. So it was fine. I could deal one on one with him, and I could let him go, let him do his thing, and I could just sit comfortably in second. So you got a big smile. What does it mean to to get the podium? In? Yeah, well, we've had a very bad day to be honest. We've had issues all over the truck, so it's good now to be back on the podium again. It's been a while, so I'm happy. Thank you. Well done, mate. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Go celebrate. Uh, if you just come round to me as well, uh, we, I believe Alan's chatting to a couple of the drivers. Uh, congratulations as well to. Dean Tonkins uh, also on the podium as well for the second time this week and I am just going to come around here uh, just to give you a better view we'll have a look at the cars actually I'll turn around before we go before I do hand back to Dave though uh, that's the final race of our four days of live motorsport on Bark TV I just want to say a few thank yous as well of course to all the marshals recovery teams organizers everybody that has put in such a shift over the last four days at Donington Park of course we were there on Friday and Saturday and we've been at Brands Hatch Sunday and today Easter Monday there's also a team that goes at a little bit unrecognized as well i want to say a big thank you to the broadcast team here four days solid it has been eight hours over eight hours every single day i just want to say a massive thank you to you see me uh, you saw james on uh, friday and saturday my co-presenter you hear dave goddard's voice you see pointy's face but you don't see uh, the team who works so so hard behind the scenes so i just want to say holding the cameras over the last four days we have had john we've had phase we've had Catherine, we've had dan we've had richard We've had Jack. Uh, we've also got our wonderful uh, producer and director, Elliot. Huge thank you to him. We've had Simon on replays as well. Richard as well. Uh, I just want to say a massive thank you to absolutely everybody. Uh, just hit that little subscribe button on the BARC YouTube channel as well. It really helps us. All of the live sport we bring you is completely free to air. So hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Let's get people talking. We will be back in two weeks at Snetterton as well. We're very much looking forward to that. Well, I'm going to hand back for the final words to Dave Goddard. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Take care. I could not have summed that up better myself, Ian Waterhouse. Thank you and well done to you. Thanks to you and Pointy down there in uh, Pit Lane and uh, Paddock today. These final words will be brief because I've got no voice left after an incredible two days of motorsport. I can only echo what Ian has said. Thank you to everybody at Donington and Brands Hatch over the last four days. All the marshals the medical staff, race control staff, everybody else, all the drivers and their teams for their entertainment 
For here at Brands Hatch, I must say a big thank you especially to the recovery crews, Trackside Recovery and their helpers, Mick Gould, Commercials, LJ Nationwide and Ito and all their helpers as well. They've had a very busy day here. I think they've done as many miles at times as some of the race teams, so thank you for them to them for keeping things moving. Thank you, as Ian has said, to um, all of our broadcast team, all our camera operators, to Elliot, our director, to Adam Weller, who uh, took us through the uh, commentary on uh, Friday and Saturday from Donington, to Ian and Pointy down uh, on the floor as well. Well, we'll see you back in uh, a couple of weeks for more action from uh, Snetterton on BARC TV. But until then, on behalf of everyone here at uh, Brands Hatch and at Donington, a couple of days ago, this is commentator Dave Goddard signing off here on BARC TV. Thanks very much uh, indeed for watching. Thanks for all your likes and subscriptions. And we'll see you back again soon. And remember, motorsport should be fun. Thanks very much again. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>